Sactow Sports. Feeding your passion for local sports in the afternoon. It's the Drive Guys with Kevin Gleason and Kyle Drake on your radio at 1140 a.m. Streaming audio at SacktownSports.com and the Sacktown Sports app. You can also watch the show on YouTube at Sacktown Sports 1140. Here are the Drive Guys with Kevin Gleason and Kyle Drake. Well, it's great to be back. Uh, first things first here. I, I want to thank uh, Jay and Kyle Draper for, uh, you know, holding things down last week. I know you guys are more than capable. I work with you every day. I know how talented you are. But just the fact that you had to do a little extra here and there, I appreciate it very much. No problem, man. That's what teammates are for, right? Yeah. You know, we uh, held it down. People missed you, though. Everybody's like, where's our guy at? Where's Whitey at? Like, he'll be back. He's coming back on Monday. So, no, it's all good, man. Yeah, I appreciate it. Now you really got to. You know, carry me on your back because I'm, right. like, I'm a grandfather now. Exactly, man. My mom was like, he's a grandfather? What? He's not old enough. And I'm like, yeah, mom, he's a grandfather. So congratulations, Thank man. you. I appreciate that very, has, very has much. Has life changed since being a grandpa? It's kind of like, grandpa? Uh, to me, it's almost like you get some in the mail, like you've you've got, you won something that you didn't know. You know, it's like, yeah. what? Well, I'm a grandfather? What? You know, just kind of yeah. out of nowhere. Uh, it's incredible. I still can't get over the fact that, you know, when you have kids and you see your kids every day, it's like, man, and then for them to have one, it's like, wow. Wow. They're, they're in the club now, right? They're in the parenting club, you know? It's so hard whenever they say something about the kid, it's so hard not to go, well, you'll see. Right. Right. Uh, I remember when you, uh, you know, exactly. (laughs) Everything that our parents told us. Yes. Yes. Congratulations. Uh, everybody good, you know, daughter, good. She's good. She's good. good. She looks like she's going home, uh, tomorrow. Okay. grandson kenji is a pretty awesome little guy pretty fond of him so appreciate all that really do thank you very, very you much. know as time goes on and and you know as we work together i'm i'm gonna ask you because when i talk to people who are grandparents they say being a grandparent is better than I've being a that. parent yeah and so I, I it's hard for me to believe and so as you go through this man you'll have to let me know and be like yep drapes it yeah. is man so. I, I, I don't know but what i've heard is it's the whole thing where you know sometimes kids get fuzzy or they're a yeah. problem or whatever your grandpa you're like all right all right here, here you I, go I'll see ya <laughs> right exactly <laughs> see you next weekend <laughs> yeah but anyway speaking of weekends what a weekend for kings kings fans where do things stand in the kingdom now kyle after all that went down friday and then, of course, last night as well. You know what? This is, you know, and we got drape stakes coming up yes. uh, next segment. Uh, this has been maybe the most emotional week to be a Kings fan in a long time, especially during my time here. I'm in my fourth season. And so, you know, we talk about the roller coaster, how it's been like that all season long. How about the roller coaster ride this past week? We've been on with the injuries, the losses that you get a win last night, you know, the playoff hopes versus the play in. I don't know how to feel right now as a Sacramento Kings fan. You know, I woke up this morning and I was thinking about what am I going to say during the show? And and I'm like, man, we still can achieve our goals. We, you know, we can make it through the play in. But then just last week, I was like, we want no part of the play and the play and stinks. And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of emotional. I, I don't know how to feel about where this team is right now. I'm, you know, went through the same thing uh, you did. You know, you sit there and try to figure out what are we going to talk about? What am I going to say? I find I'm feeling more optimistic than I, than I maybe than I should. Really? Um, you know, all year long, I felt like, hey, if you get into the playoffs, that's that's terrific. And now, you know, are they going to? I don't know. I mean, uh, my hope is, Kyle, that this may be silly, but my hope is that now that expectations are lowered, that they're somehow going to respond to that. Mm. You know, that it seems like sometimes during the year, the weight of expectation has been something they've struggled with. And now, obviously, you know, no Malik, that's, oh, my goodness. Uh, But you do have some guys coming back. The offense last night, I know it's Utah, but the offense functioned at a high level. So, you know, short term, you know, long term without Malik, uh, you know, that's kind of bleak, but short term, who knows what they're capable of? Maybe you get a little bump yeah, short term yeah. too. You know, uh, I just worry. And, and I look back at that Dallas game Friday night, a game they should have won. They led the whole game. They were up nine going into the fourth quarter, but at the end of the day, and, and maybe Trey Lyles and Sasha helps this. I didn't feel like we had the horses to compete and close out the Mavs. Don't you think they really miss Malik there though? Yes, I mean, exactly. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Like the closing minutes, the closing quarter, 
That's Malik Monk time, mm-hmm, him mm-hmm. and De'Aaron Fox. And we just didn't have that person. And so as we go forward the rest of this season with a very difficult schedule starting tomorrow against the Clippers, we're severely shorthanded. Think about it. Kevin Herter and Malik Monk, two of our top six guys, you know, two of our, you know, best three point shooters best three-point threats. And so that's what I'm talking about. You know, how should I feel? Is it a tremendous optimism? Is it pessimism? Is it, is it like I'm resigned to whatever happens, happens. I'm I'm still torn up about Mm -hmm. Friday night, you know, losing Malik, losing the game and and knowing that in all honesty, we'll probably be a playing team. Were you surprised when we found out the severity of the injury on Saturday? I don't know when you found out. Yes, I, I was. And, you know, because when you looked at it, it didn't look bad. You know, I thought, oh, maybe a, a bone bruise mm-hmm. or something like that. Uh, he got up. He walked off. I was shocked when they texted, you know, sent out the tweet that he wasn't going to return. I was like, really? From that? And then you get the severity of it. Shams uh, late at night, I think, was the first one to tweet about it or which one of them to. And I'm like, really? Like, this is what's happening to Malik? And it didn't look that bad when mm-hmm. it happened. Look. You know, like I said, I thought he was coming back in the game on Friday. And so the severity of it, you know, to to lose the game and to lose Malik, like you felt it uh, around Sacramento. Yeah. You know, you can never tell because Malik, like you say, he twists his knee, whatever. He looks like he's fine. And then Luca for two games, every time he (laughs) shot the ball, he's grimacing. He's like, oh, and he's grabbing his leg. So obviously uh, difficult to tell. Uh, but at least you're getting some players back. Again, obviously, it's bad. There's no way around it. It's bad. But you do have some options here. And again, I'm just thinking short term, who knows? As you, I love the way you put it. Maybe they find a bump here. I don't think that's out of the question. Yeah, you know, it's not out of the question. But the problem, Whitey, and I hate to be Debbie Downer on this Monday. You're just being after, I'm just being real. You are. If we were at a different point of the schedule, I don't know. Have you looked at their next three games? Yeah, I tried not to, but I did. I mean, you got the Clippers, (laughs) the Knicks, and the Celtics. Any other three teams, I'd rather face the Nuggets, the the Timberwolves, and OKC, and I would feel better about our schedule. These next three games, the Clippers at home, and then we know how rough and rugged New York is, and then the Celtics, they always just mop the floor with us. And so I'm worried about these next three games specifically. If we could go two and one, that would be a huge win, one and two. Uh, but it, we're in danger here. This is a tough three-game stretch we have here. Are you still thinking there's a realistic chance they're out of the out of the plan? Because I'm resigned to uh, to me, seven would be all right. That's pretty good. Right. Eight, you could live with anything other than that's like, well, okay, you got a chance. But from from the nine or ten slots, gonna be very very tough. It, it, yeah, it's gonna be tough, and I, I'm I'm resigned to the fact that I know there's still an outside chance. Um, that they can get a top six seed. But here's the problem, Whitey. The Mavericks have one of the easiest schedules remaining. And they're playing really And they're playing their best basketball. So now, as we stand right now, it's the Pelicans who are in six. And you don't have the tiebreaker with mm-hmm, them. Mm-hmm. You know, at least with the Mavericks, you head-to-head, two and two. Then you could go to conference record, and there's still a way. But now, and I said this Friday with Jay on the show, that loss – means that you don't control your own destiny anymore. If you got that win, Mm -hmm. you control the rest of the season. You win out, you're a top six uh, team. Now, even if you win out, you still need help from other Mm -hmm. people because Mm -hmm. Dallas is rolling, the Pelicans are rolling. And so that's what I'm talking about, the emotions of this weekend. I'm kind of almost resigned to the fact that we're going to be a playing team. Let's get that seven C so Mm -hmm. we can have a home playing game. What happened with the Mavericks and all of a sudden they're guarding people? I know we were talking yeah. last week and I was certainly yeah. saying it like, ah, oh, you know, they're, they're really weak in the backcourt defensively and their, their defensive rating is whatever, 20, whatever. Yeah. And they've been laying the wood to people lately. No, Jason Kidd and them are doing a great job of hiding Kyrie and Luca. Like Tuesday night, even Friday night, Luca's guarding Harrison Barnes, Kyrie's guarding Keon Ellis. You know, and so he's not guarding uh, Keegan Murray or De'Aaron Fox. And when you look at their guys, and I said this last week with Jay, look at the length that the Mavericks have. Mm -hmm. Look at their length, whether it's Dante Exum, you know, a a 6'9 wingspan, uh, Derrick Jones Jr., uh, P.J. Washington, 
Daniel Gafford. Like they got PJ Washington's playing well. And he's I know playing you well. wanted him. I wanted him. Yeah. He he almost he pretty much uh won the game on Tuesday for them. I thought his early threes, he had three threes early in that first half. I thought that really separated the Mavs uh from the Kings at that point. And then you look at, like I said, Daniel Gafford, they got length. They got got like and, and then lively. His wingspan is like seven eight or mm-hmm. something like mm-hmm. that, and they have something we don't have. And I was saying this on the show last week: the Dallas Mavericks, sure, Luca and Kyrie might be their two best players, but their identity, their DNA, it's the other guys. Really, they don't play like Kyrie and Luca. Their style isn't Kyrie and Luca. It's uh, PJ Washington. It's Gafford, like those hard nosed grit and grind kind of guys. Luca said that PJ Washington might be their best defender. Yes, yes. He could switch on anybody, mm-hmm. too. And he's the exact guy that we need. And you're right. I wanted him you did. here in Sacramento. And, you know, the Mavs didn't have to give up a whole lot. No offense. Grant Williams, that's my guy. But they were looking to get rid of Grant Williams, you know. And so I, I wish we could have got – because one thing that P.J. is showing me, and I know the numbers don't indicate that he's been a good three-point shooter, but he can knock down the three. And once he got hot, especially on Tuesday night – I mean, that's what you we talk about three and D guys. He's one of those guys. And, you know, just the length, man. That's why it was a tough matchup. We should have won Friday, though, Whitey. We should have got that game. Mm -hmm. So Drapes, like a lot of Kings fans, kind of at the crossroads right now. Mm -hmm. What does that mean for Drapes takes? I don't know, but we will find out. When we come right back with that, Drive Guys on Sacktown Sports. Last season, the Sacramento Kings gave us a little bit of everything. A Pacific Division type GM of the year, coach of the year, Clutch Player of the Year, All-Stars and All-NBA Performers. Plus, we got to light the beat. Here's a steal by Fox, a breakaway. He's got the rip with the left hand. What does this season have in store? Find out. Each and every Sacramento Kings game can be heard right here on your proud home of the beam team, Sacktown Sports at SacktownSports.com. Getting your biggest tax refund from Jackson Hewitt can lead to some spirited reactions. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Jackson Hewitt is so sure they'll get you your biggest refund that if they don't, you get your money back plus a hundred bucks. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Switch to Jackson Hewitt and we'll beat what you paid last year, even if you filed online. Hewitt, yeah! Ain't nothing to it. Switch to Jackson Hewitt and pay less for tax prep, guaranteed. Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. Angie's list is now Angie, and we've heard a lot of theories about why. I thought it was an eco move. Fewer words, less paper. No, it was so you could say it faster. No, it's to be more iconic. Must be a tech thing. But those aren't quite right. It's because now you can compare upfront prices, book a service instantly, and even get your project handled from start to finish. Sounds easy. It is. And it makes us so much more than just a list. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I. Or download the app today. Your afternoon home for King's Talk and so much more. The Drive Guys on Sacktown Sports. Interesting, interesting times to be a Kings fan, right? Here on the YouTube chat, Brandon says, got to say hi to Draper when he walked by on Friday. Ugly loss, but watching Draper make the walk, getting dapped up by everybody was awesome. Then our buddy Manny Tulegit says, I was trying to say hi to Drapes, waving both my arms when he was doing the pre and post, but I don't think he saw me. You got a lot of people doing a lot of things, right? When you're you're trying to focus on doing your no, show. No, I, I saw Manny, and, and I gave him a little head nod. Oh, okay, like, there you go. When, when I'm doing the show, it's hard to acknowledge him. Right. But I saw him over there, and I gave him a little, just a little, you know, head nod, and maybe he didn't see that. I hope Manny had a, a great time, laced him with the tickets, remember? That's right. Uh, he was out That's there. Right. I wish we would have lit the beam for him. But, yeah, I saw Manny over there. I saw him, but, dude. Actually work too. You know, I can't just like I, I don't get paid by taking pictures and kissing babies and shaking hands. Uh-huh. I actually gotta talk about the game and stay focused. And so I saw our guy Manny there. Yeah. What was uh what was the thinking behind the Fox jersey? I know you you must you did the whole show, this show Friday. I did this jersey, show right? and yeah. I did the pregame yeah. show. Yeah. Uh with the De'Aaron Fox jersey, had the headband on, had the shooting sleeve, and I wanted to come in with the correct mindset, meaning This is a must win. We need all hands on deck. And I said it during the radio show. 
if Mike Brown needed five minutes for me, I was ready. But I also said too, Whitey, when you have a game of that magnitude, the ushers got to be extra special. The concessions got the popcorn got to be fresh. Like everything has to be raised up a notch. And so that was my thinking. It was all hands on deck. I wanted to show the importance of the game. And we almost had it. I will say, though, the bosses at uh, NBC, uh, they didn't like that too much. They didn't? No, nah, they didn't. They're like, Drapes, can you at least give us a heads up next time? I had to tell them. I'm like, hold up now. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> I dressed to the nines. 81 games out of the year. Right. I can't get one. And so, you know, it is what it is. But no, I came in with the 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 right kind of mindset that you know what? It's not going to be sweet in here. It's mm-hmm. going to be 17,000 plus cheering against Luca. And I needed Mike and those guys to know I'm with them all hands on deck. No, I was out of town. I watched the game. I didn't see your pre or post, but I got this text the day after from our buddy Bonte. Kyle Draper's must watch after a King's loss, he says. Oh, Bonte's? Yeah. (laughs) He only watches after a King's loss, knowing Bonte, that guy. No, I forgot what I said uh, Friday after the loss because I I was heartbroken. But it was sort of similar to Whitey. When you looked at it, we played a great game, lost in the fourth. We just did not have the horses. The loss of Malik Monk really hurt on Friday. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're up nine going into the fourth. You're thinking you're in good shape, but they got Kyrie, one of the best closers. Luca, one of the best closers. And then they give Dante Exum three wide open looks. Eventually, he's going to make one. And so I I just didn't think we had the horses to finish out strong down the stretch. You know, I was thinking, I didn't realize that Dante Exum this year is shooting that shot really well percentage-wise. But during the game, I'm thinking, you know what? It's a key, obviously, point of the game. If you got him taking those shots, that means you're doing something right defensively. Right. Now, eventually knocked one down, but I was thinking, yeah. all right, I'd rather have him shooting those than, than Kyrie. Right. And, and that was clearly the game plan, yeah. right? It's yeah. like, all right, Don, uh, Dante Exum's going to have to beat us. But you know as well as I do, Whitey, you've played basketball. I've played basketball. People at home listening and driving, you've played basketball. Anybody can knock down one shot. And that's all Dante Exum had to do. Mm-hmm. He missed everything else, you know, in, in the previous three or four minutes, but he hit the one that mattered. Mm-hmm. And I've lost so many games off of one guy hitting a prayer or a shot that's totally out of his comfort Welcome zone. Welcome to Sacramento. <laughs> right. You got, exactly. <laughs> We've seen it. We know it. And that's what happened Friday night. Dante freaking Exum. Right now it's time for Drapes Takes. Calm down, like Calm down. Drapes Takes brought to you by Ausco Uniforms. Discover why it pays to keep clean with Ausco Uniforms. I'm going to start off with this last week, Whitey, and just how emotionally spent I am being a Sacramento Kings fan, being a Sacramento Kings broadcaster. It was probably the worst week of the regular season in a very long time for Sacramento. I can't remember the last time. And I've been an NBA fan for decades. And I know Sacramento Kings history. Whether it's the first Dallas loss, the Kevin Herter news, the second Dallas loss, the Malik Monk news. We went from optimistic, playing great basketball, got two winnable games at home, to the air being let out of our balloon. And I will say this. I'm going to give the fans at the game credit. Because I wasn't sure the vibe in the arena, what it would be like. But the fans, they came out with a fight last night. They came out still geeked up. And I'm, I'm, I want to give them a shout out because I was deflated. You, mm-hmm. I was deflated. I'm like, you said last night? Last yeah. night going into the game. I know. I, know. I know. I was deflated going into yeah. the game because the math is just math in Big Fella. When you look at the standings, two games behind the Mavericks, one of the toughest schedules left to play. They have one of the easiest. It, I'm sort of resigned to the play-in right now. Yeah, it was a tough week because you have to take your hopes, which we're here, and right. just have to say, I'm going to have to scale that down a little bit. Not, not even that, Whitey, too. The loss of Malik Monk. What were we saying before Malik went down? Depending on the matchup, just get in. They can play up to the competition. They can beat anybody. We're thin right now. Right. And it was great to see Sasha and Trey Lyles back. And that brings me to my second dream. We're going to need these guys. We're going to need Sasha and Trey Lyles to be effective, especially on the offensive end. And I think Trey, and we saw it a little bit last night with the three threes. I think Trey 
has to get back to being last year, Trey. Like eight points a game. Eight. He needs to step up because he has the talent. He's a good two-way player. And then Sasha's going to get minutes also. How do you fill Malik Monk's spot? You really don't with one guy. Right. Everybody got to raise it up, including those two guys I just mentioned. Maybe just because I want to see this, I thought Sasha – Maybe flashes is even too strong a word, but I still am optimistic that he's going to earn his keep. And that right yes. now it's like, there's okay, now we need it. Whatever you got, we need to see it. I still think he's capable of giving him a boost. Yes, because he, even – Because he can shoot. He can shoot the ball. Like offensively, even before Malik went down, like who could we count on off the bench offensively other than Malik? Like, our bench offensively was really thin. Now you got these two guys back. They're going to have to step up. My next strafe sake has to do with the big guns, the all-stars, your all-NBA talent. And Mike Brown said this yesterday. De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis right now need to be playing their best basketball of the season. They need to elevate their games. And I said it on the pregame, I think it was, uh, the other day. Because Morgan asked me, well, Kyle, what do you want from those guys? I tell you what, I need them to be one of the top two or three players on the floor night in and night out. Friday against Dallas, sure, it was a solid game. But Kyrie and Luka were the two best players on the floor. No question Our stars got to be stars, man. Right. This is what – and Mike Brown talked about it. This is what they get paid for, especially Malik uh, Monk down. We got that sound. Here's what Mike Brown had to say about his stars being stars. They both have to, and that's what stars do. They make the game easier for everybody else in a lot of different ways, especially offensively. You know, you when you draw two, you get off it. And, and, and if you can get to your sweet spot, you finish like you're supposed to, especially if it's one-on-one. -on -one. And so I thought both those guys were fantastic playing the game of basketball tonight and contributing in other areas to help us win and making the game easier for their teammates. That's Mike Brown after that win against Utah. De'Aaron Fox, 24 points. How about the 12 assists mm -hmm. last night? I thought that was huge. DeMontis Sabonis, 17, 11, and 6. But honestly, I need more from Domas. Like, I need the 25, 13, and 10 Domas. I don't need the 13, 12, and 11 Domas. I need him to be, like I said, one of the top two or three players on the floor. And to your point and to Coach's point, we're not just talking about putting up numbers, right? Right. As you said, Luca and Kyrie were the best players on the floor because they took over the game. They ran the game. They ran they the game. They controlled the game. That's what you really need from your superstars down the stretch of big games. Yeah, and, and and to your point, Whitey, what Kyrie and Luka did on Friday night was they gave the game what it needed. In the third quarter, Kyrie got cooking. He hit a couple of big shots. That's what it needed. In the fourth, Luka hit some shots, but he also found guys open. What I need from DeMontis Sabonis, no offense, we can make all we want about the 57-game double-double streak. I need Domas to show up in the fourth quarter. I need Domas down the stretch when the game's on the line to give the game what it needs. Sometimes, Domas, that means calling your own number and getting buckets. Think about this, Whitey. And I know yesterday it was against the Utah Jazz, and, 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 and you know, that game got out of hand. But Domas had 12 shot attempts the first half. And I was like, yeah, let's mm -hmm. go. I liked it. He took two shots the rest of the game. No, you're an All-NBA, third-team All-NBA, three-time All-Star. I need Domas to get 18 to 20 shots because no Malik Monk. So who are your two best players? De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis. They have to. I'm not talking about making a play. Whitey, I'm talking about getting to the playoffs and advancing. These guys got to step it up, man. Can I ask you a tough question about Domas now, or should I wait till you No, done? you can do it. That's that's all the drapes takes. That's I'm done. Because I'm frustrated, man, uh -huh. because I know these guys can be great. Kyle, cut the music, big fella. <laughs> these guys can be great. Look out. And that's, uh, no, because, I, it, uh, like, De'Aaron Fox, no offense, Foxy, Friday against Dallas, 23 points ain't going to get it done. You got, especially when your dog Malik Monk goes down, I would love for De'Aaron in one of these high-leverage big games go, go out there against and get 40. We're going to see Jalen Brunson Thursday in New York. Go out there and deliver a masterpiece at the guard. This is what I said last week, uh, Whitey, uh, when you were out about that game Friday. Who was going to have LeBron James 2012 game six at TD Garden in Boston? Who was going to say, you know what? Mm -hmm. 
Come hell or high water, we are not losing this game. Right. We didn't have that. That's what we're talking about, what Coach is talking about when he talks about superstars being superstars mm -hmm. when you need him to. It's not just, well, look, he put up nice numbers. It's about a lot more uh, than just that. What did you think of Domas going back into the game to get his double-double last night? I kept looking at the clock and looking at the 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 um, margin of, uh, you know. Right. And I'm like, 17-point ah, game, five minutes. It was pretty clear that's it, why he went in. Yeah. I, that's tough. That's tough. Uh, I, I'm okay with it uh, because it's your guy. It's Now, if you were doing that in a losing effort or something like that and you're trying to uh, – that was the most important thing – but you're winning, one rebound shy. Give it to him. I, mm -hmm. I, I didn't mind that. Yeah. It's, Did it's, you have a problem? Ooh. I thought about it, but I ultimately I think it's good for the franchise even, for everybody to keep that thing going. Mm. It's something that continues to draw attention, and we don't get as much as we deserve. He certainly doesn't get as much as he deserves. So, yeah, you know, obviously <laughs> the way things have been going this week, uh, you're you're taking some chances there, but it worked out. And don't you think that of the four things you listed that went wrong last week, you had the two losses, you mm -hmm. had the Herder news, you had the Malik news, perhaps the most disappointing, and Malik was devastating, but perhaps the most disappointing, uh, disappointing was the way they got blown out in that first Dallas game. Yes. Just, they, they just, and maybe they were tired, whatever, but it's like, that was not a game. That, that was, and, you know, second half. It was interesting. Jay gave them some grace on that. He said, you know, it's one of 82. You got another chance on Friday. And I will say, as much as I was disappointed in that game, when you look at it, it seemed like the Kings felt like and played like they knew, all right, even if we don't win this one, we got another shot on Friday. For Dallas, they needed to get that, and they played like it. They played like the more hungrier team. The Kings played like uh, the team that had one in their back pocket still. And so – uh, that's that was frustrating, and the fact too, Whitey. Remember, we went into that game talking about national TV, mm -hmm. Demontis Sabonis, mm -hmm. our cheers and chants we're going to have, and to lay an egg like that, yeah. even though it was only a five point game at the half. I thought Dallas controlled that game pretty much throughout. Like I, I never thought I Sacramento played great basketball in that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when we come back, tell you how the best path forward for the Kings was actually revealed last night. Harrison Barnes had something to say about that. We'll hear that when we come back. The Drive Guys, Drapes and Whitey on Sacktown Sports. You never know what you might hear when listening to a Sacramento Kings game. Out of Keegan, going for another triple. Man, is he feeling it. Keegan, can he do it? Yes, there's number 11. Keegan Murray. Keegan steps back. He just knocked down his 12th three-pointer, a Kings franchise record. He's got 45 points. Never miss a moment of Sacramento Kings basketball with Sacktown Sports and the Sacktown Sports app. Sacramento weather is brought to you by the Arnold Law Firm. I'm Tamara Berg in the KCRA 3 Weather Center. Your Monday, first day of April, coming in with plenty of sunshine and a light north wind. We'll have daytime highs today peaking in the lower to mid-70s, expecting overnight lows into the 40s. Get the latest forecast on the KCRA 3 News and the KCRA 3 app. The Arnold Law Firm has seen how a collision can turn anyone's life upside down in a heartbeat. So remember to be a little more alert on the road and stay safe. The Arnold Law Firm, providing real justice for you since 1975. Call 916-777-7777. When you take the time to shop at Folsom Lake Honda, there's one thing you'll always find. Happy people ready to serve you. As a family-owned and operated dealership since 2009, customer service is our number one priority. Our customers love doing business with us, and you will too. Looking to own or lease? During the spring sales event, drive a brand new Accord or Civic. Visit us today at FolsomLakeHonda.com, your one-stop Honda shop. Folsom Lake Honda. Country in the Park is back, May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo with Brett Lee Gilbert, Dustin Lynch, Jay Cohen, Walker Hayes, and more. Tickets start at just 46 bucks. Country in the Park, May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo. For more information, visit CITPFest.com. Brought to you by Fiddy and Fiber, Dawson Oil Company, and Good Guys Heating and Cooling. 
Dr. Ken Halachek and kinesiologist Kelsey Graham discuss the Good Feet Store. The foot has a lot of detail. It has a lot of complexity. There's a lot that can go wrong. A lot of problems start in the foot and end up elsewhere. Knee pain, hip pain, back pain. When aligning the feet properly, we can see relief elsewhere. And that's the beauty of the Good Feet Art Support. It can place the feet into their ideal position and gives them the balance, the support, the comfort, and the relief of the pain. The bottom line is that the Good Feet Art Support can be a highly effective pain relief solution when nothing else has worked. The feet have a really big impact on how the rest of the body moves. The knees, the hips, the lower back especially. If the foot isn't properly aligned, all of these joints are going to function incorrectly. That results in a lot of muscle tension and chronic pain. What I really like about the Good Feet system is that the right arch supports can put the foot in its proper alignment. So all the joints of the rest of the body will be aligned properly as well. And when the body's aligned, we can reduce the risk of injury and chronic pain. Visit the Good Feet store in Sacramento, Roseville, Modesto, Stockton, and Vacaville for a free fitting and test walk. Hey, it's Carmichael Day for my good friends at American Energy. Now, I've told you this before, but this is what we call extending a good deal right now. American Energy Heat and Air is offering an HVAC diagnostic for $99. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Never mind. They're offering it free. It's a $99 value, but you get it for zero. Let the American Energy team test your system connections and all the moving parts of that system to ensure that it's functioning properly. Now, this is a limited time offer. Call today to schedule your appointment at 916-520-9990. Speak to the company that has an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau that's been making the greater Sacramento area proud since 1981. 916-520-9990 or AmericanEnergyAir.com. Tell them Carmichael Dave sent you. Call 916-520-9990 at aimyourdigital.com will help you target the right audience, build your leads, and crush your quota. Take your business to the next level. Our digital marketing strategies help grow awareness of your product or service, all while building trust in your business. Our approach involves leveraging multiple tools and strategies to deliver exceptional results that are customized to your unique business needs. Don't wait to run out of sales leads. Keep your business growing. Get started with aimyourdigital.com today. Made of Chevy saves you 8000 off MSRP on every new Silverado LT and RST half-ton diesel in stock after rebates. A Made of Chevy exclusive. See all the truck season savings at madeofchevy.com. Together, let's drive. See dealer for details. Ends 4 24 Your afternoon home for King's Talk and so much more. The Drive Guys on Sacktown Sports. I'm not saying the Kings are going to win the NBA title this year or anything like that, but I've seen it too many times in sports where there's a team that loses a guy, maybe a couple of guys, and drapes, and we say, and it happens in different sports, and people look at it and go, well, they're done. They just are. Right. Look, how do you overcome that? And then somehow, some way, that team finds a way to leave us all going, I don't know how they did that. So I'm I'm excited about You're the excited. rest of this year. You know what, Whitey? I'm gonna I'm gonna throw you an alley oop right here. I'm gonna co-sign your point. Case in point, the Houston Rockets yeah. lost Alper and Shingu. Well, they're done. They're done. They're toast. Finished. They just go on and win 11 straight. Yes. And so they had that bump. And so what's going to be that bump for the Kings? You know. Mm-hmm. And, and so I hear you. I like your optimism. I need that in my life right now because I'm down in the dumps. I'm upset. I'm emotional. This was a rough week in Sacramento for the Kings. And so I like your positive vibes right now. And it's exciting. I mean, now you're the team that nobody expects anything from. Right. Everything you do now is like, how did they do that? And I think this city and especially this team, I think they thrive on that. They did last year. Yes. Yes. People doubted them, didn't believe in them. Didn't, you know, thought they were a flash in the pan and they just went about their business. And so, you know, I, like I said in the first part uh, of, of the show, their goals are still attainable. Sure, the six seed is going to be tough. It's going to be difficult, but they can get through the plan. Like if they face Phoenix for a one game plan, they can beat the Suns. They can beat the Lakers in a mm-hmm. one game plan to mm-hmm. move on. Mm-hmm. And so ultimately, Sacramento, what we want from this team is to make the playoffs. Yes. And that's still yes. an opportunity. They uh-huh. still have a chance at that right now. 2007, the Colorado Rockies. I'm not a Rockies Ooh, fan. I've never been. Okay. Colorado Rockies were like, they're like, these guys are no good. And they were having a year where they were like, oh, they're kind of hanging around. 
And around August or so, two of their starting pitchers got hurt and were done for the year. Mm. 40% of your rotation, they're done. Well, they're gone, right? They yeah. called up these two guys, Franklin Morales, Ubaldo Jimenez. They went to the World Series, Drapes. <laughs> now, they lost the World Series, but they went to the <laughs> World Series. It was one of those things like, well, that can't happen. It's impossible. So I'm just telling you, it, it's, it, it's, it's really. Um, I got another smaller example for okay. you. Yeah. Okay. Remember last year, I believe it was game one of the first round of the basketball playoffs. Tyler Hero broke his wrist. Oh, yeah. It was the eight yes. versus one series. Yes. And they were like, Miami's already the 30th the ranked yeah. offense right. in the league. Yep. Right. The hero's so a focal point. Go on, make it to the finals. Again, losing the finals, but yes. second eight seed to ever make it to the finals yeah. after okay. Hero went out first game of the playoffs. It can be done. It's terrible that Malik, <laughs> we may not see Malik again in a Kings uniform. Ooh. I don't know. Ooh. That's that's awful. But I'm telling you, there's still plenty of room for a lot of excitement the rest of this year. No, you're right. And, you know, what happened in Miami and Colorado is guys came together. Guys raised their level of play. And we saw it last night from our guy Harrison Barnes. Mm -hmm. He looked inspired out there. We saw it from Keegan Murray. Did you know, and, and, and I didn't know this, I forget who tweeted this out. Uh, it might have been our guy Frankie Cardicelli. Um, first time all season, HB and Keegan have scored 20-plus points wow. in the same game. That's crazy, yeah. right? That's crazy to think that. So those guys might be raising their game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so you're right. It's still there, Whitey. We yeah. can still get this. Yes. Now, I hope you'll forgive me. I'm going to look at the box score for a minute Gosh, here. here. And I saw this last night, and HB was, uh, you know, answering questions. And I'm looking at the box score. And as you say, Barnes had 24. And Keegan had 25. And Doma 17. Mm -hmm. 24 from Fox. And 11 from Lyles. And you look at the shots. 12, 18, 14, 15, 6, 8. So I asked HB, hey, okay, no monk, but wow, the, the way you got the shot distribution and balance scoring, um, is that an indication that the offense, even without Malik, is functioning at a very high level? Yeah, I mean, I think anytime um, a guy like Malik is not playing, you know, you you can't replace that necessarily, um, how dynamic he is offensively, his playmaking ability. So we knew coming into this game, we had to do it as a collective. You know, we had to just rely on the pass. Um, we knew it was going to come from somewhere, um, somebody, you know, getting hot, making shots, but just um, everyone just being ready. And I think just moving forward, um, just kind of having that same mindset of just um, trusting the pass, trusting our movement, um, and just relying on the, the offense to create offense for us. Trust the pass, trust the mm. movement. That's their offense. They were running their offense. That is their offense. And he also said, stay ready. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and I thought that's what he did a great job with uh, last night. HB shooting 75% from the field, 9 of 12 uh, shooting. When he got the ball, he was decisive with mm -hmm. it. He was ready to do something with it. And that hasn't, we always haven't seen all of that from HB last night. And to your point and his point, you know, sometimes Malik, especially late in games, gets in his bag, you know, tries to beat yeah, guys off the dribble. Ball dominant. Yeah, it becomes ball dominant. And to Harrison Barnes' point, trust the offense, trust the pass. And uh, it, it led to open looks for him and Keegan Murray. I think those are the two guys who probably benefited the most from passing and, and, and staying ready. Well, as you know, all season long, coaches have been telling Keegan, be aggressive, be aggressive, mm -hmm. be aggressive. And now, if possible, that's even ratcheted up more. Like, you got to be more aggressive right. than we've been telling you to be all season long. Yeah, and last that, night he was. Yeah, he was and, and, and led the team in shot attempts uh, with 18, Dick Keegan Murray. And that's something Mike Brown uh, talked about the other day as well. Like, Keegan's going to have to be more aggressive. You know, like we said, not one person can just fill what Malik Monk does. But Keegan, there's room for him. Even with Malik out there, there was room for him to be more aggressive. Now he has to be ultra aggressive. And I don't want to just see it against Utah, Keegan Murray. I want to see it when Kawhi Leonard's guarding you tomorrow. Go at Kawhi tomorrow. Don't let Kawhi rest. Don't just be hanging in a corner or just shooting threes. Like, you know, I keep saying this, but he's the number four overall pick. He needs to act like it when he's out on the floor. Last night he did. Keep it up, young fella. Maybe I don't need to address this. Maybe this is blown over. Uh, but I know. No, I was just going to say after the loss Friday, I know that there was a lot of people. There were a lot of people on Twitter, you know, blame pointing fingers at HB. And I guess <laughs> Fox even said that wasn't his fault. Right, so, right. you know, let's. <laughs> 
we, we just got to be aware of what's actually happening and not be so willing to play. That guy, I never liked that guy. It's all his fault. Yeah, it, it's like one play and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, HB is the reason we lost yeah. that game. And yeah. like you said, Foxy came out and said, and during the game, after the turnover, Foxy went up to HB and said, my bad, my bad. Mm -hmm. And so there was a reason that, H, that, that the Kings were even in that game. And Harrison Barnes was a big part of that. You know, I thought, what, he had 20 points the other night against Dallas. I thought he played extremely well. Sure, he missed the shot that I think could have tied it or given him the lead or whatever it was. Um, and, and the turnover, you know, between him and Fox. But for the most part, HB delivered that game. Well, if they played more games against Utah, Barnes, and Keegan, they'd be right. all they, league. Yeah. They destroy those matchups for some reason, man. <laughs> it's they they they, uh, they go at that, you know. Especially Keegan, the last time they played, he had forty seven points, and you know this Utah team. And they, you remember Barnes on opening night up there? Yeah, he yeah, lit yeah, it up. Yeah. It was a thirty two, thirty three, something like that. And you know this Utah team, especially with. All their guys out didn't give up much resistance. Look at that. The Kings hit 23 pointers last night, 50% yeah. from three. So the offense uh, was flowing 34 assists as well. And so, like you said, if we could just bottle up that offense from last night and take it into tomorrow, we'll be all right. Yeah. And as HB said, that's their best path going forward. He said, going forward, that's what we've got to do. And you know what Mike Brown loved about the game last night, the offense. You know what the key word? Ah, oh, spray threes. He talked about <laughs> last night, Kyle. Oh, we had a lot of spray threes. He said, HB was wide open. He said, he literally said, HB's like you guys when you go out to the park and there's no one there. And he said, oh, yeah. you guys might shoot 20%. But <laughs> he was feeling himself. Like, yeah, I heard, I heard yeah. that. It was like, yeah, what do we do, Mike? Yeah. Why, why, why are these shots uh, uh, coming after us? You know, it, it, it's interesting because somebody uh, said in the YouTube chat, let me pull it up here. Like they're, they're tired about uh, of hearing about the spray threes as well. I mean, <laughs> did it's you just, send that? No, in I know that wasn't me. That that wasn't me. Uh, but no, I get it. But to to Mike's point about the spray threes, those are in rhythm shots he's talking about. Like we mentioned last week, and, and it might have been with you or, or Jay, when guys warm up and when guys shoot. It's usually catch and shoot, you know? Mm -hmm. It's not off the dribble. Uh, it's not getting in their bag and then shooting a little bit of that. But most of the time, a coach is passing you the ball, you're catching and going up and shooting the ball. Mm -hmm. When we come back, more on Malik. Is he still going to win the sixth man of the year award? Drive guys next, Sack Down Sports. Ooh. The final game of the homestand concludes Tuesday as the Los Angeles Clippers pay a visit to Golden One Center and the Sacramento Kings. It's fourth quarter, Fox done. He's doubled, throws a pass cross court to Keegan, steps to his left, launches a three. He's got the triple. It's the fourth one from downtown in five attempts by Keegan Murray. And the Kings have tied it at 101. Catch all the play-by-play -play starting at 7 on your home of the Kings, Sacktown Sports. Thanks for calling Discover. This is Gabby. Hey, Gabby. It's Jennifer Coolidge. Hi. Um, I'm so glad I reached you at 2 a.m. Oh, of course. Anyone with a Discover card can call and talk to a real person 24-7. Now, how can I help? Yeah, I used my Discover card to buy these yellow pleather pajamas, and I'm just not sure I'm pulling them off. 24-7 U.S.-based customer service. It pays to Discover. Limitations apply. Learn more at discover.com slash credit card. We're recording this progressive commercial on a real boat to let people know that when you bundle your whole boat and other vehicles... What was that, Flo? Progressive saves you money, Jamie. Why are we doing this on a boat? We were going for authenticity. We're going to the city? Authenticity. You mean Atlantic City? But we're not in the Atlantic. Are we? Bundle your home and other vehicles with Progressive. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers. Not available in all states or situations. It's time to trade in and trade up at Northern California's number one Honda dealer, Stockton Honda. Whether you're shopping new or pre-owned, Stockton Honda has a selection and savings. Plus, get top dollar for your trade. Come in today or go to StocktonHonda.com. It's all a click away. Anytime, anywhere, it's all here. StocktonHonda.com. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Kyle Draper. Equip your staff with top-notch uniforms, professionally cleaned and delivered weekly to your workplace by Alsco Uniforms, proud sponsors of the Sacramento Kings Mob Crew. Our services include uniforms, towels, floor mats, mops, 
first aid supplies, and restroom essentials to uphold cleanliness and safety standards in your business. Discover why it pays to keep clean with Alsco uniforms. Visit Alsco.com to learn more. Again, visit ALSCO.com. Are you tired of your tee shots ending up in the adjoining fairway while the rest of your foursome is hitting it down the middle? Well, experts will tell you that being properly fitted for golf clubs will help you strike your drive center cut. The Hagen Oaks Player Performance Studio and its team of trained PGA professionals are ready to help you get rid of your banana balls and duck hooks. Hagen Oaks Indoor Outdoor Player Performance Studio fittings are available seven days a week. Make yours today by calling 916-808-2531. That's 808-2531. Thinking of remodeling your home? Say goodbye to endless internet searches and visit Subcontractors United. Find a list of three pre-qualified and licensed contractors in each home service category. From cabinets to landscapers and everything in between, Subcontractors United makes finding qualified contractors free and easy with no accounts to set up. Visit subcontractorsunited.com and experience the joy of stress-free home improvement. Save time and money at subcontractorsunited.com. For a precision-crafted performance, the decision is easy. A new Acura from Acura of Stockton. Get the driving experience you've been waiting for in a new Acura. Get the best selection and customer service you deserve from Acura of Stockton. Shop in person or use our online express store at acuraofstockton.com. Acura of Stockton will buy your trade, even if you don't buy from us. Don't settle for less than precision-crafted performance of a new Acura from Acura of Stockton and acuraofstockton.com. Hey guys, do you know your tea level? Revive Men's Health here in Sacramento is helping you take that first step toward better health and enhanced intimacy with a free testosterone level test, exam, and consultation. Plus, for this month only, qualified patients can kickstart their treatment with a free supply of ED medication. Revive's customized ED treatments can provide immediate results, restore blood flow naturally, and even bring spontaneity back into your love life. With both in-person and telemedicine appointments available, plus free shipping directly to you, Revive takes the hassle out of treating low T and ED. Having an optimal testosterone level can change your whole life, and it starts with knowing your T level. Take that first step and book your free testosterone test, free exam, and free consultation. And kickstart your treatment with a free supply of ED medication this month only. Call Revive Men's Health Sacramento at 916-365-4566. That's 916-365-4566 or visit revivemenshealth.com. Live and local, it's the Drive Guys. Watch the show on youtube.com slash Sacktown Sports 1140. Or listen on the Sacktown Sports app. Great to be back. Yeah, I know the, these are troubling times for Kings fans, but they won last night. This is where it gets really exciting. Uh, Kyle Draper here. Thank you, Kyle Draper, again, for all the extra work you had to do last week. Appreciate that. I want you to know that I've been doing extra work. I actually did some last night of the game. I'm still I'm still trying to get the Kings to bring Jerry Lucas out. You know, because we've talked about Jerry Lucas all season long, right? Domas, he breaks the franchise record for double-doubles. Who had the old record? Jerry Lucas. Jerry Lucas had this record. Jerry Lucas had that record. So I was trying, I was talking to some people with the Kings yeah. last night, and they're like, What? <laughs> is he is he still around? Is he like, still yeah, around? Okay, yeah. okay. Do you have Where's a number? For him? Do you know where he is? I think he's in Ohio. Ohio, 84 years old right now. Jerry uh Lucas. yeah, he just had his birthday on Saturday, I think. And I he don't, should. They should. Yeah. And Bring I don't in. know if he's still. You know, he was doing speaking for a long time, yeah. so I'm not exactly sure if he's still doing any of that. But I've been working on it. Somebody asked me, you have a number for him? And I found a number for some contact you can line up engagements with. They, yeah, here you here go. It is, right? It's like $5,000 to $10,000. You would think somebody a, in the organization would have I would hope some so. sort so of I'm, contact with. I'm working on it. I don't know that anybody else cares. But I'm trying to. I think that'd be a neat little touch for Domas, right? I agree, man. Like, every King's record. That he just surpassed yeah. is Jerry Lucas. Yes. We, how long we've we been mentioning Jerry Lucas? For all about season long. Two, all season, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so, no, that would be a good touch. So I'm working on it. Jerry, if you're out there, come on, help me out. <laughs> help me out, Jerry. Um, Malik Monk now. Terrible news, of course, with the sprained MCL uh, done for the year. Uh, you mentioned earlier, I think we were not quite on the air yet. You mentioned how this is the worst day of the year to be on Twitter. 
Because, you know, yes. there's all kinds of things you see on Twitter, which we don't need to get into. But, yeah, it's bizarre. It is. And it's really frustrating, uh, some of the stuff you see on it, Twitter. It, it really is. And, and I'm at a point now where, you know, people are talking about Harrison Barnes and trades and yeah. injuries and all, and all. And I'm just like, you know what? This is one of those days where unless it's from Woj or Shams, and, and I got the notifications on for those two guys, unless you're 100% sure – Right. It goes in one ear and out the other. Right. Like I, yeah. I act like yeah. I had never even seen it. I saw something about you Malik can get do yeah yeah big time. Uh huh. Saw something about Malik today. It's like nah, I don't think that's real. Yeah. Saw something about Fox. Like nah, that's not real. But is it realistic still to think that Malik can still win? We'll still win the six man of the year award. I think so. I think he he's uh you know played enough games. He's um uh, done enough. I mean he's only going to miss what nine games. Yeah. You know, when it's all said and done, mm -hmm. I think it, it's wrapped up. I mean, unless like I don't think Tim Hardaway Jr. is in the, in the running. Uh, Norman Powell is picking up some steam. Nas Reed. Gets Nas some Reed mention, is getting yeah. some mention. Bobby Portis. Uh, I, we, I forget who we had on. I think it might have been Jared Greenberg uh, last week. And he said, yeah, it's Malik's. To, to lose i Good. mean it's yeah he, he's far and away but that was before he got hurt right? that was before yeah. he got hurt yes yeah. exactly and so does he get penalized for missing nine games these final nine games of the season i think he's done enough man you know it, it'd be different if he only played in 40 something games 50 sure. games i mean he's played in pretty much every game except you know obviously yesterday against utah and then the rest of the way he's done enough to earn that award. I agree. And I think 99% of Kings fans would agree. My fear is that if the Kings do, you know, fade here and if Dallas continues on this run, um, you know, I could see, you know, more attention to Hardaway because that's a bigger market team and they get more attention. I hope not, but that I I'm, I'm a little bit afraid something like that happens. Yeah. And, and I I'm will say it should, I agree with you. I, I, I hear what you're saying because Dallas is sort of the sexy team right now. Yeah, they're, they're they're coming alive. They're playing their best basketball uh, of the season. Uh, I'm looking at uh, six man of the year odds right now, uh, and these were as of yesterday. As of yesterday, um, Malik Monk still the favorite minus one forty five. Um, this is on Fanduel. Uh, Nas Reed second choice plus one fifty. So that's hmm. still hmm. still a little healthy. Still play a little bit. Yeah, yeah. still still yeah. Exactly. And and they don't even like Tim Hardaway's down at in like the seventh choice uh, out of, you know, you got Norman Powell, Bobby Portis. Uh, those to me might be the four front runners, Malik, Nasri, Powell and Bobby Portis. Any thoughts you're willing to share with us on how likely Malik is to be back next year? <laughs> <laughs> I have no inside info, man. This is this is probably one of the more difficult free agent decisions uh, that we faced here in Sacramento because we've talked and documented how much money the Kings can offer, what kind of deal, uh, what is it? Four years, 78. And that's it. And that's it a million times, but right. That's that, all that's I can it. offer. So you're, you're talking not even 20 mil per year. Somebody's going to offer Malik 20 million or more in excess of 20 million. And then even if you so-called wanted to do a shorter contract, why wouldn't Malik do that? Why would he gamble on himself, especially the way, you know, playing that sports is one injury could derail everything. I think he's in the market to get the bag right now. Obviously, not necessarily with Detroit or somebody you want to play meaningful basketball games. But we've talked about Orlando. We've talked about San Antonio. I also would like to think about how do teams view Malik Monk? Is he a true two guard? Or because of his playmaking abilities, can you run him at the one, let's say? So if you're San Antonio and you see the two-man game that Malik and Domas, Malik and Alex Lynn have developed, how does he look mm -hmm. with a Victor Wimbanyama? You know, if you're Orlando, when you got all those you know, studs out there. If you're Orlando, you'd have to look at that, right? I think you'd have so. to consider that. Yeah, I mean, think about a Malik Monk and a Jalen Suggs backcourt. Like Suggs is a tough, hard nosed defender. And they need shooting. They need shooting. They need playmaking too. They need, you know, a facilitator. And I think that's probably where Malik has, you know, made his most money coming up with this contract is his ability to be more than just a scorer, but also a playmaker. And mm -hmm. so I think it's, if I'm just being a, a honest, I think 
the odds are that he would leave. I'm not saying I know any inside info, but I'm talking about money, contract we can offer. How about the role as well? Opportunities. Yeah. You know, this is his chance to go out there and get the bag. And so uh, four years, 78 versus 490 or 400, that'd be hard to turn down. I don't want to agree with you, but I agree with you. I think that's, <laughs> no, it looks I, like I don't it. want to agree with myself. Yeah, I right. want Malik here forever, uh -huh. you know, but it's the money is the money, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's something we got to face. Yeah. That'll, that'll be uh That'll add an element of uh, anxiety to this offseason for sure, but it's going to be a crucial offseason. Well, we don't need to worry about the offseason right now. No, we don't exactly. Yeah. We, we got to finish and, 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 and go push towards this playoffs, but that's a, a looming thing over this franchise, what to do with Malik Monk, because he's outperformed his current contract. He deserves the bag for his next contract. And he, you, you might price yourself out of it. Yeah. You know? and, and let's be honest, if you're the Kings and you, they don't want Malik to go, but they probably have an idea that there's a good chance he will. My point is this, if you're the Kings, the auditions to replace Malik, they start now. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, you know, it's an opportunity for a Chris Duarte, you know, or a Davion. You know, we saw Kobe Jones late in the game mm -hmm. as well. And you have to figure out what you have if you're Monty McNair. I guarantee you, Monty McNair, and, and this is just smart business, smart, uh, you know, running the team. You have to have the contingency plan in place. If Malik does go elsewhere, what's our fallback option? Is it somebody in-house? Is it somebody I'm looking outside? Maybe we bring in a different free agent. Like, all those things have to be on the table if you're Sacramento. I like Colby Jones. And I know, we, yeah, you know, we yeah. get carried away. And I was talking to G-Man about Colby Jones a few weeks ago. And he said, he just, when he comes into a game, he looks like he knows what he's doing. Uh, and then last night he comes in, hits that short jumper. You know, he takes the right shot, knocks it down. Yeah, you like I, there, that, there's right? something there. I'm not <laughs> saying, oh, he's the next Malik, but I think they may have a player there. Is is he the next Keon Ellis? You know what I mean? Where, you know, he starts off, you know, G League, and then, bam, next season, which Keon, this is his second season. Midway through it, you're like, okay, let's give him some real run, and then he takes off. Can you believe where this whole thing is with Keon Ellis right now? Seriously. Yeah, I've been telling yeah. you. I, I know you <laughs> But seriously, I mean, just look at where we were. Right. And I was like, oh, yeah, he's starting. He's, he's starting. Like, yeah. He's an integral <laughs> and, part of the yeah. team. And there's no question he should be starting. Right. I was like, oh, yeah. Yes. It, it, it It's amazing how, you know, six months ago, this guy, you know, is was he going to make the team? Is he yeah. going to make the team? You know, do we want to keep him on the two way? And now you give him the contract and he's a starter on what we hope is a playoff team. 339-1140, If you want to weigh in, we'll get to the phones, we'll get to the text line, get to the YouTube chat. And when we come back, is there life after getting swept by the Mavs for the Kings? Of course there is. Next with the Drive Guys on Sackdown Sports. Subscribe to Sackdown Sports on YouTube and watch the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross, Styles and Watkins, and the Drive Guys. Live Monday through Friday from 6 to 6. Plus view archive shows and exclusive content. Subscribe at YouTube.com slash Sacktown Sports. Are you someone who tries to drive all distracted by your phone? Someone who props it on the steering wheel or peeks down at it for a glance? or just scrolls and scrolls. When you take the time to shop at Folsom Lake Honda, there's one thing you'll always find. Happy people ready to serve you. As a family owned and operated dealership since 2009, customer service is our number one priority. Our customers love doing business with us and you will too. Looking to own or lease? During the spring sales event, drive a brand new Accord or Civic. Visit us today at FolsomLakeHonda.com, your one-stop Honda shop. Folsom Lake Honda. savings now that's speaking the lowe's language and with my lowe's rewards your savings just keep coming save money with member only offers and earn points when you shop more points equal more rewards just for you because lowe's knows you earned it literally learn more about our new loyalty program at lowes.com slash my lowe's rewards program subject to terms and conditions points are awarded on eligible purchases see lowes.com slash terms for full details subject to change when Cynthia came to TurboTax, she just launched her new side gig, a true crime podcast. I'm a first-rate detective with a golden voice. 
As her TurboTax expert, I made her second income count by guaranteeing 100% accurate filing and her maximum refund. <clears throat> what did she do with that refund? Find out next week. Switch to Intuit TurboTax and make your moves count. See guarantee details at TurboTax.com guarantees. Experts only available with TurboTax Live. Welcome to a brighter future with Aztec Solar, serving Sacramento since 1980. Everyone knows that solar saves money. How much? The answer is a few clicks away. Visit yourpowersavings.com. It's fast, easy, and reliable, giving you instant insight into your potential savings. I used to pay $400 a month to the power company, and that $400 a month added up to $48,000 over the past 10 years. That all changed when I switched to solar with Aztec Solar. Now it's your turn to stop overpaying for electricity. Calculate your solar savings right now at yourpowersavings.com. And Aztec Solar will email or text you how much you'll save every month. Plus, we've got an exclusive offer for you. Get your solar electrical system for just $9,995 cash price after incentives. Don't wait. This deal won't last forever. Visit yourpowersavings.com today and take the first step towards energy independence with Aztec Solar. At aimyourdigital.com, we'll help you target the right audience, build your leads, and crush your quota. Take your business to the next level. Our digital marketing strategies help grow awareness of your product or service, all while building trust in your business. Our approach involves leveraging multiple tools and strategies to deliver exceptional results that are customized to your unique business needs. Don't wait to run out of sales leads. Keep your business growing. Get started with AinYourDigital.com today. KHTKAM Sacramento, KYMX HD2 Sacramento. From the Power Business Technology Toshiba Studios, your flagship station for the Beam Team. Should we light the beam? Light the beam, baby. <laughs> This segment is brought to you by Kia of Vacaville. Check them out at kiaofvacaville.com. The Tribe Guys powering your afternoons Monday through Friday on Satown Sports. How about Kyle Ledbetter with the live read, huh? Yeah, he was Woo! on point with that. That was good stuff. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Kyle in for Jay today. Hopefully Jay's back tomorrow. Jay a little under the uh, weather. Kyle wearing a throwback Pittsburgh Pirates hat and a New York Liberty jersey, and he's got to be the only person in the world who's ever worn that combination. Yeah, ever. exactly. Yeah, you know, I think he's rooting for Iowa today. Uh, this, it's uh, so funny that you brought that up. The, the people can't see my full outfit on YouTube, but I also have some wonderful yellow pants with the sure. yellow shoes. So the, the pirate hat just matches with that. But I realized as I was walking out of the house, you know what? I did end up wearing the full... Iowa yes. Hawkeye sure. outfit up and down for today. Good for you. Good for you. Kings fans, of course, feeling a little bit better after that game last night. But, oh, what a difficult weekend to be a Kings fan. I still say, though, Drapes, as we've been discussing, hey, that's uh, that was a rough stretch there against the Mavericks, and you lose Malik on top of losing Herter. But there's still time to make this season a memorable one. And now there's no – weight of um mm. expectations I, I i like the king's chances of responding well to this it's a crisis no question no one would choose it but i like their chances of uh responding well to what, what, what 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 did you know what does that mean that means they're going to defend well okay that i'm talking wins gonna, and losses big gonna, they're going to compete and they're going <laughs> to they're going to end up uh again i think seventh or eighth is like an accomplishment if from where they are right now without malik if you end up seventh or eighth I that's think an that's accomplishment. A, to me, it yeah. is, depending on what you do once you get there. So looking at the standings right now, uh, I, I think so, because <laughs> here, here's why. Here, and, and I hear you. You know, you're talking about them competing, playing hard, you know, the eye test, if you will. Uh, but right now, they're a game and a half up on the Lakers. Really two and a half because they own the tiebreaker. If they don't get a top eight, with nine games left to go, something went terribly wrong in my opinion. Right. Like, you you lose a two-and-a-half game lead with nine left to go, that means you went, like, three and six mm -hmm. down the stretch. Mm -hmm. They do have a tough schedule, as you've pointed out. Yes. They have some tough opponents left on the docket for this year. I don't know, man. I, maybe I, I, I want more from them. 
Maybe I expect more. And I understand the tough schedule. I, I'm, I'm with you on that. And you the know? tough circumstances. And on the tough circumstances. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's why I think tomorrow's game is so important. I, I think tomorrow against the Clippers, who are playing a little bit better, they've, I think they've won three in a yeah, row. They've righted the ship. Yes, they've righted the ship. But then you got New York and Boston. A three-game losing streak at this juncture, that could be pretty damning. One thing we can't have at this point. It's understandable, but we can't have that kind of negative thinking where they haven't what? even, they haven't even, no, here's what I'm saying. They haven't even tipped off tomorrow's game, of course. It's still hours away, and you're talking about a three game losing. But, but, now, what no, you said is true. No, <laughs> it's true, but we can't think that way. But here's the thing, Whitey. I've been conditioned being here in Sacramento uh, to think that way. I know, That's I know. how we think, right? I know. And I'm just being a realist. I, I know you are. I think tomorrow's game is critical. I think, you know, I will say this. The Knicks aren't playing as well as of late. They're, they they're could beat, beat the Knicks. Knicks. And But here's what I need to see. You talk about defending, you know, all that. No, I need the stars to be the stars. De'Aaron Fox, it's your time. Mm-hmm. DeMontis Sabonis, it's your time. Because we could talk about HB, and Keegan, and Davion, and all these other guys. If De'Aaron and Domas don't bring it, it, it won't matter. Look at the teams we're about to face starting tomorrow. Star-laden Clippers team. Like tomorrow, I'll, and we're going to have our show tomorrow live from Golden One Center at 2 o'clock. And we'll be uh, boots on the ground, if you will. But tomorrow, De'Aaron Fox has to be one of the two best players on the floor. Domas has to be one of the top three players. Like, this Clippers team, they are star-laden with Harden and PG. And if P, and PG's coming off. 41 uh, yesterday. He's playing extremely well right now. But we're talking about raising the level. Like, and we just heard, uh, I forget, was it Harrison Barnes? Yeah, Yeah, Harrison Barnes. No offense, HB, but if we just relying on the system, sometimes guys got to take over down the stretch. De'Ara Fox won the clutch player of the year, not because of the system, because he had the cojones late in games. That's what we need from our guys. What you just said, yeah, about Domas and De'Aaron Fox is absolutely undeniable. It's irrefutable. There you go. You know, and they all know that. And and that's been the case with this team all year, but especially now, you know, all year long when they've had big games like last night, Mike Brown says, yeah, that's what they're supposed to do. And now there's, there's even less room. Wiggle room for that. They need it more than ever. That that there's no question. They're going to accomplish anything. They're going to need a lot more from those two guys. They're going to have to somehow. How do you how do you raise your game if you're one of those guys? Domas would have to score more. Yep. Deion yep. has got to be more consistent. And, but how about this, Whitey? Because you said it about Luca and Kyrie and them being the best players on the floor. Got to control. Got to impact, impact on the, game. the game exactly. Whatever the game needs, you have to be the catalyst for it. You know, Darren, I would love for him to score 40. But what if he controls the game and makes the right pass down the stretch Mm -hmm. that leads to the wide open Keegan Murray three? Like he has to be undoubtedly the best player on the floor. That doesn't necessarily mean the leading scorer all the time. Right. It means the guy that impacts the game the most. We've seen that from Malik, haven't we? Yes, yes. There have been times it's been, you know, because he's not a starter, doesn't play as many minutes. Maybe sometimes it's just a quarter. The Minnesota game, it was much of that game, but he controls the game. Yes. And and and, and it's all about the timing of it, too. Yeah. You know, controlling the game in the first is much different than controlling the game in the fourth. Mm-hmm. Scoring 15 in the first is a whole lot different than scoring 15 in the fourth. And so that's what I mean with De'Aaron and Domas, especially De- DeMontis Sabonis. Like late in games, whether it's the big rebound, whether it's the big defensive stop, whether it's the pass, whether it's the shot, you have to be responsible for it. Now, last week, uh, I was with my daughter and family. We're in the Bay Area, and okay. I, so I was listening to my old station a little bit, uh, the game, and I happened to hear our next guest, 339-1140, 1-800-920-1140. TC back with us. TC, I heard you on with Bonte and Chasky in the Bay last week. You're regional. You're a regional star. Hey, yeah, man. Hey, let's check it out. Drake, Whitey, what's going on, first and foremost? What's up, my guy? Hey, no, nah, you know me, man. Listen, hey, I be tapping in. Bonte and Joe, man, them is the homies, man. You know, just, we, we, hey, we be tapping in on the Niners. We don't see eye to eye with the Warriors and Kings, but you know. Gotcha. You know how that be. Yes, yeah. What's hey, on your mind today? 
Hey, man, but check it out, though. Listen. Hey, let's keep it short and sweet. Hey, you know I've been calling short and sweet uh, lately. Hey, I love Malik. I love every. I love everything about Malik. But this is listen. This is a, a team. Listen, this is a team of players that need to come together. Fox, Domas, we need y'all for sure. Fox, stop taking the bad shots, bro. At bad times, I'm not telling you not to shoot the ball, but at the same time, like we need Domas to be dominant in these in these in five mo in the five moments. We need you to take smart shots, like get down to the paint, shoot a three when it's a timely three, not a three when it's like two minutes left and we're down four points, bro. We don't need a three. Go get two easy baskets, right? Because you're unguardable going to the rack, right? So get to the paint, brother. You get me? Also, what I'm saying about Malik is I love Malik, bro. I'm, and honestly, I really, truly believe that Malik will be back and we got the money to sign Malik back, bro. But moving forward into these playoffs and moving forward next season, if we end up losing Malik or if Malik's not back for the play for this playoff run, I truly believe that we got the horses. I think the team will look different other than the offensive punch with Keon and Dorte, bro. I think we'll be better defensively. Seriously, I know it sounds crazy. I love Malik. Malik's my dog. I love him, bro, but it's not the end of the world. And I promise you, this playoff round right here is going to be much more special than last year. That's all I got. TC. TC. He's right. And we love Malik, and no one wants him to go, and we wish he weren't hurt, but they, they, they have a chance to be better defensively when he's not on the floor. No, you're right. You're right. It, it, I don't like saying that, but he's right. <laughs> no, look, it's, it's a fact. I'm not going to come at you. You're all nervous <laughs> to say it. You know, but the, the, here's the thing about Malik. And and we talk about his scoring and, and his playmaking. But who's going to come with the heart that Malik oh, yeah. does? That's, yeah. that's the thing. Who's going to step up? Look at that. I got nothing. <laughs> Who's going to step up in that regard? Is it Keon? Is it De'Aaron? You know, it's, it, it's you know, we, we talked earlier about Malik and how big he's been late in games. Well, who's going to say, it's De'Aaron's time now, who's going to say, no matter what, I'm not going to let us lose. I'm going to make the plays. We need De'Aaron Fox from last year, fourth quarter Fox, to resurface this year. From the 916, the NBA cap is stupid. If the Kings can't offer a player the most money, especially if he's already on the team, how does that make sense? It is, it's confusing. I'm not a capologist, but it has to do with the offer. They gave him, what, two years ago? Um, right. And the bird rights. And bird rights and how yeah. much more you can offer right. them. Right. The Percentage. mid-level exception. All yeah. that. Yeah, all yeah. that. Yeah, exactly. And I, I guess they do it to circumvent teams from signing guys on the low in re, in hopes of rewarding mm -hmm. them with a massive contract, mm -hmm. uh, you know, then. And it, it's it, it it's lame. I know it is what it is, though. And they knew the rules. They knew they knew this though. I don't think anybody expected Malik to outperform the contract like like this much. You know, if they said if someone told him, "Look, if you sign this guy to this, he's going to outperform this, and you're not going to be sure you'll be able to keep him when it's over," they would have said, "Oh yeah, oh, we will do that." Right? Exactly. We want two years of the best Malik moment right. anyone's ever seen. Exactly, and he's outperformed that, and he's become a vital part. And remember, nobody knew what Malik Monk was. We thought he was just a scorer, a scoring six man, but he has brought in so much. And we just talked about it, the facilitating the heart and soul. Like, how do you quantify that when a guy hasn't even played a single minute for you? Mm -hmm. And so now kudos to him. He's outperformed his contract. It's time for him to get paid. You remember the old, like Mike commercial, like Mike. Yeah. Uh, like Monk. Monk. I want to be Ooh, like Monk. Okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hope he comes back. <laughs> hope he comes back. Uh, the answer to at least part of that question, well, who needs to help fill that void, is Keegan Murray. And he is developing as more than just a shooter. And we're back with that when we come right back to Drive Guys on Sacktown Sports. The final game of the homestand concludes Tuesday as the Los Angeles Clippers pay a visit to Golden One Center and the Sacramento Kings. Chris Sabonis rolling in the paint, eludes the defender, a two-hand flush is thrown down off the dribble. Catch all the play-by-play -play starting at 7 on your home of the Kings, Sacktown Sports.
Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential, but finding those people can be a major hassle unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies candidates with the right skills, sends you great matches, then you can easily invite them to apply. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free to try ZipRecruiter for free. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, banking with Capital One is the easiest decision in the history of decisions. Even easier than choosing Charles Barkley in a pickup game. We'll take Barkley. Ha! First pick. Sorry, kids. Yep, even easier than that. With no fees or minimums and no overdraft fees, is it even a decision? Okay, here's the plan. Pass me the ball every time. This is banking reimagined. What's in your wallet? Terms apply. See CapitalOne.com slash bank for details. Capital One NA member FDIC. Live and local, it's the Drive Guys. Watch the show on YouTube.com slash Sacktown Sports 1140. Or listen on the Sacktown Sports app. So, Drapes, forget about the Kings for just a minute. How'd you bracket? Brackets. I didn't even do one, dude. Uh, I, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did you do one? I did not do and one. I didn't do one. It's one of the first years I did not do one, man. I don't even know. Like, I know Zach Eady. I don't know anybody from NC State other than uh, Burns. I, yeah, Burns. Yeah, yeah I, Mr. Burns. I'm not following men's basketball that much this year. It's crazy. I know the stars on the women's game. I'm looking forward to that tip-off between LSU and Iowa at 4 o'clock, but the men's game, I haven't been following. Much. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, I'm with you, but then, you know, when you have NC State for the first time yeah. since, what, 83, it's like, oh, huh. you know, that kind of takes you back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Purdue, right? first time since 80 wow. uh, that they've made it, and UConn is back there again. Like, I couldn't name a single player on UConn's team. I can name Paige Beckers of the UConn women, mm -hmm. but I can't name anybody. Do you know who the head coach of the UConn yeah, men's team is? Yeah, I know Hurley. Yeah, okay, I know. Yeah. Come on. I, Kyle, come on, man. You're <laughs> trying to embarrass me all out here. <laughs> Just this saying. Dude, yeah, that, that, I know a, that. Sometimes the coaches are more famous than the players, especially in men's college that's, basketball. That, that's true. That but, team is so dominant. It's almost so like the dumb. UConn women's team used to be. Right. So dominant. And uh, I'm not sure who I'm pulling for when it comes to them. I, I don't have a, a dog in the race at all when it comes to uh the men's side how about the women's women's side i like them all to be honest with you you know you know i'm a caitlin clark fan i think she's fantastic i think she's the most exciting player in the league but i also like my girl dawn staley in south carolina you know dawn staley a philadelphia native you know even when i was a high schooler in philadelphia i looked up to dawn staley because mm. she was the bar that was set when it came to high school basketball in philly and so i'm pulling for her i like lsu also i, I mean I, I i'm just hoping for great basketball today between those two. you guys but, probably touched on this last week uh caitlin clark big three are you for it are you against it we did touch on this <sighs> I, what is it, five I, mil for five her? mil. I would do it if I, would, I was her. I think she should. Five mil. Yeah. I, I would do it. Uh, but it raises the issue of, man, how can we get WNBA players more money? You know, because she's making more off the court than she will on the court. And it's five mil for eight games, regular season two, uh, postseason. And think about this. And I said this last week. She might be able to open the doors up for other women in men's leagues as well. Like this is a historical thing that she would be doing in addition to the five mil. I would do it if I was her. Do you think we'll ever have a woman in the NBA? A lot of people will say <sighs> if there's ever going to be a woman in one of the major pro sports, you know, other than maybe a kicker, it would probably be the NBA. And it would probably be somebody, you know, with great like ball skills, yeah, like ball a smallish, skills. Like point guard. I don't know. It's tough because Here's the thing about the NBA game people don't understand. It's way more physical than we see it on TV. Yeah. Like, and I know the women's game is physical as well, but there's a size difference and a weight difference between men and women. It mm -hmm. is what it is. So as great as Caitlin Clark is, and I feel like she definitely could thrive from the perimeter, but, you know, a, a Jalen Duran foul on the inside or something, mm -hmm. I, I don't think I want to see that. No, I, I don't want to. I, I don't, don't want to see that. We probably will see it eventually. 
Uh, it's just hard to imagine. You got to think, right, soon. right. It, it's maybe not somebody, in our lifetime. Some woman who, and this isn't hard to imagine, some woman who like just almost virtually does not miss a shot. You yeah. Know? Some ungodly shooter, like Steph Curry, only an improvement on that. But that does she woman, go to the basket at all? Or does she penetrate? Only when, you know, when they overplay her, she'll have to, right? Right. Yeah. That's, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know if I want to see it. I think it's a long way. It's off. a long ways off. I think yeah. somebody scores 100 in a game before we have a woman in the Yeah, I, I I agree with you. And so that that's tough, man, because I think Caitlin Clark, like I said, she could get buckets right now, I think, in the NBA. Like, I think she'd be a tough cover. But it's the other side, you know, getting into the paint, having to defend, going through screens, you know, like – I mean, these some of these dudes are three hundred pounds. Yeah, like it's 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 tough. Do you remember before Kobe passed, he was uh, talking a lot about women's basketball, and he was, I believe, he said something like, you know, someday, why not? And I've always believed he was talking to his daughter. Mm, he was trying yeah. to tell her, hey, the message. To why Gigi, not? If someone's yeah. gonna do it, why not? Why you? not you? Did yeah. you see? Uh, have you been watching ESPN at all? They did a feature on Shaq's daughter. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Shaq's daughter, Mc McDonald's High School All American, going to Florida. Six seven, he can handle like a guard. Really shoot like Steph. Yeah, you know he's saying my goal is for her to be, if not the best, one of the best to ever play. And so I'm interested in seeing her uh, oh. as she progresses. Yep, yeah. six three, seven yeah. and got handles. Uh, three three nine eleven forty one eight hundred nine two zero eleven forty. Marshall has been hanging on. Hello, Marshall. You're on with the drive, guys. What's up? Hey guys. Hey, Whitey. It's good to have you back, Drapes. I think you're doing an absolutely fantastic job. The reason I'm calling is because um, I uh, I just my son and I are watching the game and it just seems like Sabonis is so reluctant to shoot any shot, even if he was right in the middle of the key uh, last night and kicked it out. And I just feel like he's he's getting to be too one dimensional with just banging down low and offensively. Great player, we know that, but if he could just hit that free throw line shot or just below it or in those mid range is a little easy. Well, not easy, but those mid range shots, if he could hit those, I think that, you know, they have to come up and then he could really exploit them down low. And I'm wondering if, if you've heard him talking about that, is he working, working that out? Is, is he practicing that? Has it been spoken? Have you heard anything? And what do you think about um, trying to develop that shot and not being so reluctant to uh, go ahead and take that shot? If it's wide, if it's wide open, if it's there, what do you think? Thank you, Marshall. You uh, no, I, I think it's something, you know, he's worked on. It's been brought up before. And, you know, what winds up happening is, you know, it, it's just like golf. You go to Tom Morton at Hagen Oaks, get your lesson. He teaches you this grip or do this or do that. But then in the stressors of the actual competition, you go back to what you know. You go back to your bread and butter. And I think that's what Domas uh, is doing. You know, one thing, and I've mentioned this time and time again, I'd like for him to do is make a quick decision. Whatever it is, no hesitation. Mike Brown always says, let it fly. That doesn't necessarily mean three-point range. Hey, even for Domas, let it fly from the foul line too as well. And so I think that shot is there for him. And, you know, the more he takes that, the more he knocks it down, the more the defense has to adjust. And then he can get to the basket a little more like Marshall just said. Yeah, it does look sometimes like he has the, the yips is probably too strong a word, but you can see, you know, the way he like lines it up. And some of it's a ball fake and some of it is just his reluctance. Just looking here in basketball reference. Mm -hmm. uh, he makes, of course, 91 percent of his dunks. Hook shot, he makes 55 percent, 68 for 124. Layups, of course, he makes 62%. Jump shots, 85 of 204, that's 42%. Uh, mm. And that includes shooting about 40% on the threes. So he's just not comfortable taking that shot. Clearly to me, if you look at any player and you look at areas where they can improve, well, with him, it's like that's the area, right? He had a mid-range foul line jumper, 100%. And we saw it last year against Golden State. That shot was there time and time and time uh -huh. again. And – he tried to overpower Looney. Looney's strong. People don't understand how strong Kevon Looney is. Same thing with the boys down, and we'll see him tomorrow. Same thing with the Clippers, Zubats. You know, Zubats mm -hmm. is strong. You know, Nurkic, strong. You know, Valanchun is strong. Like, you aren't able to overpower all of those guys. So what else can you do, Domas, to your game? And I think that foul line jumper, I mean, he should be knocking down three or four of those a game, I think, honestly. Those are always there for him. He's not a great foul shooter, is he? I mean, that's 
Yeah, no, 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 that's true. I mean, look at the numbers. The numbers yeah, indicate yeah. what is he in the sixties? So I, I that's think, nothing right that suggests he 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 can improve from there, and it would open things up for not only yeah. him but offensively for the team as well. Yeah, I think so. And what's interesting, I know he doesn't take a lot of threes, but he's shooting a respectable percentage, three ninety seven. I think. right. Yeah. So yeah. you would think, you would hope that translates to the foul line too, right? You mm-hmm. know, but for some reason, it, it's just not clicking. Although he is shooting better as of late. Yeah, it looks good. It right. just looks a little like. I'm not sure, right? Yeah, yeah. He doesn't have a lot of confidence, and it's more of a. Uh, it's one of those. Okay. Just, just let yeah. it go, man. Yeah. Live with the results, you know. And so, especially in the half court set, it feels like he's trying to figure it out. It's like, oh, I guess I do have to take it. He'd rather not. And last, uh, last chance, you know, it's like, okay, I guess I'll take it. I'm being forced to. No, oh, bro, let that thing fly, man. Do you think that they really are going to need more points from him? We've talked about this a lot during the year, but especially now given the circumstances they're facing, do they need more offense from him? I think so. I I really do. I'm talking especially with Malik down, you know. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about. And if you look at, you know, his recent games, and I know he's got the double-double streak, he's getting triple-doubles, but Whitey, over his last four games, he's a, wow, I'm going to go back over his last seven. I'm on basketball reference right here. His last seven games. 14.4 14.4 points, 13 rebounds, 8.4 assists. Great numbers, but I need more scoring from them. They're yes. good numbers. They're good. But, you know, the rebounds and the assists, yeah. great. The points, if that was at 20, if he was at 20, 13, and 8, then it's like, man, he's doing something. There's no time for excuses now, but to me, it looks like he more than anybody else on the team is wearing down. Don't you Did you hear what I said on the post game? You missed it yesterday on the post game because you were at the game. I told Morgan, I said, you know what? To me, DeMontis Sabonis looks like a guy that could use a break. Yeah. We can't give it to him right now because we're in the playoff right, race. Right. But I think he could honestly use a game off. You know, and like I said, it's not going to happen. It's too valuable. You know, these games are too important. But, man, I wish we would have stole him some uh, time. When we come back, we'll hear what Mike Brown had to say about Keegan Murray's future as a distributor. Next with the Drive Guys, Act on Sports. The final game of the homestand concludes Tuesday as the Los Angeles Clippers pay a visit to Golden One Center and the Sacramento Kings. Sabonis rolling in the paint, eludes the defender, a two-hand flush is thrown down off the dribble. Catch all the play-by-play starting at 7 on your home of the Kings, Sacktown Sports. In this market, you'll find Fisher Investments is different than other money managers. Different how? Aren't we all just looking for the hottest stocks? Nope. We use diversified strategies to position our clients' portfolios for their long-term goals. You don't just provide cookie-cutter portfolios? No. We tailor our clients' portfolios to their goals and needs. But you still sell investments that generate high commissions for you, right? No, we don't sell commission-based products. We're a fiduciary, the highest standard of care for a financial advisor. It means we're obligated to act in our clients' best interest. So when do you make more money? Only when your clients make more money? Yep, we have one transparent management fee structured, so we do better when our clients do better. Sounds like you really look out for your clients. We do, because our priority is helping them achieve a comfortable retirement. That might be why most of our clients come from other money managers. Visit FisherInvestments.com to find out why investors like you switch to us. Fisher Investments. Clearly, different money management. Investments and securities involve the risk of loss. It's time to trade in and trade up at Northern California's number one Honda dealer, Stockton Honda. Whether you're shopping new or pre-owned, Stockton Honda has the selection and savings. Plus, get top dollar for your trade. Come in today or go to StocktonHonda.com. It's all a click away. Anytime, anywhere, it's all here. Country in the Park is back May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo with Brantley Gilbert, Dustin Lynch, Jake Owen, Walker Hayes, and more. Tickets start at just 46 bucks. Country in the Park, May 17th and 18th at Cal Expo. For more information, visit CITPFest.com. Brought to you by Fiddy and Fiber, Dawson Oil Company, and Good Guys Heating and Cooling.
Once upon a time, you could get a heater tune-up or an air conditioner tune-up for just $59, or both for $89. Not too hot, not too cold, just right. I thought you were going to read me a bedtime story. Shh, go to sleep now. <gasps> Bonnie.com. License 696-355. Guys, this month only, Revive Men's Health Sacramento offers qualified patients a free supply of ED medication to kickstart their treatment and enhance intimacy. Book your free T-Check exam and consultation today. Call 916-365-4566 or visit revivemenshealth.com. Hey everybody, it's Kyle Draper for Mercedes-Benz of Stockton. Now you've heard me talk about my amazing experience with them when I got my new EQS. I tell everybody I know, their dedication to every customer is incredible. Whether it's by text or call, they are available whenever I need them. And they're also a major Mercedes commercial van sales and service center as well. So if you're a biz owner with a vehicle fleet, Mercedes-Benz vans are a smart business move. They're rugged, sophisticated cargo haulers that qualify for very generous tax breaks. And it is a Benz. Your drivers will love it and your company will look great. Sprinters are available at rates starting at 4.9% APR. So go take a tour of the gorgeous new Mercedes-Benz of Stockton showroom a half hour from SAC, right off of I-5 at the 8 Mile Road exit or online anytime at mbfstockton.com. That's mbfstockton.com. Golf to Go is brought to you by the Hagen Oaks Golf Super Shop. Here's Frank LaRosa. Everywhere you look, someone is always telling you how to get more fit. While we may feel like we're fit, we can all get fitter. Maybe you have a favorite pair of jeans that don't fit anymore, or maybe you just want to lower your blood pressure a bit. Here are a few suggestions. Walk. Walk more. Walk more rounds. Walk to work. Walk to the store. Walk the dog, but walk. Strengthening the most important muscles in the golf swing, your glutes. Even Tiger couldn't fire his. Buy a foam roller and knead the muscles of your body three times a week, especially your hips. You can do this while you watch television. Eat more vegetables and potato chips and carrot cake don't count. Stabilize the muscles of your core by raking leaves or sweeping floors and eliminate soda, especially the ones with artificial sweeteners. Maybe you'll be able to take a little bigger turn. Maybe you won't get tired around the 15th hole. Either way, you're going to be much happier with yourself. That's your golf to go. I'm Frank LaRosa. This segment is brought to you by Kia of Vacaville. Check them out at kiavacaville.com. The Drive Guys, live and local, every afternoon, Monday through Friday on Sacktown Sports. Thanks for being with us on this uh, challenging Monday for Kings fans. We're trying to stay optimistic here. And, you know, if you're a longtime Kings fan, you know that, hey, this was a tough weekend, but the Kings are in it. They're playing for things now. It's April, and the Kings are still playing meaningful games. There's something to be said for that. Drapes, I'm going to bring up some here on the – you probably have seen this on the chat. Okay. Something that we talked about last week. I mentioned last week, hey, one thing the Kings have accomplished the last two years, they've put the whole Luka thing behind them. Not so fast. <laughs> Not so fast, my friend. Uh, we have here from uh, Zeusman65. He says, uh, Luca's become a top five defensive point guard in the league. He's uh, good at defense. He basically says, well, quote, Kings will never get over not picking Luca. When will they ever get the chance to get a generational superstar again? Not in free agency, typically not in the draft. It was there for the taking. And of course, mm. we had Luca waving bye bye to Vlade Friday yeah. saying, he should have drafted me. <sighs> Here's what I'm going to say about Luka. Tremendous talent, future Hall of Famer. But let's not act like this guy has already won three championships or anything like that. He ain't won nothing. He ain't won a darn thing. He's advanced past the first round once. And so here's what I'll say regarding that. If Luka goes on and leads the Mavs to the title then yes, I could see us thinking, man. And I honestly, Whitey, feel like the narrative is starting to change a little bit with him in terms of he can't win with him. He had Porzingis, had Brunson, couldn't win. But now it seems like the Mavs have surrounded him with the perfect team for him. You got Kyrie, you got the role players. And so I think Luka can lead this Mavs team, at least to the Western Conference Finals. 
They're good enough. The way they're playing, they're good enough to be. And so I think the narrative with him will change here in Sacramento if he has postseason success. And so if they make a deep run or if they get to the finals, then we have to start examining that again and say, man, I wish we would have had him. I know he's not fun to watch. I know he whines a lot. Ugh. But man, if he's ours, you'll take that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if he's on the other team, it's tough to watch. But if he's your guy, I think Kings fans would love it. If he could advance to the finals in the Sacramento Kings uniform, same exact player, fans would be behind that. Fans mm-hmm. would be okay with that. And so, like I said, I think the narrative with him can really start to change this year with a deep run to the finals. I mentioned earlier that you were a big P.J. Washington guy yeah. uh, before the deadline, and he's played great. Luca just said that he may be their best defender. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, Gafford, you're a big Gafford guy, right? Big he's Gafford really guy. Well. Yeah. So, yeah, you 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 wanted those guys. Um, I, I'm not a Luca fan. If a Kings player did – Somewhere what what Luca did here Friday, you know, with the bye bye, and he should have drafted me. I can't stand Luca, but if a Kings player did that in a similar situation, we'd be ready to build a statue. Exactly. You'd be like, and Yeah, I, that's I would right. be looking for a spot Can for you imagine it myself. If the Lakers passed on somebody, yeah, yeah. and you know, it's Luca yeah. and he did that to the uh, Jimmy yeah. Bus and Palenka and all those. Yeah. We would be all for that. Yes. And yes. so here's the thing about Luca that's so frustrating about it, too. Because he got the last laugh last week. Like, if we would have beat him mm-hmm. on Friday, I think the narrative today, like I said, would have been like, ah, we don't need him. We're good. We're fine. But because he beat us on Friday and got the last laugh, and now this Mavericks team is climbing up the standings. Dallas is fifth in the standings right now, ladies and gentlemen. Now it sort of brings up some old wounds a little bit. It's like we want him to fail so much. Because if he succeeds, we'll get reminded that we didn't draft. Whoever had the idea of having Vlade sit courtside for that game. (laughs) I'll just say it was short-sighted. I'll leave it at that. That was maybe not the wisest decision. And I was thinking that before I even knew what Luca did. I was thinking, whose idea was who thought that yeah. was a good idea? And then you saw what he did. It's like, oh, no. In, in, in case Luca didn't need any motivation, yeah. he saw it right there every time <laughs> oh, he ran no. up and down the court. Come that was a tough on. one. That was a tough one. somebody way. think that Luca's going to see Vlade there? Oh, he could have drafted me and he didn't. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I, I'm looking at the text shadow. line, man. Somebody 916. Luca is empty calories. I'm not buying that. I'm not there with you as much as I used to be. He's yeah, they're playing really they're well, playing right well. Now, and he's a huge part of it. And, and what Luca does, he may not. This is what he needs. He needs somebody to help him the first three quarters of the game. Fourth quarter, I wouldn't want to see Luca in a tight game. You know what I mean? Like he shows up in big moments. He's hit big shots in his career. I do think he's clutch. He just needed the help around him those first three quarters, and they seem to have found it. Mm-hmm. Him and Kyrie are playing fantastic basketball. I mentioned the role players, and so I I can't call him empty calories right now. Did you see what he did to Houston? No, I know. 47 they, points yeah. last night. Houston, the hottest team in the league. Dylan Brooks, Van Vliet, they got all these guys, and Luka carved see, them up. That's what we're talking about, superstars. I don't like Luka, but let's face it, right now, his team needs the best he has to offer mm-hmm. them. Huge games. And he's giving it to them. Yes. That's what the great players are supposed to do. Also, Drapes, it wasn't just 47 points. 47 points in three quarters. Three quarters? He God? had oh, zero in the fourth. Unbelievable. See, that's as much as you want to hate on his game and his whining. And I do, and I do. And, hey, the dude gets it done. I mean, that, and they seem to be, like I said, surrounded him with his best team since he's been who are we gonna? Who are the Kings gonna play in the first round? Is it gonna be a play? In? Is it gonna be the Warriors and the Kings in a play in? Heck no! That would be spicy. Heck no! 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 Okay. No! 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 Right. The All Warrior, right. like, are you? If that has to happen, <laughs> the Kings will have to have fallen I back. Because I, I don't think the Warriors can get up to eighth right now. They're three games behind the Phoenix Suns. The Kings would have to fall back. They've won four in a row. Everybody's winning. You know, Dallas won seven in a row, and the Warriors won four in a row. 
And uh, if you look at some of those playoff predictors and probabilities, yeah. the Warriors are like 80 something percent locked into the 10 seed. Like the, the Rockets probably aren't going to catch them and they probably aren't going to jump the Lakers or Suns. Yeah, the Warriors got the 15th uh, toughest schedule. They got the Mavericks twice. So we're saying the Kings slide down to ninth. We're saying that's not that there's no way that happens. Is that what you're telling me? I want to believe it. It's it's a possibility, but it's not likely. Okay. It's it's not likely because you got to understand, like I said, there are two and a half up on the Lakers. This week will decide it, I think. Like whether we're talking seven, eight, or nine or ten. This is the week. And I know you think I'm being negative and everything, but when you got Clippers, New York, and Boston, man. It's just, it's not that you're being negative. It's just that's a dose of reality yeah, that we don't need right being now. Being a realist. Yeah, that's, yeah. It's almost like too much. We're overdosing on reality if we go there right now. Well, the good news for the Kings is that the Warriors and Lakers play each other, too. So yeah. think about this. The Warriors got two against Dallas and one against the Lakers. Oh, two and, against Dallas. Yeah, they got okay, two they against Dallas. Yeah. They got, the Warriors got, you know, the, the 15 toughest schedule. They got the Utah Jazz twice. But that that Golden State Lakers game, either way, that helps the Kings out, you know, in terms of uh, not falling to the tenth spot at least. And so I, I don't know, man. I'm I'm not trying to think like that. I think we're you know seven and eight. You know, I, I think that's more of a possibility than anything else. I'd I'd sign up for that right now. You take it in the season right now. Right now, we'll take it. Let's play the playoffs right now. No, I'm with Let's you. See if it's seven. Yeah, Sign I would take seven. seven. Seven, then you get two cracks at it, both of them at home. Uh, hopefully you figure out your home woes. And so, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. When we come back, as promised, uh, Coach Brown on Keegan, we'll get back to the phones as well at 339-1140, 1-800-920-1140. Drive, guys, on a Monday, Sacktown Sports. The final game of the homestand concludes Tuesday as the Los Angeles Clippers pay a visit to Golden One Center and the Sacramento Kings. The bonus rolling in the paint. Eludes the defender. A two-hand flush is thrown down off the dribble. Catch all the play-by-play -play starting at 7 on your home of the Kings, Sacktown Sports. If you're in the market for a new or used car right now, or if you just want to go see like what new technology is in the new cars nowadays, stop by and see my friends at Elk Grove Kia and the Elk Grove Bottom Mall before you go anywhere else. As soon as you step onto the lot, you're going to feel like family. You're going to know why they have so many five-star reviews at Elk Grove Kia and why they're the number one Sacramento Kia dealer. Like, I love this five-star review right here. Quote, I could not be happier. My husband surprised me with my new Telluride. I love it. The staff is friendly, kind, and conscious. Took their time to find the perfect car. Thank you guys for the hard work. Great job. I love my new telly. There you go. That's just another satisfied customer at Elk Grove Kia. So in addition to all the five-star reviews, the finance team at Elk Grove Kia has over 100 years combined experience. You know what that means? Financing for everyone. And we know going to the car dealership can be overwhelming, but come experience Elk Grove Kia. They go above and beyond to make sure this is an automotive adventure for you. Check out what's on special and what's on the lot today at ElkGroveKia.com. Or better yet, come see everything in person at Elk Grove Kia in the Elk Grove Auto Mall. Thinking of remodeling your home? Say goodbye to endless internet searches and visit Subcontractors United. Find a list of three pre-qualified and licensed contractors in each home service category. From cabinets to landscapers and everything in between, Subcontractors United makes finding qualified contractors free and easy with no accounts to set up. Visit subcontractorsunited.com and experience the joy of stress-free home improvement. Save time and money at subcontractorsunited.com. I'm Craig Ashton of the Injury Law Firm of Ashton & Price. Whether you've been injured on a bicycle, as a pedestrian, in a slip and fall, auto, Uber, Lyft, or big rig accident, you need Ashton & Price in your corner. When you call Ashton & Price, there's no chat bot telling you to hit three for accounting. You're greeted by a real live person who will immediately transfer you to an experienced attorney. The consultation's free, and there's never a fee until you win. Remember, for the best advice, don't think twice. Call Ashton and Price. Dr. Ken Howachek and kinesiologist Kelsey Graham discuss the Good Feet Store. The foot has a lot of detail. It has a lot of complexity. There's a lot that can go wrong. A lot of problems start in the foot and end up elsewhere. Knee pain, hip pain, back pain. When aligning the feet properly, we can see relief elsewhere. And that's the beauty of the Good Feet Art Support. It can place the feet into their ideal position and gives them the balance, the support, the comfort, and the relief of the pain. The bottom line, 
is that the Good Feet Art Support can be a highly effective pain relief solution when nothing else has worked. The feet have a really big impact on how the rest of the body moves, the knees, the hips, the lower back especially. If the foot isn't properly aligned, all of these joints are gonna function incorrectly. That results in a lot of muscle tension and chronic pain. What I really like about the Good Feet system is that the right arch supports can put the foot in its proper alignment. So all the joints of the rest of the body will be aligned properly as well. And when the body's aligned, we can reduce the risk of injury and chronic pain. Visit the Good Feet store in Sacramento, Roseville, Modesto, Stockton, and Vacaville for a free fitting and test walk. Capital Casino has been serving the greater Sacramento area in the same convenient downtown location for over 20 years with plenty of close-by, well-lit parking monitored by security staff and offering the most variety of table games in the region in a safe and friendly environment. Best food, best service, and the best action, that's Capital Casino. For more information on tournaments and gaming, check out their website at capital-casino.com. And please remember to gamble responsibly, 1-800-GAMBLER. Welcome to a brighter future with Aztec Solar, serving Sacramento since 1980. Everyone knows that solar saves money. How much? The answer is a few clicks away. Visit yourpowersavings.com. It's fast, easy, and reliable, giving you instant insight into your potential savings. I used to pay $400 a month to the power company, and that $400 a month added up to $48,000 over the past 10 years. That all changed when I switched to solar with Aztec Solar. Now it's your turn to stop overpaying for electricity. Calculate your solar savings right now at yourpowersavings.com, and Aztec Solar will email or text you how much you'll save every month. Plus, we've got an exclusive offer for you. Get your solar electrical system for just $9,995 cash price after incentives. Don't wait. This deal won't last forever. Visit yourpowersavings.com today and take the first step towards energy independence with Aztec Solar. Your afternoon home for King's Talk and so much more. The Drive Guys on Sacktown Sports. Uh, before we get back to the Kings, Drapes, have you and your daughter seen the, uh, the is it the Eras, the Taylor Swift concert tour uh, video? Uh, she wa- She's watched it. Yeah, I, I haven't. I, I got to watch it. No, okay. I have not watched it with her. You, uh, are you still thinking about going somewhere to see the show? Maybe <sighs> That's, it's it's kind of it's kind of pricey yeah. and... Yeah, I don't. I, probably not. Why? You got something for me? You got a hookup? No, up or I connect? don't at all. I don't at all. But I just, uh, I want to ask you about Taylor Swift because you know we don't talk about music much on this show, and we're not going to yeah. talk about it a lot now. But have you heard? I want to ask you. Have you heard Beyonce's Blackbird? I have not. It's unbelievable. Is it really? Yeah. Okay. I got to check it out. I know she got the new album uh, out, so I'll have to check that out. Yeah, and I'm like the biggest Beatle fan ever. Yeah. And I heard that. I was like, that's better than the Beatles version. Get out of here. Really? It's is that good? Amazing. Yeah. Me, uh... I happened to run across it a couple of days ago. I was like, I hear this, you know, I know that song very well. I was like, is that Beyonce? Beyonce. Yeah, huh? Yesterday I heard the whole thing. It's like, oh my goodness. No, it's I need amazing. to check it out. Okay. Yeah. I want to ride it's, home. I'll listen it to is. it. Well, I have love to, to get Simone on the phone here if we're going to talk about this. Cause I know she's listened to the whole Beyonce soundtrack. <laughs> really? Yes. Yeah, the, she's got the what, a country album, right? Yep, yep, yeah. new yeah. country oh, album. And that's not really a country song, but man, it's uh, well, I'd love to know what you think. I think it's all right. Fun. I'll check that out. Yeah, three three nine eleven forty one eight hundred nine two zero eleven forty. Javier joins us uh, from Vacaville. Javier, what's going on? How you doing, Mister Gleason? Uh, you know, Mister Grace, how are you? Good. Yeah, what's yeah, up? Okay. What's, what, Friday and uh, Sunday, I was uh, in tennis on Friday, and I obviously watched yesterday and. You know, Mr. Gleason's nephews are my best friends from high school, play for his high school all Tyler and Brandon, but that's another conversation for another okay. day. I'll be at the game on Tuesday, but, uh, you know, I just want to see, you know, uh, Mason's running out of uh, days on his two-way, and with the likes of Herger and uh, Malik being out, I just was seeing what you guys thought of, you know, because other media members have said I'm, you know, blasphemous to think this way, but I feel like if you look statistically, you know, shout out to uh, – Coach Harding, number one seed in the G League, but you know, Scali uh Jalen Noel, as well as um, Stanley Johnson have NBA veteran experience um, and of been having years of service and they played outstanding for the Sacramento uh, Kings G League affiliate, the Stockton Kings. I mean, if you look statistically, they've bought out and they've grown their bodies and their skill set. I just seen how you feel about them being some company piece at the end of the bench, not on no 15, 20 minute. A night, but just some veteran experience with some length, some reach, and some NBA experience that can 
that that can produce. And also, gentlemen, if you look at the top six, the top six is far from over because I'm not talking about the, the, the Mavericks. I'm talking about the New Orleans Pelicans. They play the Suns tonight, and if you look at their schedule, I see them losing the last – out of the last eight. They can lose five to six of those last eight. If they lose six of the final eight, the can well, we lost you, Javier. Thanks, Javier, for the call. We, yeah. All right. Good good stuff, yeah. Javier. Yeah, very interesting points. I don't know about the Pelicans. I see where you're going. I love the optimism. But that's a really interesting point about the G League roster, and I'll be honest, I have not considered that. I, I don't think they could pull those guys up. Uh, I think, first of all, they don't have any roster spots. And, you know, Mason Jones is a two-way guy. But he was saying his... Javier was, and I don't know. I don't think his time's up. Okay, I, I don't. Right. I don't. I don't think that's correct. I. I, I don't. Okay. Yeah. I don't think it's. Uh, yeah. I don't think that's correct. So there's probably not an avenue there to do anything. No. I, I don't roster. think so. And you know, even when Malik went down, people are like, "Well, can we go out and Phil get an exception or any?" It's too late. For get that. Terrence like, Davis. Right. Right, right. Bring back TD. No. We're stuck. This is what we have. You know. Mm-hmm. You could bring up some of the two-way guys, you know, you know Colby Jones, Slauson, uh, Mason Jones. But other than that, I think we're stuck. Yeah, that's unfortunate. That was not an option. That uh, disabled player exception is not available to you this late this in the late, season. Right. It's not an option. Not not an option. And, you know, we don't even have a roster spot. They sign a free agent or anything like that. So uh, this is it. This is it. It's going to have to come from in-house. Mm-hmm. Uh, the t- guys are going to have to step up with no yeah. leap. So, we're going to need the Kings are that is going to need more from De'Aaron and more from Sabonis and presumably more from Keegan Murray, who last night responded uh, with 25 points at 10, 18 mm-hmm. from the floor and five of 12 threes. He also had three assists. And after the game, Keegan was talking about the three assists and he said, being a distributor, something's kind of new uh, to him. So I asked coach Brown about that going forward with Keegan. Um, what kind of potential does he have? What are his challenges rounding into becoming, in addition to everything else, the Kings want him to be, uh, to becoming more of a distributor. Yeah, that's going to be something new for him because last year, again, all he did was catch and shoot for us for the most part and then tried to defend, tried to rebound, and we didn't really, you know, talk to him much about touching the paint and spraying it or whatever. Uh, he was a space guy, and and this year he's shown the ability to score from all three levels. And we tell him, and we, we've been telling him, be aggressive, be aggressive, be aggressive. Now he's got to find a fine line because he's 6'8", and he can get to his pull-up, his little leaning pull-up against almost anybody. And soon teams are going to start sitting in his lap and – rear view challenging and he's going to have to make a decision kind of like Fox and Domus to a certain degree. Okay. Hey, I drew two. Now I got to get off it. And, and and that will come in time as a young guy uh, and with his potential, especially with the injuries we have to Malik and, and, and Kevin right now, I just want him to be aggressive. Um, if you get two on you for sure, spray it. But I'd rather him shoot the ball if he feel like he if he feels like he's got to a spot, uh, than than think. Okay, do I pass? Do I shoot? Do I shoot? Do I pass? No, no, no. Don't think. You if you get to your spot, you shoot it. He also said, and it's it's on uh, again, uh, Domas and Fox to keep everything going so mm-hmm. that it makes it easier for everybody on the floor with them, including Keegan Murray. Yeah, and, and Mike Brown just illustrated they're bringing them along slowly. You know, they're not throwing 10 things at them. Hey, we need you to do all these great. You know, last year it was the catch and shoot. This year it was, you know, doing more off the dribble, playing defense, you know. And to Mike Brown's point, now they're not going to just throw, all right, try to spray it as well. You know, that's, you know, even in college, he wasn't a facilitator. Only That's average, what he said. Keegan said that last yeah, night. Like, this is new to me. Totally new. Only yeah. average one assist a game in college uh, for both of his years at Iowa. And so this is all new. And so this is sort of the, you see the maturation of Keegan Murray. Like we see how it's going to progress, you know, each year. And you know how it is, Whitey, in the NBA. Usually guys go away from the summer, at least historically, they work on one thing and they come back with something new. This year, it was Keegan off the dribble. Next year, it's maybe being a playmaker, being a facilitator also. Yeah, you know, it's funny about that. You talk to um, Jerry Reynolds, who hasn't been on the show in a while, but he says, why do guys wait till the summer to work on things? <laughs> you can go to the gym right uh, now. Go to the gym right you now. You got something in your oh, hand tracking. Go work on it now. Why, uh, why you don't wait to it summer? during the season, yeah. right? Exactly. No, you're right. You're right. And it's, uh, you know, 
and I know I'm hard on Keegan a lot. It's because I think he is the key to this team's potential. And then, like I said, it may not be this year, maybe next year where he takes that jump. You know, I will say he is playing extremely better as of late. We talked about him being aggressive and uh, getting shots up uh, over his last five games. Whitey, 19.8 points per game for young Keegan Murray. That's tremendous. 46.5 from three. So we're going to and I know that sounds great. But that needs to be night in and night out, I feel like, for yeah. Keegan Murray, the 19 to 20 points per game. And I'm optimistic about his chances the rest of this year to seize this opportunity and continue. You know, I'm not saying he's going to shoot 46% from three the rest of the year, but I like his chances of responding to this opportunity. And I know it's we, everybody knows this. It's obvious, but that's one of the absolute keys to their ability to navigate this very difficult stretch. No, you're right. It's uh, especially without Malik. I mean, yeah, Keegan it. is the one guy who I think can be a consistent scoring option for this Kings team. Like Trey Lyles can get your buckets. Sasha can get your buckets. But I'm talking night in and night out. They should be able to depend on Keegan to get them 18 to 20 points per night. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll take a timeout when we come right back here. Drive guys looking at Kings expectations. Have they shifted? Have your expectations? Have they shifted uh, over what's gone on in the last week? Uh, what's your level of optimism? Your definition of a successful season? Are you having to kind of massage that a little bit? We're right back with Adam Moore. That's the Drive Guys here on a difficult Monday for Kings fans on Sacktown Sports. The final game of the homestand concludes Tuesday as the Los Angeles Clippers pay a visit to Golden One Center and the Sacramento Kings. It's fourth quarter Fox time. He's doubled, throws a pass cross court to Keegan, steps to his left, launches a three. He's got the triple. It's the fourth one from downtown in five attempts by Keegan Murray. And the Kings have tied it at 101. Catch all the play-by-play -play starting at 7 on your home of the Kings, Sacktown Sports. Are you someone who tries to drive all distracted by your phone? Someone who props it on the steering wheel or peeks down at it for a glance or just scrolls and scrolls? Welcome to the April Adventure Sales Event at Kia Vacaville. Are you ready for an extraordinary experience? We're excited to introduce you to the pinnacle of automotive excellence, the Kia Telluride. During April Adventure, come and explore the remarkable features of the Kia Telluride. It's not just a vehicle, it's a lifestyle. With this seamless blend of sophistication and practicality, the Telluride is ready to elevate your driving experience to new heights. Whether you're embarking on a family road trip or navigating the urban jungle, the Kia Telluride offers unparalleled comfort and innovation. Plus, with Kia's commitment to safety and reliability, you can drive with confidence wherever the road takes you. Don't miss this opportunity to experience the extraordinary Kia Telluride for yourself. Visit Kia of Vacaville today and take advantage of exclusive offers during the April Adventure Sales Event. Your adventure begins here. Kia of Vacaville, where innovation meets excellence. Model availability, lease options, and features may vary. Please visit Kia of Vacaville for more details. Heard the catchphrase that's sweeping the nation? Jackson, Hugh, yeah. People are saying Jackson, Hugh, yeah to Jackson Hewitt because they love saving money on tax prep. Do you love saving money? Then switch to Jackson Hewitt today and pay less than last year. Thousands of people have already made the switch. Why haven't you? Stop waiting and start filing. You won't get a better deal or a better catchphrase. All together now. Jackson, Jackson Hugh, yeah. yeah. Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. Without the ones like you who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you with professional-grade industrial supplies. Count on real-time product availability and fast delivery. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. It's a mystery where Old Spice finds its amazing scents like Himalayan sea salt, but I'm thrilled they have because no other body wash exfoliates and moisturizes 24-7 like Old Spice Gentleman's Himalayan sea salt body wash. Now, if only there was a mountain range separating the Indian subcontinent from the Tibetan plateau where I could hide my Old Spice and keep my family from stealing it, my impossibly smooth skin will finally be safe. 
Planning for spring at Lowe's means big savings on outdoor power equipment. And Lowe's knows nothing feels better than free. Buy one select Ego string trimmer, leaf blower, or mower kit. Get one select 56-volt battery free. That's up to a $299 value. Power through spring with Ego, the number one rated brand in cordless outdoor power. Because Lowe's knows home improvement. Valid through 4-3 while supplies last. Selection varies by location. Hey, it's Carmichael Dave inviting you to make this switch to electric this spring and save big with American Energy. Stay ahead of those spiking energy bills this summer with up to nine grand in rebates on a new ultra high efficiency comfort system. American Energy is providing huge rebates from SMUD as well as spring specials by installing one of many incredibly efficient AC options available to you right now. Get rid of those fluctuating gas bills in the winter and switch to year round all electric with American Energy. Let them perform a free in-home energy efficiency analysis and see where they can help you save for the warmer months ahead. These guys are the best. Been serving the greater Sacramento area since 1981. A plus from the Better Business Bureau. Learn more by calling 916-520-9990. That's 916-520-9990. Call 916 it's time to trade in and trade up at Northern California's number one Honda dealer, Stockton Honda. Whether you're shopping new or pre-owned, Stockton Honda has the selection and savings. Plus, get top dollar for your trade. Come in today or go to StocktonHonda.com. It's all a click away. Anytime, anywhere, it's all here. StocktonHonda.com. Claim based on 2022 total view and Honda certified pre-owned vehicle car sales from American Honda Motor Company's own one report. From the Power Business Technology Toshiba Studios. KHTKAM Sacramento. KYMX HD2 Sacramento. Sacramento's official home for the San Francisco 49ers. Touchdown! San Francisco! Set down sports. This segment is brought to you by Aztec Solar. Skip the sales pitch. Calculate your solar savings at yourpowersavings.com. Town Sports. Thanks for playing that, Kyle. It's incredible. Yeah. Wow. You definitely got to check out the. Listen to that. Woo. Beyonce's Blackbird. Incredible. Yeah. One of the bright spots in a week that has not been great for Kings fans with the loss to Dallas. And then, oh, Kevin Herter's out for the season. And then you lose to Dallas again. And then Malik sprains his knee. And then Malik's out for the rest mm. of the season. At least they got the win last night. So where are we right now, Kyle Draper? I know you said today. You're not sure what your level of optimism is for the rest of this thing. Yeah, and 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 you know why do it goes back to expectations, right? If if I'm expecting a little bit when they achieve a little, it'll be okay, you know? If I'm expecting a deep playoff run and they just wind up in the play in, then I'm disappointed. And I'm not sure how to feel about where this Kings team is right now. On paper, and I'm with you, I think they could still do some good things. Like it might be the bump that we talked about, like Houston with Shingoon when he mm -hmm, went down. Mm -hmm. But then I look at the schedule, and it concerns me. And maybe, you know, you get through these next three games and then go on a run. But it, this is a tough schedule, man. The Knicks are a tough matchup, even though the Knicks, you know, they've lost two in a row, reeling a little bit. But this Clippers team has won three in a row. Boston always has our number. And so... If we can go two and one, I, I think that's super successful, highly successful. I just don't know what to expect here over these last nine games. BCH Custom Cabinetry asks, seven spot only needs to win one play-in game, correct? Correct. Yeah. One play-in game, you get, two shots. you get two cracks at it. Two cracks at two one. Two cracks to win one. And if you're the seventh, both of those are at home. And so you got to think. I mean, if it, if it started now, you would take on the Phoenix Suns. Right now, you got the tiebreaker. You've beaten Phoenix more than they've beaten you. So you got to think you'd be favored in that, at least from a Sacramento standpoint. And then you if know? you didn't prevail, Lakers or Warriors, the winner of that game. Winner of that game. Yeah. Who would you rather like to see? 
War, uh, Lakers probably, it, which is crazy because you've owned them. But I don't know. In a one game, winner take all, LeBron, AD. LeBron, AD, and the officials. Give me the words. And the officials. <laughs> Steph don't get the officials? He yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, you know, he's that's, not going to uh, go to the line 18 times or whatever it is. Away, huh? Right, like, eight versus five. Right. You definitely want to avoid that scenario. You got to handle your business. Handle your business. Uh, Ryan Williams Art, your buddy says, my definition of a successful season at this point. Keep me entertained. If you're competitive and actively trying to get better, then it's a productive season. That's a loser's mentality, Ryan Williams. All right, what? That's loser's mentality. I'm not calling you a loser. Keep I'm just saying that my I keep me entertained. We nah, man. It's Ooh, not about that. We lost at the buzzer. That was great. We, nah, I'm sorry, Ryan Williams. All right, can't co-sign on that. Win games, and you so oh, you've been talking about it for two or three weeks now, Whitey. There's no, uh, there, there, there's no, there's no uh, good losses, good losses no bad or bad wins. wins. Yeah. Exactly. Just get the W, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're at that point. And so there are no moral victories or any, oh, at least we were entertained. <laughs> no, we're trying to make the playoffs here. And so to me, when you talk about successful, I think it's getting into the top eight. Uh -huh. However you get there, whether it's top six or play in and then advance, getting into the actual playoffs. I, I'll tell you what, was it was Ryan the one that got you the nice uh, Kirkland wallet? Yes. OK, that's great. So I don't mean to take shots at him, but, you know, Friday was entertaining, but it sucked. It, it right? sucked. <laughs> right. It was that was a highly entertaining game. Yeah. Yes. Plays were made. And but it sucked. You left that game feeling like a like you got punched in the gut. And so I'm not buying this. Just keep me entertained. What is that? That's a loser. That's like going to a Pistons game. That's all you ask for the Pistons at this point. Well, I hope we see a good just, game. Just want to see a good game. Just want to be entertained. Come on, Ryan Williams. Yeah. All right, you better. That's that. a, that's the attitude. Like when you go to see the A's play, right? It's like I, I hope it's at least a good game. Yeah, exactly. Just don't get blown out. You know. Plus, the Pistons haven't been entertaining since two thousand and eight. Ouch. <laughs> they would take that right now, Kyle. They would take yeah. to be entertained. Yeah. Yeah. 339 Let's get Mitch on. Uh-oh, your yeah. boy. Mitch from New Jersey. What's up, Mitch? How's it going, Kyle? Why do you think Sigma call? Cool. Happy late Easter. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm ho hoping we can get into the top six. I saw we lost two uh, good plays, but um, seeing all of a sudden Sasha and Lyles are back in the lineup. So I was rest we have uh, we we have a deep uh, team. I see those guys getting in. Um, Fox and uh, Sabonis have to be more selfish. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Mitch. Yeah how how much is reasonable to expect from? Okay, Lyles is back. Sasha's back. Now I know it's like yeah, Malik Monk's out. You understand? Mm. He may never come back. Okay, I get that. <laughs> I understand. I understand. I'm not overlooking that. But Trey Lyles has played well this year. Sasha has seen. You know, he's shown some. Flashes. Is there anything there realistically that we can feel good about? I think so. I think so. I think too, if we would have had those guys Friday against Dallas, we might have won that game. I think the offense bogged down in the fourth quarter. We truly miss Malik Monk. And I'll go back to what Harrison said. Without Malik, you're going to have to trust the offense and work the offense to perfection late in games more so than ever. Because now we only got one one on one guy. One guy that can really create a shot off the dribble and get buckets in a clutch situation, and that's De'Aaron Fox. Malik was that other guy. Now you take him out. You're not asking Sasha to do that. You're not asking Trey Lyles to do that. And so now you're asking that Kings offense to operate at an elite level late in the games. And as you know, Whitey, most of the time, NBA teams give the ball to their best player and let them cook. Are we going to see that from De'Aaron Fox? If so, we need last year clutch player of the year, De'Aaron Fox. Mm -hmm. Manny Too Legit says, if we make the playoffs, it's a success. But if we don't at all this season, it's not a success. Exactly what I was saying. My guy, Manny Too Legit, I agree with you. You know, even if we make the play in now, it sucks and won't, won't make us happy. But if you advance out of that, I agree. Then you got a best of seven series. That's all you can ask for at this point. Mm -hmm. To me, that that's always been, to me, what would constitute a successful season. Mm -hmm. Given now that you're without Malik, <laughs> I don't want to say, I just want them to be entertained. entertained. But I, to me, <laughs> I think it's possible that you not get out of the plane and still say, overall, it was successful. But I don't even want to think about that now. 
No, I'm, I'm exactly. I'm I'm not even. You know, just get to the play and get that seventh seed, like we talked about. And you know, in, in even the eighth seed, I don't want it, but you still got two cracks at it. Mm-hmm. You know. Whatever happens, just advance to the top eight. That's yeah. what I need from the Kings. We've talked about this. Last year, obviously, was a magical season. There may never be another one quite like last year. Maybe though there will be better seasons. There will never be one quite like last season. That said, when the Kings clinched, it was a matter of, oh, we know they're going to clinch, right? It's, it was almost inevitable. If the Kings clinch this year, one way or the other, a playoff spot, we will celebrate that. We will celebrate and, mind you, the West is the toughest it's been in a long time. Like to make it into the playoffs with the injuries, with losing Malik, mm-hmm. with how great everyone else is. I mean, Minnesota, OKC, Clippers, Pelicans are better than people thought. And to be one of the top eight, I mean, think about it. Why are you looking at the I'm still looking at the standings right now? You already got three teams with 50 or more wins. How many teams do we have at 50 or more wins last year in the Western Conference? Did Memphis have 50? I don't know if they did. Denver, I know, did maybe Memphis. This year, you're going to have maybe four or five teams Mm -hmm. over 50 wins this year. Uh, Gabriel Perez says, give me OKC in the playoffs. Ooh. What you saying that? Was it you saying that? Yeah, of course I was saying that. They're inexperienced. They're a little light on the front court in terms of size and, and strength. Like, I feel like Domas can take it to the body of Chet Holmgren. OKC is a fun team. They're young, up and coming. They're exciting. I think that's a good series. Also, Minnesota. Who knows what's going to happen with Carl Anthony Towns? If Cat is out, I, you know what? Try our chances with Minnesota. I'm for that. Anybody but Denver at this point. Yeah, we're we're looking ahead. Uh, maybe a little too far, getting ahead of ourselves. As you said earlier, tomorrow night is just flat out a huge, huge game. game. Huge game. I mean, it's almost to the point. If you lose tomorrow, oh, here he goes. You're guaranteed a play in. Like, it's, you know, I I need, remember, we talked about the Mavs and their light schedule, their week schedule. Uh, Who do they have tomorrow? Uh, Why do we got this here? Mavs have the Warriors. Yeah, they got the Warriors. Ooh, that's what I'm saying. You win tomorrow. You want the Warriors to win, right? It's a home game for the Warriors. They don't win home games. Yeah, that's true. (laughs) But then you're only a game behind the uh, Mavericks. Yeah. And and the tiebreaker is conference record after that. And so you still have a shot at surpassing them. You just need them to cool off a little bit. I mean, they got the Warriors, Hawks, Warriors, Rockets. That's their next four games. We're going to have to cheer for the Warriors. I'm sorry. Kings fans, our squad needs to take care of their business tomorrow, take care of it Thursday against the Knicks, and hope this Dallas team Hits a little speed bump here, loses a couple of games here. I think that's a really important point you just made. Talk about the tiebreaker, Kings and Mavs, should it come to that? Because I think a lot of us were assuming, oh, Dallas won the tiebreaker. No, right? but they, they did just not. tied it up. Yeah. And, and then it goes to conference record, if I'm correct, Whitey. Yes. They're 29 and 19 in the conference. We're 28 and 19. Right. Yeah. It goes Bam. to division next, which does not apply. Right. Because they're not in the same not, division. Not in the yeah. same division. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So the Kings are half game behind Dallas. Um, and then I don't know what it goes to after that. <laughs> right. Uh, coin flipper. So I have no idea, man. It's uh, it, it gets pretty deep. It does eventually get to a coin flip, but I think there's like three tiebreakers yeah. before that. Yeah. Next would be one loss percentage versus playoff teams in your own conference. Yeah. That would be next. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Who's going to do that math? I, I leave that uh, to, to, to the bots and to, to the, you know, AI and all that. I can't do that, man. I'll bet you when we come back from break, I bet you Kyle Kyle will have it for us, right? Look, he's on top of it right now. Uh, All right, here we go. Let's 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 go through the Mavericks. Quick quick timeout when we come back. (laughs) Will the Kings need more from their two best players? Okay, how much more? Yeah, as the drive guys roll on on Sacktown Sports. Can Mike Brown build on last season's Coach of the Year award? Can the Kings exceed 48 wins? We will be better prepared to make the run that we expect to run come next playoff. Tune in to every Kings game this season on Sacktown Sports and SacktownSports.com. If you're in the market for a new or used car right now, or if you just want to go see like what new technology is in the new cars nowadays, stop by and see my friends at Elk Grove Kia and the Elk Grove Auto Mall before you go anywhere else. 
As soon as you step onto the lot, you're going to feel like family. You're going to know why they have so many five-star reviews at Elk Grove Kia and why they're the number one Sacramento Kia dealer. Like, I love this five-star review right here. Quote, I could not be happier. My husband surprised me with my new tell you ride. I love it. The staff is friendly, kind, and conscious. Took their time to find the perfect car. Thank you guys for the hard work. Great job. I love my new telly. There you go. That's just another satisfied customer at Elk Grove Kia. So in addition to all the five-star reviews, the finance team at Elk Grove Kia has over 100 years combined experience. You know what that means? Financing for everyone. And we know going to the car dealership can be overwhelming, but come experience Elk Grove Kia. They go above and beyond to make sure this is an automotive adventure for you. Check out what's on special and what's on the lot today at ElkGroveKia.com. Or better yet, come see everything in person at Elk Grove Kia in the Elk Grove Auto Mall. your afternoon home for king's talk and so much more the drive guys on sacktown sports kings and clippers tomorrow night clippers have been playing a little better drapes one of the things that had been comforting me from the standpoint of somebody wants to see the kings do well is like ah those clippers they were great coming out of the all-star break but then they faded Right, they're not. They haven't been playing well. Now they've no, they now they yet. have played yeah. well. Yeah, they, they've seen the right the ship. Paul George is playing at a high level. Just had forty one uh, yesterday, and uh, I believe the Clips probably in town now, or at least arriving uh, any minute now. And uh, this is, you know, we talked about it last week, two weeks ago. The playoffs have begun for the Sacramento Kings. Like every game is important. Uh, even last night against the Utah Jazz was massive. You had to have that one. And, and I think uh, you got to do that uh, tonight. I mean, tomorrow night as well against the Clippers. Well, they really, scheduling-wise, it was a perfect spot for that game, huh? You're what, the off, Utah Jazz? Yeah. yeah needed that, right? Whacked by Dallas. Right. And then you got that big one tomorrow, and they needed like almost like a homecoming game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, you know, it's uh, – imagine going from getting whacked against Dallas to, oh, here's Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Like, you're already licking your wounds – feeling kind of down and so now you're feeling a little bit of up and here's the thing and I wonder too maybe Mike Brown the reason Sasha and Trey Lyles didn't play Friday is you don't want to bring them back in a high leverage game like that their first game back mm -hmm. bring them against the Utah team that has now lost nine in a row get their feet wet and then bam they're ready for tomorrow night as well yeah Sasha only played 10 minutes last night there were opportunities maybe for him to play a little more he made two out of three shots, but uh, getting the rust off, I they're going to need him. I, I Well, I don't think they're going to need him, but he's going to have opportunities to help. He definitely yeah. is going to have a chance to make his mark still on this season. Yeah, and, and when you look at, you know, the bench and what it was before Malik got hurt, like we severely missed Trey Lyles and Sasha Vizankov. Like we missed their scoring punch, their firepower off the bench. You know, we were asking Davion to bring it, asking Chris Duarte to bring it. Great players, fine players, but, you know, let's keep it real. Sasha and Trey have the ability to knock down the three at a higher clip. And so I, I think, you know, these dudes are going to play a huge part over these last eight. You think Davion will be the sixth man the rest of the year? Hmm. Davion, he, he yeah. was last night, yeah. right? I mean, yeah, Davion player. and Trey. You know, I yeah. think those were the the first two guys off the bench uh, last night. I think so. I think, and Davion's been playing well. Let's give him his flowers. You know, if I was to do a Drapes take part two, he would be a part of it. I think he's been playing extremely well. You yeah, know, five rebounds, five like rebounds. That. Yeah, exactly. Points. He was competing. I, I thought he took the shots he was supposed to take. He drove when he was supposed to drive as well. And I think his floor game is is at a season high right now. His He's comfortable with how he's playing. And so give Davion some love for sure. 339 1140-1800-920-1140. By the way, it looks like your your guy Ryan Williams art. Uh, he keeps uh, commenting here. I don't know if you hurt his feelings. I think you misunderstood me, Drapes. Uh, anyway, he's I boy, I got this guy a high quality Kirkland wallet, and then this is what he says about me. LOL. So I don't know. You guys may have to straighten that out. You offended him when you said <laughs> he had Loser. a loser's mentality. Whee! <laughs> he just wants to be entertained. Come on. And let me tell you about that Kirkland wallet. No offense, Ryan Williams, Hart, but your boy had to upgrade. 
that Kirkland <laughs> wallet, I think, is in the, you know, that kitchen drawer with all the junk stuff yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rubber where that bands. Kirk, right, and, rubber yeah. bands and paper clips. <laughs> I went out and got another wallet. I appreciate you bringing one in. That'll be my backup, my spare wallet. But uh, that wallet is in a drawer somewhere right now. He does say the Kings have made their bed by being inconsistent. They got to do this the hard way. Expectations are in check. Your own words, Drapes. Conditioned as a Kings fan. Uh, four seasons for you. Ooh, he says 39 for me. Damn, 30. He's been around since day one, huh? Pulling the numbers he, Yeah, he, yeah. He's, he's been around since day one. And I hear you, but I'm trying to raise the level here. Ryan Williams are. I'm, I'm trying to think positive like my guy Whitey, the way he That's came right. in today, you know? And so we're, I'm not talking about losses anymore. It, it's kind of fun to look at where it is. Now, obviously, if as you said, well, they could go on a losing streak. And if they go on a losing streak, then it's, it's not very much fun. But it is exciting mm. to think of this chance they have to surprise a lot of people. And to me, I think this is a team that in some ways they're more dangerous when people are overlooking them. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, you mentioned it, too. You talked about the Rockies. We talked about Houston this year. I look at the Phillies a couple of years ago advancing to the World Series, uh, you know, two years ago, not this past year, two years ago. And, you know, they sort of came out of nowhere. Oh, and, yeah, you know, wasn't that Bryce Harper was hurt middle of the year? Right, like, right. Yeah, their best player's not even playing. Yes. No good. And, and then, bam, they, yeah. they turned it on uh, late. And so why can't the Kings do that? I will say. We have the talent to still make some noise. It's not, but like we said, the stars got to be the stars. Domas and De'Aaron have to play at an elite level. I'm talking the best they've played all season long. Here's some interesting numbers on Domas, because we've been talking a lot today about his shooting. People are wondering, why doesn't he take more jump shots? Um, he takes very few jump shots uh, from zero to 10 feet. Let's see. Zero to three feet is, well, there's just a lot of numbers here. Takes most of his shots from there. He takes only, mm, let's see, from 10 to 16 feet, 0.71% of his shots. That's the frequency. So he doesn't 0. shoot from 0.71%? 0. 0.071. 0. 0.071. Yeah, percentage of field goal attempts from that, 0. 0.071. But, so foul line to the three. Yeah, but his shooting percentage, 10 to 16 feet, is 50%. So he can make the shot, but yeah. he doesn't take it. And yeah. we talked about his three-point numbers, which, of course, you can look up as uh, 397, 16 to 33-point line, 16 feet out to 23-9, 37% mm -hmm. So the numbers show that, wow, he can he can make that shot. But you look at the frequency of, of you know field goal attempts from that distance, he does not take them. He doesn't take them. And they are there, you know, and it, it goes, and somebody in the text line uh, talked about it as well. Domas from the 916. Domas is an amazing player, but yes, he passes up the foul line jumper more than any player passes up any shot ever. It really stood out last year in the playoffs against the Warriors. May have been the difference. And I would like to see Domas, to your point, diversify his offensive game a little bit. You know, you're not going to be able to overpower guys or pump fake a couple of times and, and get guys all the time. Sure, you're effective. Sure, you know, you're putting up numbers. But, man, you could take it. I could argue that foul line jumper will help unlock everything else offensively, totally too. Agree. And he right? knows that. He must right. know that. Exactly. And so he he needs to do that, and especially with Malik uh, not down. I think as you see games go on, the later in the games, they're going to force Domas to become a scorer, I think. you know. And so he has to take advantage of that. Mm-hmm. Taking that jump shot when they give it to him. That's a huge part of that. Where are we right now with De'Aaron Fox and his three-point shot? Which earlier in the year, around February, yeah, like yeah. January, we're like, oh, this guy is incredible. The way he's shooting the three ball. Hasn't shot the three ball well since then. Has not. And, you know, 36.3% uh, right now for De'Aaron Fox. And, you know, I could pull up his splits and we could just see. He started off October, November part of December, like really on fire. Wasn't but, he over 40%? Yes. Or, yeah. Yes. I, I got the numbers right here. Here you go. The month of December, 43.7% from three he shot. October 37.5. Respectable. I'll yeah. take that. Yeah. Uh, November 36%. December 43.7. January. Did you say December? Did you say 43 yeah, December yeah, 40. Yeah, 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 he was killing 43. it. 43. You can't guard that guy when you, he's making right. threes at that rate. Exactly. But then it fell off a cliff. 
January, 32.6%. February, 32.6%. March, 34.2%. So we over the last he had three the months. shoulder, whatever it yeah, was, but he hasn't yeah. been the same, obviously. Yeah, exactly. He hasn't been the same. And, you know, when, when you look at it, one thing about De'Aaron Fox, which is interesting. Check this out, Whitey. In December, when he was hitting 43.7% of his threes, he took 119 three-pointers in 13 games. January, in 15 games, he took 95. So two more games, way more fewer attempts. February, only 11 games. He took 74. March, 15 games, 111. So he sort of scaled back the amount of threes, which is oh, I'm okay with because if you're not knocking them down, remember in December, we would talk about how he would take so many threes, but what happened to getting into the paint? He sort of got away from that in late December and January. I'd like to see him get to that foul line jumper a little more. And what I hear you saying is you'd like to see him get into the paint and then spray. Yes, yeah, spray threes because that's the offense. The offense is, isn't just Domas handing it off. The offense to get Trey Lyles, to get Harrison Barnes, Keegan Murray, to get those guys shots here. And that's a way he can make players around him better too, right, Whitey? Mm -hmm. It doesn't always have to be Fox getting into the paint and trying to contort and finish. Help your teammates out with those spray threes. He did a great job last night with 12 assists. By the way, I'm a little late to this party. I didn't realize that so many critics of Domas. There aren't a lot around yeah, here. Yeah. But the critics of Domas say, that was assists. He gets assists for the handoffs. I didn't realize that so many people – uh, look down on his assists and say it's not even an assist. They ain't even, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, they're not talking to Jokic about that. Maybe because Jokic, you know, makes different kind of passes, but an assist is an assist. Yeah. Like all of a sudden, <laughs> handoffs because of this one guy, oh, we want to change the rules. It's not as important. Come on now. It's a lot of doma slander out there for there sure. Is. Yes. There is. Yes. Yeah. We need to put that to bed. He needs to put that to bed from here uh, the rest of the way. 339 1140. 1-800-920-1140. When we come back, LeBron has almost caught MJ in one way. That's next with the Ooh. Drive Guys on Sackdown Sports. Did you miss any part of our live local shows? Don't worry. You never have to miss them again. Check out SackdownSports.com and search our podcast page and play our shows when you want. The Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross, Styles and Watkins, and The Drive Guys. Plus, other podcasts like Return of the Empire, Return of the Roar, The Stingers Up Podcast, and Golf to Go with Frank LaRosa. They're all available right now on SackTownSports.com. Jiffy Lube has a special promotion going on right now. Simply purchase a Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic Oil Change at Jiffy Lube and receive a $25 e-gift card from popular brands for food, gas, and more. It's that easy. Simply purchase a Pennzoil Platinum Full Synthetic Oil Change and receive a $25 e-gift card. So basically, going to Jiffy Lube can get you a free lunch or a pizza for dinner. That's what we call added value for the consumer. That's why Jiffy Lube is number one in the greater Sacramento area for oil changes. Visit JiffyLube.com for more details and valuable coupons today with rt painting our name says it all we are a reliable and trusted commercial and residential painting company serving the sacramento area since 1998 employee owned our attention to detail is second to none put our decades of experience serving our community to use for you get a free quote today call us at 916-900-8112 that's 916-900-8112 or go online to rtpainting.com that's rtpainting.com. RT Painting, your trusted and reliable painting contractor of choice. For a precision-crafted performance, the decision is easy. A new Acura from Acura of Stockton. Get the driving experience you've been waiting for in a new Acura. Get the best selection and customer service you deserve from Acura of Stockton. Shop in person or use our online express store at acuraofstockton.com. Acura of Stockton will buy your trade, even if you don't buy from us. Don't settle for less than precision-crafted performance of a new Acura from Acura of Stockton and acuraofstockton.com. Hey guys, do you know your T-Level? Revive Men's Health here in Sacramento is helping you take that first step toward better health and enhanced intimacy with a free testosterone level test, exam, and consultation. Plus, for this month only, qualified patients can kickstart their treatment with a free supply of ED medication. Call Revive Men's Health Sacramento at 916-365-4566. That's 916-365-4566. Or visit revivemenshealth.com. 
thinking of remodeling your home? Say goodbye to endless internet searches and visit Subcontractors United. Find a list of three pre-qualified and licensed contractors in each home service category. From cabinets to landscapers and everything in between, Subcontractors United makes finding qualified contractors free and easy with no accounts to set up. Visit subcontractorsunited.com and experience the joy of stress-free home improvement. Save time and money at subcontractorsunited.com. Dirty Heads. Live in concert. Every single day. Friday, April 12th, 7.30 p.m. The venue in Thunder Valley. Special guest, The Elevators. On sale at thundervalleyresort.com. Don't miss Dirty Heads Live. Rescue me. Looking for the ultimate sports bar experience in Sacramento? Look no further. Fieldhouse American Sports Pub. Family owned and operated. Serving up mouth-watering food that'll keep you coming back for more. Voted as the number one sports bar in Sacramento. Your go-to spot for catching all the big games. Swing by their convenient location at 1310 Fulton Avenue. Or order online for pickup or delivery. Don't miss out on the action. Fieldhouse American Sports Pub. Where every game is a winning experience. The PGA Club Fitters at the Hagen Oaks Player Performance Studio know that golf should be fun. They also know that players of all abilities will hit the ball farther and straighter, play better golf, shoot lower scores, and have more fun if they get fitted before they purchase golf clubs. Hagen Oaks delivers the same technology and major brands used to fit PGA and LPGA professionals. See how the game can be even more fun. Hagen Oaks Player Performance Studio fittings are available seven days a week. Make yours today by calling 916-808-2531. That's 808-2531. The Tribe Guys powering your afternoons Monday through Friday on Satown Sports. Well, if Kyle Draper seems a little distracted here the rest of the show, it's understandable because he is very wrapped up in this women's yeah. college basketball Final Four showdown. Tight one right now. Iowa on top 20 to 14. Actually, this is a lead eight, right? I said, yeah, lead eight. Four. You said, yeah, yeah trip to final four on the line. Yeah. Yeah. It's packed out there, too. Albany, New York. Your girl, Caitlin Clark's already got two three pointers in the game, too. Really? Speaking of uh, three pointers in the women's game, did you see what happened uh, at the regionals? Wherever they're playing in Portland, I, I yeah. heard about it. I, I didn't actually look and see, and they decided. Go ahead, you you describe it. What, what happened? Well, yeah, they basically someone realized um, the three point line is further away at one end than he, than it is at the other. Unbelievable. Yeah. How does that happen? And I think the the further one was right, and so the other one at the other end was a little closer, if I yeah. if I recall. Um, so when they realized that, they went to the coaches. And so what, what do you guys want to do? And they, what would you have done there? Cause you could, they said, well, look, we can, we can take, get rid of them. We'll put in new lines. It's going to take a while, but we can do that. As a coach, I'd probably want them to put in new lines because, and, and I know they change sides at halftime. And so each team gets a chance to shoot it, but I, it just, to me, what if one team gets hot and hits like 23s in the first half? And then you got to go out and hit 23s. How did that happen, though, Whitey? Because if I'm correct, this was yesterday. Yeah. Didn't they play games? And Kyle, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't they play games on that floor Friday? You so, know what I mean? So not on Friday. So I, I, no, wait. So this was the Sunday, Friday games. Yeah. And they had already played one game earlier in the day. Right. So how does that – nobody noticed until then? And See, that, that's a good question. Because So that was the first game of that day in Portland. And they apparently had that – yeah. Apparently they were pointing fingers at the, the quote-unquote vendor. So whoever mm -hmm. came out and did the – you know, whoever came out and supplied that service yeah. did it wrong. But the coaches ultimately decided, well, let's just play it. It's, you know, ultimately there's no advantage there. The numbers suggest that nobody gained an advantage. The coaches were already upset. I know one of them said, look, I already was behind because I have all these other things i got to do before a game, and here we had to deal with this. We didn't want to wait longer. Yeah. I think if it were me, maybe it's impossible to keep it from your team, but I wouldn't want my team to know. 
If it's not something you can look don't at, say don't, I, yeah. just, I, don't say anything. Don't don't get it in your mind. Yeah. yeah. But but my point, Kyle and Whitey, is it was the Elite Eight game yesterday. Yeah. Yes. yes. So Friday would have been the Sweet 16 games, right? You are correct. So, so then d- did they pull up the floor and then put it put in down a different think, floor? I, I just don't get I it. I think you're correct because in my mind, the way that the women's tournament does it is that there's two sites for the Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight instead of four like the right. men. Right. So in my mind, I was thinking, well, they would have had to play two Elite Eight games in Portland, but they're playing the second one tonight with the correct – Court correct dimensions. Court. Yeah. So I think you're right about the possibility it's, that it wasn't correct on Friday too, and nobody nobody noticed, noticed or said anything. I mean, it's just um, and they went on and played, and you know, it's just how does that happen though? Like, and I guess maybe man made error, you know, man, like it, it, errors are going to happen like that. But at this level, I could see a high school uh gym guy or something messing a floor up or something like that. But not this. It wasn't insignificant either. Like those three point lines, the furthest out it goes, I think, is 24 point something feet. This was a nine inch difference on the three point line. It yeah. wasn't like, oh, it's a it's a it's a small difference. It's like half of like almost a foot difference. Yeah. According to the Associated Press, uh, one three point line near the top of the key appeared to be about six inches closer to the basket than at the opposite six end. Six inches. Um, and I think. I saw something else to Kyle's point. I think they measured, I, I believe, officially it'll end up being closer to nine. The NCAA three-point li- uh, line for women, 22, one and three-quarter inches. That's for both men and women. Mm. 22, uh, one and three-quarter inches. So, yeah, the coaches agreed to play. And I'm I'm looking for information on what you're saying there, Kyle. I, it sounds like maybe it's something that they just don't want to Nobody, yeah. speak yeah. about. Yeah. Out. yeah. Uh, lines will be measured after practices concluded Sunday evening. Correct markings will be on the floor ahead of uh, USC and UConn today. So yeah, that's today. Yeah, yeah, right. unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of numbers and records, LeBron last night. LeBron had forty and a big Laker win, nine yeah. triples. Yeah, uh, LeBron James nine for ten beyond the arc. Oh man, yeah. Uh, Lakers one sixteen one hundred four over the Nets. Forty points for LeBron. So LeBron now. There's only two players with 40 or more points after turning 39. LeBron's done it twice, and mm-hmm. Michael Jordan did it three times. Catching up to and him. I think MJ is. was 40 when he did it. Uh, yeah, LeBron will get that. that. That'll, LeBron definitely will get that at some point. And, you know, what's interesting uh, about the way the game has changed. Remember when Jordan made six in the finals in the first half, and it was just like, Oh my God! He had six threes. Yeah, yeah, I do. Nowadays, yeah. I think Michael Cooper did that against the Lakers one time, something like six yeah, or seven. Yeah. Like, oh my God! That's unheard of. <laughs> you know, now guys like you got LeBron James, not even a three point shooter, knocking down nine in the game. Like uh-huh. the game has changed so much, and you know, you hit six, and yeah, you're hot, but you're just one of many guys who have done that. Now, here's a question for you from uh, Manny. He's looking uh. at the game tonight. And he says, all right, tonight you got the Suns and the Pelicans. So if you're the Kings or Kings Ooh. fans, who are we supposed to root for, Kyle? I, I still think. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I didn't mean to jump yeah. in there, but you you were thinking about yeah. it. So I, to me, I want Phoenix to lose. Yes, that's exactly what I was going to say. I think. Now, if you own the tiebreaker against the Pelicans, I'd say, yeah, we want the Pelicans to lose. But that tiebreaker is come and gone. That ship has sailed. It wasn't even really close. Right? It wasn't. It wasn't even close. <laughs> I mean, it was over in November. You know what I mean? Like seriously. Yeah. yeah. And so, yeah, we need Phoenix to lose. I mean, because we're talking now. We're looking at the play, and you want to get the best possible seat, and that's seven. So anything that can help you get the seventh seat at worst, that's what you want. Mm-hmm. You know, I I just can't see now. If it was against the Mavs, let's say if it was against the Mavericks. Do you want them to beat the Mavericks? Because the, the tiebreakers, the Suns. No, if the yeah. if the Mavs were playing the Suns, yeah, because um, the tiebreaker then goes to conference record, and I believe you would be ahead of them then, uh, because you both have nineteen losses. Dallas loses; that's twenty losses, and you own the tiebreaker. You know me; I'm 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 really excited about the seventh spot right now. Anything that's going to help me get that. So, so that, you I'm still not, uh, uh, okay? Yeah. Okay, I understand what you're saying, but I, I'm the just, six is still an outside chance. 
Sure. Because yeah. <laughs> I'm looking at our fans, our friends over in the YouTube chat here. You know, uh, Manny Too Legit, still possible to get to the sixth seed. I believe we still can. You, you, He's it's optimistic. Possible. It's He's possible. Having, he has the right mindset, Whitey. Uh-huh. Uh, who are you going to catch? Which Dallas. One? That's the one. That's the one. You still have a chance that the Pelicans, I feel, really, you're behind them two. Really, it's three. Right. Because they own the tiebreaker. Right. But you do play them one more time. But still, that's that's an uphill battle. I still think you can catch the Mavs. You just need the yeah. Mavs to falter. Yeah, three back with eight to go is just uh, yeah. That's, that's and when you're you know you're you're listing a little bit. That's a lot to ask. It, it is. It is. And then that's you know, I don't know who to root for, ladies and gentlemen. Like now, all of a sudden, I got to turn into a Warriors fan. These last two weeks of the season. It's funny we've talked about that right? in the past, haven't we? It, it's like I think you decided I'm not going to watch. And then I'll hope to find out right. that the Warriors won. Yes. But I don't want to root for them, and I don't uh, want to watch right. them win. Uh, uh, I'm I'm hoping the other teams lose. I'm not rooting for the Warriors to win, if that makes sense. Uh-huh. You know. But you you look at it. I mean, Phoenix we know has the tough schedule. How about this Phoenix tough schedule? I mean, and, and I know we talked. It's by far the toughest schedule. The although they did just beat Denver, so I'll, I want to put an asterisk next to it. Two against Minnesota. Two against the Clippers. Two against the Pelicans. The only thing that worries me about that is I remember talking with you two, three weeks yeah. ago. And this is me talk. I said this. Yeah. I looked at their schedule and said, they have the toughest schedule yeah. I've ever seen. They're done. Well, they're six and four in their last 10. Right. Somehow That's they the, keep winning. <laughs> That's the these thing. Games. They're coming off a big win against Denver. And so, sure, it's tough. But if they go out there and, and, and handle their business, man, and we're the fourth toughest schedule. I mean, our schedule is, you know what? It might come down to that final game against Phoenix, Whitey, for the well, Kings. Yeah, to, to, to that seventh game, game, right? Next and, to the last yeah. game. Yeah, then yeah. you got Portland. Scared to me. Wrap it. Oh, no. Down that Portland Can you game? imagine? No, no, I guess no. That wouldn't be bad. No, that wouldn't know. be bad. But that game before it in Phoenix, the second to last game, because right now you have the um, uh, tiebreaker, I, I do believe, over Phoenix. All right. Can you be Dr. Draper for us or just you want me to put on my cap? Our yeah. Kings, Kings psychologist. Okay. Dr. Draper, a lot of us feel like we just are filled with this. I don't even know what the emotion is. We feel like if only the Kings had won a few of the games against teams this year that we know they are better than, that we know they should have beaten. If they'd won just a couple, yeah. this would be a totally different scenario right now. And it's it's maddening and it's frustrating. Um, we're grinding our teeth about what can we do about that? Mm. What? What's, what? What am I supposed to say? <laughs> what? Like, oh, well, the question is, what can we do about Doctor, that? Yeah, you're supposed to help us do this, Doctor Draper. What's the right approach? My therapist we- would say, Con- control what you can control going forward. Don't look in the rearview mirror. Sure, you lost to Detroit, Charlotte. You had some bad losses, but go out there and beat Boston this week. Go out there and beat the Knicks. Why can't you do that? Mm-hmm. You know, so you still control your destiny to an extent you still your goals are still there and so now's not the time to wallow in the misery of bad losses now is not the time to be crying spilt milk and shedding tears in your in your coffee in the morning now's the time to band together yeah to suck it up and let's go get some wins that's yeah. the time forget it. i'm not worried about detroit loss or anything like that now, after the season is over and we don't make the actual playoffs, we get to, but now you're, you're in the heat of the battle right now. You can't think about, you know, some of the battles you've lost in the right. past. There's just nothing to be gained right. by that type of regret. Exactly. And everything that happened this year, good and bad, has gone into making you the team that you are right, right now on April 1st, two games out of the, of the fifth spot. Two games out. You got what? Nine games left to go. Eight, eight? games left to go. And eight games you know, left. Why not go five and three? You wind up 48 and 30, uh, 34, like last year. That's a successful season. I'll take it. And so it's still there. You are in the heat of the battle. Don't look in the past in the rear view mirror. Thank you, doctor. Yes. Yeah. I got you. I'm going to. A little late with my payment this month. Okay. <laughs> insurance, insurance uh, right? Cover, insurance, right? You, you need that explanation of benefits to come in the mail and see how much you owe, right? <laughs> 
man, I had to call somebody today about some appointment and it, Oh, what's your insurance? It's like, I don't know. You, know, you don't know your insurance. <laughs> well, what? I kind of do, what? but it's like, you know, also oh, you still have the PPO. It's uh, sure. Yeah, yeah sure. I, <laughs> I need to order. Oh no, I did order a new insurance card. Cause remember I lost my wallet. So, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I got a new one coming. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. So you're, you're okay with a lot of stuff because sometimes insurance questions, I'm just like, no, I went to the doctor the other day and they're like, do you have your insurance card? I'm like, no, I lost my wallet. I'm like, don't you have my info on file? No, we need to see the actual card. So I'm like, what? <laughs> just, just look it up, you know, and eventually they found it and printed one out and it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. You're still dealing with that, huh? Still dealing with it every day. Get close. Get every close day. Getting close to resolve. fully, you know, uh, back together. The Costco card, I'm not getting though. I just, I got the digital, you know, I just got right. it on my phone. There I don't need go. it. Some of that stuff you didn't need. It didn't need it. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, when we come back, Deer and Fox on what it's like playing with Malik going forward Ooh. out of the Kings get through this challenge and still end up in a happy place. Next with the Drive Guys on Sackdown Sports. The final game of the homestand concludes Tuesday as the Los Angeles Clippers pay a visit to Golden One Center and the Sacramento Kings. It's fourth quarter Fox time. He's doubled, throws a pass cross court to Keegan, steps to his left, launches a three. He's got the triple. It's the fourth one from downtown in five attempts by Keegan Murray. And the Kings have tied it at 101. Catch all the play-by-play -play starting at 7 on your home of the Kings, Sacktown Sports. Welcome to a brighter future with Aztec Solar, serving Sacramento since 1980. Everyone knows that solar saves money. How much? The answer is a few clicks away. Visit yourpowersavings.com. It's fast, easy, and reliable, giving you instant insight into your potential savings. I used to pay $400 a month to the power company, and that $400 a month added up to $48,000 over the past 10 years. That all changed when I switched to solar with Aztec Solar. Now it's your turn to stop overpaying for electricity. Calculate your solar savings right now at yourpowersavings.com. And Aztec Solar will email or text you how much you'll save every month. Plus, we've got an exclusive offer for you. Get your solar electrical system for just $9,995 cash price after incentives. Don't wait. This deal won't last forever. Visit yourpowersavings.com today and take the first step towards energy independence with Aztec Solar. I love this time of year when the azaleas begin to bloom and the singing birds sweet dawn chorus remind us that blue skies and sunshine are at hand. Hi, this is Frank LaRosa with a word about Naturewood Home Furnishings. In sports, the definition for the word master is one who's achieved a high degree of skill and that will be on display in the highly anticipated golf tournament. In the furniture business, a master is a highly skilled craftsman, an artist even, whose work is coveted by those who appreciate design, quality, and durability. John Keyes was the mastermind of Naturewood Home Furnishings. He knew that you wanted your home to reflect your personal style, whether that was a plain coffee table or a masterpiece for you to enjoy forever. That's why when you walk into Naturewood Home Furnishings, you'll find the largest and best selection of the highest quality home furnishings in Northern California. Masterful. Naturewood Home Furnishings, off Highway 50 at Hazel. Look for the water wheel. Hi, everyone. It's Emron Pilati, host of the True Sports Card Show here on Sacktown Sports 1140 every Saturday at 10 a.m. Would you like a chance to meet Ricky Henderson, Dennis Rodman, Johnny Manziel, Randy Johnson, Frank Thomas, Vlad Guerrero Sr., Dave Stewart, and our favorite Malik Monk and meet over 90 sports card dealers all in one weekend? This is your chance to do it on May 17th through the 19th at the Roseville Fairgrounds at the Sacramento Autograph Expo. You can get all the information about the show on our website at sacautographexpo.com. That's sac autographexpo.com Hey, it's Carmichael Dave for American Energy Heating and Air with a question. Have you recently had a technician diagnose your HVAC system? Have you were a bit surprised at how much it costs? Or did something seem off about their quote? Because at American Energy, they take pride in giving you honest, straightforward solutions to get that system up and running. Have their qualified technicians come out and give you a free second opinion. It's free. You got nothing to lose but some dollars off of that original quote. They're making the uncomfortable comfortable. They've been doing it since 1981, serving the greater Sacramento area A plus with the Better Business Bureau. That's why they keep having customers coming back for more and more and more. 
or you can call them and set that appointment at 916-520-9990. That's 916-520-9990 or AmericanEnergyAir.com. Live and local, it's the Drive Guys. Watch the show on YouTube.com slash Sacktown Sports 1140. Or listen on the Sacktown Sports app. Well, for what it's worth, I'm impressed by the level of optimism being displayed by the smartest listeners slash viewers in radio on the uh, text line 339-1140-1800-920-1140 of the 916. I'm dreading this stretch, but I'm hoping for a strong finish. Six and two. Hmm. Manny too legit. Our buddy says we can possibly go for six and two. Only concerns with the two is for the Celtics and Pels. But the rest, like the Clips, Knicks, Nets, OKC, Suns, and Portland, all beatable. And then Drapes, we also have this from Curtis Hicks. Drapes, we could catch all of them. They all play each other. We could tie everyone and hold three and, and get in. So I was just saying the level of optimism, considering where things are right now for the Kings, it's impressive. It, it really is. I mean, think about it. We woke up Saturday. The sky was falling, right? Like, what yeah. was me? No Malik. Last time maybe he's ever putting on a Kings uniform. Dallas beat us twice. And so I like the optimism going on with eight games left to go. Mm -hmm. I'm feeling it. We do have to take into account that, yeah, last night the Kings looked good, but that, that was against a really bad team that's probably not, as an organization, even trying to win. But yeah, and they were without two or three of their top guys and everything. And so, and it was a close game at the half. I'm like, what's going on? What are we doing? I know <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> we should have curb stomped these guys right from the opening tip. But our boys got it together in the third quarter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, today, De'Aaron Fox met with the media after practice. And the whole thing right now is all day we've been spending time trying to figure out what do the Kings do without Malik Monk? After the game last night, all the questions. How do you deal with the absence of Malik? Here's De'Aaron Fox today on the Kings going forward playing without Malik. I mean, obviously, I think you're missing um, such a dynamic player in terms of his scoring and his playmaking. Um, but, I mean, with, with him not going to be here, obviously, for the rest of the, uh, this regular season, we have to find another way. And um, that's me out there with Keon a lot, me out there with Davion a lot. Um, and we've had a conversation of what we want to run. Uh, me being off the ball and just in, in terms of uh, what we're doing offensively. And I think obviously defensively, always having one of those guys out there, you know, makes us a better defensive team. So um, it works both ways for sure. Um, what's the significance of that in your mind? Is it is it more than cosmetic? You know, when we talk about, well, I'm going to be off the ball. I know there was some talk last night, like Keegan playing the two guard. Yeah. How significant is all that stuff right now? I don't think it's as significant in the Mike Brown offense. I'm with you. It's kind of cosmetic. Was, oh, right. you, are you the three? Or are you the two? Nah. Like, what's the difference? It's just, yeah, you're just ball players, you know? Yeah. Like, you know, and, and I don't expect, like, the things they run for Malik, like Malik, when, he, you know, one thing I will say about him when he comes into the game, the offense does change a little bit. Not as many dribble handoffs, not as much through some bonus. More pick and roll. More pick and roll. Us. Exactly. And so maybe now you don't run that as much. You run your base offense. You know, I would like to see Davion maybe in the pick and roll a little more. Something he worked on all off season. Something during his first year under when Luke Walton was here and then uh, Alvin Gentry. Like he thrived in that. Remember when De'Aaron was out? Like he thrived in that traditional point guard role. But I, I, you know, I, I, I think with De'Aaron, I don't want to see him off the ball more. Like, I'd like to see him and Domas do a little bit more pick and roll, especially late in games. And so I think that's all cosmetic, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I don't think it, you know, it, it, and let's not forget, no Kevin Herter either. Like, you talk about them dribble handoffs, like that was Herter's bread and butter. And so now without him also, I think, you know, you do change it a little bit, but you could still run Keegan. I will say this, and we saw it against Dallas. If you're a defense, Keon Ellis does not present the same threat as a Malik or a Kevin Herter. And so those dribble handoffs, you don't have to come over, uh, you know, hug up as close with Keon. 
It's up to Keon to make the defense pay, but I think it changes from a defensive scheme point without Malik and Kevin Herter. I thought Keon Ellis did a really good job of recognizing the offensive opportunities he had in the Dallas games. Mm -hmm. You know, he wasn't going to go out and score 30, but he put up some points because he recognized, as you said, they were hiding one of their two guards defensively by having him guard Keon. So he was open and he took and made shots. Yes, he did. And in that second Dallas game, you know, he took 12 shots. I mean, I, that's nine threes. He took nine threes. That's a ton. But mostly they were good shots, you yeah, know? Yeah. And I think, you know, when you're in that role, you can't be playing four on five on that end. Like, you have to be aggressive, mm-hmm. you know? And as much as Mike Brown will pull somebody for, for lack of defense, I think at times if you're a liability offensively, you got to get pulled also. I think they need Keon, Davion, to be aggressive offensively. They need HB and they need Keegan Mm. to take the shots when they're there. Here's De'Aaron Fox again today after practice talking about Harrison Barnes and Keegan and how much more they can score going forward. Obviously, with someone like Malik out, um, you know, Domas and I have to be better. But at the end of the day, um, you know, there are going to be games where where you just don't have it or, you know, you don't just explode and you need um, other guys to step up and, well, we we had that last night, and obviously continue going forward. Uh, as a team, we need everybody to step up. Not just one one guy isn't gonna, you know, take up you know, sixteen points and five six assists. One one guy isn't gonna just make up for all that. I don't pretend to know why Harrison Barnes seems to be so inconsistent, mm-hmm. but I was watching him last night, and I mean, he is. You could almost say he's gotten better as a shooter. Yes. Yes. You agree? Yes. I mean, and- I was reluctant to say that, but that's what it looks like. And you should watch HB. I uh, watch him warm up time and time again. And those corner threes that he knocks down, there's a certain way you could tell when the ball comes off his hand, whether it's going to be, has a shot to go in mm-hmm. or not, you know? And he, when he releases it really high, like really like mm-hmm. it, it's, it's, it's almost up here. Like it just, it, it's hard to explain, but watching him last night, I could tell by the, his release point mm-hmm. how good he was going to be. And HB still has all the tools, man. He he can be a difference maker. And you look at that Utah Jazz game, he took seven threes. Mm-hmm. Those were the spray threes that, you know, Mike Brown and we all love. And so I think him and Keegan can be the biggest, uh, you know, uh, guys that take advantage of that. Look, Keegan took 12 threes last night. Mm-hmm. Man. Yeah, they were getting it up. And obviously, he's a very good three-point shooter. There's no question about that. But he's got a little more flatter trajectory, huh, Keegan? Keegan, oh, a little yeah, flatter. yeah, yeah. But but I think that's when he gets up, you know, gets up, you know, on on, on his jump shot. Like, he got you, – you, you're allowed to yeah, do that. Yeah. Now, if you're flat-footed, you know, you got to get a little more arc. But when he steps into it, man, it's pretty. Domas, meanwhile, joining another Wilt Chamberlain club. The details are next with the Drive Guys on Sacktown Sports. On the move? Got somewhere to be? Take Sacramento Kings basketball with you. The Sacktown Sports app will let you stay connected to your passion. Never miss a moment of Sacramento Kings basketball with the Sacktown Sports app. Check engine light on? Take the guesswork out of your check engine light with O'Reilly Veriscan. It's free. Ask for O'Reilly Veriscan today. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. The good folks at Wendy's have a revolutionary new product for you. Introducing the new Orange Dreamsicle Frosty. It's like a time machine that takes you all the way back to now, the year 2024. It's the classic creamy, orangey flavor you remember. Dare I say, it's new timey. It's the flavor you grew up with, just all grown up. Head over to your local Wendy's establishment and get yours while supplies last. The new Orange Dreamsicle Frosty. Here for the now, for now. Limited time only at participating Wendy's. It's time to trade in and trade up at Northern California's number one Honda dealer, Stockton Honda. Whether you're shopping new or pre-owned, Stockton Honda has the selection and savings. Plus, get top dollar for your trade. Come in today or go to StocktonHonda.com. It's all a click away. Anytime, anywhere, it's all here. StocktonHonda.com. At Ashton and Price, over the last 25 years, we've won just about every injury case you can think of. Slip and fall, falling merchandise, fell through rotted decking, we won those. Dangerous stairs, falls into holes, dog bites, won them. 
Injured while pedestrian or on a bicycle, auto, motorcycle, big rig, company vehicle, Uber, or Lyft accident, we've won them all. And the best news is there's no fee until you win. So no matter how you got injured, remember, for the best advice, don't think twice. Call Ashton and Price. The Angie's List you know and trust is now Angie. And we're so much more than just a list. We still connect you with top local pros and show you ratings and reviews. But now we also let you compare upfront prices on hundreds of projects and book a service instantly. We can even handle the rest of your project from start to finish. So remember, Angie's List is now Angie. And we're here to get your job done right. Get started at Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I. Or download the app today. Getting your biggest tax refund from Jackson Hewitt can lead to some spirited reactions. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Jackson Hewitt is so sure they'll get you your biggest refund that if they don't, you get your money back plus a hundred bucks. Jackson Hewitt, yeah! Switch to Jackson Hewitt and we'll beat what you paid last year, even if you filed online. Hewitt, yeah! Ain't nothing to it. Switch to Jackson Hewitt and pay less for tax prep, guaranteed. Proof of prior year payment required when filing. New clients only at participating locations through April 7th. Terms at jacksonhewitt.com. Hey guys, do you know your T-level? Revive Men's Health here in Sacramento is helping you take that first step toward better health and enhanced intimacy with a free testosterone level test, exam, and consultation. Plus, for this month only, qualified patients can kickstart their treatment with a free supply of ED medication. Revive's customized ED treatments can provide immediate results, restore blood flow naturally, and even bring spontaneity back into your love life. With both in-person and telemedicine appointments available, plus free shipping directly to you, Revive takes the hassle out of treating low T and ED. Having an optimal testosterone level can change your whole life, and it starts with knowing your T-level. Take that first step and book your free testosterone test, free exam, and free consultation. And kickstart your treatment with a free supply of ED medication this month only. Call Revive Men's Health Sacramento at 916-365-4566. That's 916-365-4566. Or visit revivemenshealth.com. Dr. Ken Halachek and kinesiologist Kelsey Graham discuss the Good Feet Store. The foot has a lot of detail. It has a lot of complexity. There's a lot that can go wrong. A lot of problems start in the foot and end up elsewhere. Knee pain, hip pain, back pain. When aligning the feet properly, we can see relief elsewhere. And that's the beauty of the Good Feet Arch support. It can place the feet into their ideal position and gives them the balance, the support, the comfort, and the relief of the pain. The bottom line is that the Good Feet Arch support can be a highly effective pain relief solution when nothing else has worked. The feet have a really big impact on how the rest of the body moves. The knees, the hips, the lower back especially. If the foot isn't properly aligned, all of these joints are gonna function incorrectly. That results in a lot of muscle tension and chronic pain. What I really like about the Good Feet system is that the right arch supports can put the foot in its proper alignment. So all the joints of the rest of the body will be aligned properly as well. And when the body's aligned, we can reduce the risk of injury and chronic pain. Visit the Good Feet store in Sacramento, Roseville, Modesto, Stockton, and Vacaville for a free fitting and test walk. At aimyourdigital.com, we'll help you target the right audience, build your leads, and crush your quota. Take your business to the next level. Our digital marketing strategies help grow awareness of your product or service, all while building trust in your business. Our approach involves leveraging multiple tools and strategies to deliver exceptional results that are customized to your unique business needs. Don't wait to run out of sales leads. Keep your business growing. Get started with AimYourDigital.com today. From the Power Business Technology Toshiba Studios, KHTKAM Sacramento, KYMX HD2 Sacramento, the only station in Sacramento giving you local sports coverage from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Sacramento Sports. This segment is brought to you by Aztec Solar. Skip the sales pitch. Calculate your solar savings at yourpowersavings.com. <laughs> Your afternoon home for King's Talk and so much more. The Drive Guys on Sackdown Sports. Domas last night joining Wilt Chamberlain in another very Will. exclusive uh, club. Uh, before we get to that, Drapes, how's the uh, showdown going? The women's college basketball showdown. Man, back and forth is going right now. Iowa trailing LSU by two. Look like the stars have come to play. Nice little baseline drive, so we're all knotted up at 39. Oh, look at the hustle! Man, I tell you what, this is an exciting game. Squad's going back and forth. Ooh, tough whistle. We have a little more information on the fiasco from Portland, where the 
three-point lines were not in the right spot. NCAA said today, and Kyle of Ledbetter mentioned this, one of the three-point lines was nine <laughs> – Nine inches short of regulation. That's crazy. Uh, at its apex. That's like over 4% off of what it's supposed yes. to be. Uh-huh, uh-huh. The NCAA uses Connor Sports to supply and install the courts, and the NCAA said the marking used to draw the line at the top of the arc in the center of the court was marked too short, so they got an explanation there. It has to do with the tool they use. But you, you asked a question earlier, Kyle, and we finally have the answer yeah. to that. Uh, the discrepancy was discovered Sunday. Four games already had been played over two days with the mismatch three-point line. And nobody noticed. Wow. That's unbelievable. That is just four games played. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know it was a big deal because it was the Elite Eight, but I feel like that's a crazier story than yeah. the actual time they caught it. Right. You know, at like least one player had to look at that and go, what? What? Or think don't about say it. Anything, so I, if you usually don't have that kind of range, and then in all in all of a sudden in your game, oh, this person to knock yeah. down five threes. If you're what the, the team that lost in the Sweet Sixteen on that floor. Like I think uh, Duke lost to NC State. Or no, Duke lost to yeah. I think Duke lost to NC State. You're like you got to be upset if you're the team that gets knocked out. I give because the, coaches, of the court. Yeah, the coaches credit coaches for Texas and NC State. They agreed. We'll just play it this way. You'll get one end, and we'll get one end in the other. That, that end in the other half. Uh, NC State beat Texas 76 66. But Tara Vanderveer, the Stanford coach, she said, um, "When you arrive at a gym, especially in the NCAA tournament, at the very least, you expect <laughs> the baskets to be ten feet and the floor markings to be correct. <laughs> at the very least, yeah. you expect the dimensions <laughs> to be on point. No, you're right. It's I, I, I just don't." How does that nobody and as a shooter, I don't know about you, Whitey. Oh, Caitlin Clark just made a nice move. I don't know about you and your playing days or you, Kyle. The first thing when I walk onto a floor, I'm looking at the rim. I'm looking, I'm looking at everything just to see, all right, and I'm talking pickup ball here. Which court will I have a better shot at knocking down mm. jumpers? Mm. Like I eyeball all of that. The foul line, like everything, the rim, whether it's slightly bent off to the side, whatever. And so as a player, how come nobody noticed that? Yeah, Even in warm-ups, right? I I'll bet somebody did, but they thought, oh, I guess I'm the only one that's right. it. Right, nobody you know, spoke up. When up, you're yeah. playing every day, even if you're not looking for those things, you notice, like somebody will notice, you've seen NBA games, a play NBA player will notice, like look at the rim and, and just – knowing what it's supposed to be, will say that rim's not straight or, yeah. you know, right. They know, Some, they, they, know. Just, they know what it's supposed right. to look like. Yeah. And right. I would agree with, I would agree with that point. The rim is much easier to figure out, especially yeah. for myself. Yeah. Who's like right on the precipice of being able to dunk a basketball. If it's like a half an inch shorter, <laughs> like, like, to brag about I know, <laughs> just, you know, just saying uh, the, the rim is much easier than the court lines. I feel like the, yeah. if, if the lines on the court are off, but nine inches, somebody out there that's during the warmups, yeah, that's almost a foot had yeah. to know that, uh, that's not right. So yeah, and eventually they did figure it out. It just took four games. Yeah. That's the there. next thing we got to find out who actually figured it out and said, hello, we need to fix this. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's, I mean, you would think, like like we said, even just the eyeball in it in relation to the rest of the court, mm -hmm. like and maybe you can't see it on a TV, like it's easier to see on TV or something like that. But for it to go all weekend mm -hmm. and nobody figures that out, <laughs> uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. That's almost as unbelievable as the fact that they screwed it up in the first in place. In the first place. Can I give you an update? Uh, update. Iowa, LSU, all knotted at 45 going into halftime. Caitlin Clark, 21 points in the first half, I believe. Uh -huh. Here she is with Holly Rowe being uh, interviewed right now. <laughs> Look um, at you setting that up. I like know, right? No, no. Like a TV pro. You can't help it. I know, right? Yeah. Oh, 19 first half points. Sorry about I that. I think Angel's leading the way for LSU, too. She's really? got 13 points, eight rebounds, mm. three assists, two steals, and mm. two blocks. Two blocks also. All right. All right. This is a great game, though, man. I, I've been watching it, not paying attention to our radio show, unfortunately. been watching this game. You but haven't missed that much. I haven't missed that right? <laughs> Yeah, Angel Reese went down with an injury, too. She was out for like four minutes, came back in, powering through it. And with the Suns and Pelicans coming up on NBA TV, Cal Draper, what's your official endorsement now? Kings fans should root for who? Because I've said pull for the Pelicans because we want the Suns to lose. 
This is tough, Whitey, because here's why. The Pelicans, their schedule is pretty, pretty tough also. It's not like they got a, a walk in the park, a 16. So they got Phoenix twice. You, yeah, if they if got a three Phoenix game lead beats on me with twice, if Phoenix beats them twice, hmm. and you win your head-to-head matchup, I mean, of course, you got to take care of business in your other games. There's still an outside chance mm-hmm. that you catch the Pelicans. Mm-hmm. But the problem is then Phoenix can get in play for that 6 c too. Right. And so, yeah, I, I think we're pulling for the Pelicans. I, right. I think so. All right. Uh, last night, Domas joining another Will Chamberlain club. Only two players in history have, in a single season, amassed 1,000 or more rebounds and 600 or more assists in the same year. That's a thousand rebounds, 600 assists in the same year. Wilt, of course, did it twice, 67 and 68. And now Domas has done it this year. Incredible. All he does is join Wilt in, in categories. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's, this guy is uh, continuing to play at a high level. And we, you know, we heard from De'Aaron and those guys, like he needs to take it up another notch, I think. And, you know, want to react to that De'Aaron sound we had, you know, where he said at the end of the day, you know, some days we might not have it. You know, I didn't like that, honestly. You know, I, I don't want to hear that. Have it every day, De'Aaron. But I will say, though, to go along with that. That is kind of, yeah, pardon me, but you're right. I hadn't thought of that. But, yeah, that's kind of like when they'd lose those games. You go, yeah, you know, sometimes you're going to lose. Right. <laughs> right. Sometimes, you know, it's one of 82. No, not at this point. you got to have it at this time of the year, right? And so I will say this, though. And I talked with Jay about this last week. 2017 Celtics Wizards Game 7 in Boston. The little guy, Isaiah Thomas, who was the star on that team, 29 points. So he stepped up. But you know who also stepped up? And you ask anybody in Boston about that game, it's remembered as the Kelly Olenek game. Mm. He had 26 in that game. So as we go down the stretch here, Who's going to be the guy that supports our star players? Is it going to be Keegan? Is it going to be HB, Keon Ellis? You know, there's an opportunity because Jay and I talked about an opportunity to, to sort of write your legacy. Think about this. If you're Keon Ellis, game 82 against Portland or game 81 against Phoenix, you come out, you have a six or seven, three game. That'll be a game we talk about forever. Remember that game Keon Ellis went for 25 points? Like, there's a chance to, you know, help write your legacy here over the last eight games. Mm -hmm. And again, with Domas, when we say, and when the Kings, more importantly, the coaches and his teammates say they need him to, to do more, to play better, it's not just putting up those numbers whether Will Chamberlain put them up first or not. Mm -hmm. It's having an impact on the game. It's controlling the game in a way that, you know, like, um, Luca and, and Kyrie, and Kyrie huh? did right. the two games here. They controlled. Do we need Domas to control the game too? Are we asking that of him as well? I think we need more of that mm. rather than, you know, he has some putbacks and he had a couple dribble handoffs and I had a triple double, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that's, <Whee! laughs> that's great. But, you know, I was talking to somebody over the weekend. They're saying, man, as many triple doubles as he has, they, they should have won more games. And I was thinking, Ah, you know, those are yeah. independent, right? Or not? Yeah, like, they don't. They can be. Yeah, especially with some of the ones he puts up. Yeah, exactly. I don't think you know that necessarily impacts winning as much. It's the way you do it. Like, is it a dominant triple double, or is it a 13, 11, and right, ten triple right, double? Right, those, right. There's different levels to a triple double. Uh huh. Yeah, he's gonna have to take that jump shot more. Isn't yes, he? he is. Uh-huh. Like, and, and you know, here's the thing: we're talking about the Kings being the best possible versions of themselves. If Domas isn't going to take that shot, to me, that lets the defense off the hook. We saw with Looney last year. Then Looney can freelance a little bit, clog up the cutting lanes a little bit. Domas has to be a threat from that 15 to 17 foot range. Mm -hmm. Uh, Malik Monk, have we seen the last of him in a Kings uniform? We'll deal with that when we come right back. Also, I have one more Wilt Chamberlain Domas number that is – you might not believe it. It's next mm. year with the Drive Guys on Sackdown Sports. The final game of the homestand concludes Tuesday as the Los Angeles Clippers pay a visit to Golden One Center 
and the Sacramento Kings. Chris Sabonis rolling into the paint, eludes the defender, and a two-hand flush is thrown down off the dribble. Catch all the play-by-play -play starting at 7 on your home of the Kings, Sacktown Sports. This is for the men who never settle. The ones who believe only quitters and a game and a tie. The type of guys who choose the bar with the biggest TVs to overcompensate for theirs at home. And the men who use PTO to catch afternoon basketball in March with the boys. This is the Lodge mentality. This is Twin Peaks. Who wants to settle for a single TV? With more TVs, bigger screens, plus our fabulous scenic views, there's more to watch at Twin Peaks. When you take the time to shop at Folsom Lake Honda, there's one thing you'll always find. Happy people ready to serve you. As a family owned and operated dealership since 2009, customer service is our number one priority. Our customers love doing business with us and you will too. Looking to own or lease? During the spring sales event, drive a brand new Accord or Civic. Visit us today at FolsomLakeHonda.com. You're one Stop Honda Shop. Folsom Lake Honda, yeah, your one-stop Honda shop. The Drive Guys, live and local, every afternoon, Monday through Friday on Sacktown Sports. All the talk of what happened in Portland in the uh, women's Elite Eight where they botched the three-point lines at one end. Reminded me of the mid-90s when the NBA actually moved the three-point line in. Uh, the three-point line in the NBA, 23 feet, 9 inches. And because largely of the Knicks playing so physically and scoring being down, the NBA decided to move it in. Uh, I think it was for the 94-95 and the 95-96 seasons. So they moved the line into 22 feet all the way around, which wow. is the short corner now. So was that just for the one season? I think it was for that? two. Two? Okay. Yeah. Can you imagine now doing that? And uh, during the 93-94 season, so before they did it, you had just under 10 three-pointers per game, if you can believe that. <laughs> per team. <laughs> yeah. Per and they made 33% of them. And then they moved the line in, and the next year the numbers went up to 15.3 attempted threes ooh, per game. Ooh. Can you imagine that? <laughs> and 36%. Yeah. Okay. They're uh, talking about pushing it back now, you know, because it's too easy. Too many guys are shooting them now. They at least should consider getting rid of the short corner. Well, how do you get rid of it? You just have the three-point line end where there's no – you can't be behind the three-point line in the corner. Oh, why, 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 though? Why would you Because that? that shot's so easy. If you ever decided, wow, it's too easy, that's the one you have to get rid of first. I'm okay with it as it is. Uh, yeah, I'm okay with it as is, too, because – it's easy for everybody. Then it's not like one person where one team has an advantage. It is what it is, you know. Yeah, it's but the idea is like if it's overvalued, everyone's going to shoot more and more of those corner three pointers, which we're already starting to see because it's other than a layup, it's the best shot you can take in the NBA by probabilities. Right. Yeah, and and do you think the league is against the short corner three? Like everybody I talk to wants more threes. You well, know, they're against scoring, or or they clearly made an effort to try to bring scoring back in line a yeah. little bit with yeah. the physicality, which is, I still think we don't talk about that enough. Yeah. I think, hasn't, hasn't that had just a profound impact? On oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, guys aren't getting the calls as much. Uh, you know, look at a team like the Knicks, who we saw here in Sacramento a few weeks ago. Now you're allowed to be a little more physical. If that's your style of play, now you could be even more physical. We talked about it last week, too. Does it help the Kings? Can they now be more physical? And we've seen it uh, happen with them lately. It's also helped Dallas. Yes. Yes. Dallas as well. And you look at their defensive numbers uh, since the All-Star break versus now. I, I think I looked them up. They were like number 11, I think, when, you know, the first half of the season, they were in the bottom third. Mm -hmm. They so, were awful. Yeah. Uh, I got a little quiz for you here. And don't, this is not anything you should know. So, you know, I'm not trying to embarrass you. I don't think I would have known this. Will Chamberlain and Domas. Yes. Okay. We know that uh, they're the only two with a thousand rebounds, six hundred assists yeah. in one year. Those two years that Wilt did it, sixty-seven and sixty-eight. He also had in one of those years he had four hundred and eighty-nine of something. The next year he had five hundred and seventy-eight of something. For his career, Domas for his career has six hundred and thirty-eight of these. You have any idea what it is? Will Chamberlain in two years, so the sixty-six, sixty-seven mm -hmm. season, and the next year. One year at 489, next year 578. Domas for his career has 638 of them. Blocks, obviously. 
missed free throws. Oh, missed free throws. You set me up on that. You set me up. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? Uh, yeah. Wilt missed 578 free throws in one year. And what year? What did he average that year? Do you have that offhand? Uh, one uh, year like, he was like points? Or yeah, points. Was his he, points were kind of down, but his free throws were like 39% and 41%. Are you serious? I yeah. mean, think about it. If he was an 80% free throw shooter, how many more points uh-huh. would he have? Right. You know, he would have averaged 25 to like 33. It would have gone up or something crazy like that. Yeah, so the 67 season – he averaged 24-2. Okay. okay. Uh, his scoring had already he brought it down to yeah. I'm sorry. That was actually his rebounds. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Well, is unbelievable. <laughs> it was 24-1 and then 24-3 the next year. So hold on. He averaged 24 points and 24 rebounds one season. Is yeah, that that's what- the thing to keep in mind whenever we talk about Domas. No one's done this since Will Chamberlain. It's great that Domas is yeah. doing what he's doing. But in 1966, Wilt averaged 33 and a half points and 25 rebounds. Uh, that's <laughs> average. <laughs> to answer your question, Drape, so in the 1966-67 season, which I believe was an MVP season for him, he shot 386 for 875 at the free throw wow. line for a total of 44.1%. Yeah, 441. And then the next year is 38%. Unbelievable. I How about for this, a while, I, I believe earlier in his career, he even did the underhand thing and then he got yeah. away from that. And You know so. what? This is how great Wilt was. And I don't know if you'll ever see this again. As great as Magic Johnson was with the NBA Finals, Wilt was the MVP his rookie year. Yeah. Have we ever seen, a, other than Wilt, a rookie? Was Kareem MVP his rookie year? I'd have to look that up. Uh, like, to me, he's the only other guy Maybe Bill Russell. I mean, Mm -hmm. to be MVP your rookie year. I think Wes Unseld was. Wes Unseld. I mean, 37.6 points, 27 rebounds for Will Chamberlain. Yeah. The closest modern example I can think of is that in Tim Duncan's rookie season, he made first team all NBA, which I okay. assume means he finished top five in the MVP voting, right. but obviously he didn't win MVP in 98. Yeah. Uh, only two players have won MVP and rookie of the year in the same season. Wes Unsell did it. Wes again. Unsell and Will. And Will. Yeah. That, that's unbelievable. Yeah. That's, and, and, and here's. And they were both huge guys. And that was when the league and the game was so center dominated. You, you might know this. And, and Kyle, uh, you can chime in. Do you know the one Will record that will never be yes. broken? Yes, I know. I, I know you know this. It, um, it will never be broken, Kyle. Okay, so I know the Domas double double one. It's like, t- is that the one you're thinking of? The most no. double doubles? No. Okay. No. <laughs> that one's like 200 something. No. But I, what's what's the record that'll never be broken? Well, tell, tell him what it is, and then see if he can guess the number. Oh, uh, most minutes per game over a season. Oh, I've oh I've heard you this heard one this before. one. I know you've heard this. I've one. heard of it, but I don't know what the exact number. It's is. the tell most people. unbelievable stat ever. Ready? 48.5 in a 48 minute game in a 48 <laughs> how do you average more than 48 minutes in a 48 minute game think about that yeah. how many overtimes would yeah. you add and how many games do you play and you had to play the entire game uh-huh unbelievable and i believe he never fouled out of a game really which is tells you Everything you need to know about the NBA back, back like, then. That's huh? Will Chamberlain. Yeah. That's, he's the reason fans are here. That's why we have 3,000 people here. <laughs> we can't foul out Will can't Chamberlain. Foul. He's our moneymaker, our cash <laughs> yeah. cow, if you will. Yeah. I'm going to look up Will's game log, 61-62. That was the season he averaged uh, 50.4 points yeah. per game. <laughs> oh, my gosh, guys. Look at this. And he was second in the MVP vote. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's that funny stat where... Um, I think Elgin Baylor had like 35 points a game and he finished like fourth in the MVP voting. Dude, I think they gave it to, was it Russell? Maybe I don't. Oh my gosh. It's all one game. Will played 40 minutes. Is that it? Every other game. He played 48 or more minutes. Mm -hmm. He only played less than the full game. One time that entire season. Hmm. That will never be broken. That's unbelievable. No, it's impossible. Load management. Impossible, right? Will Chamberlain, <laughs> load management. Only played 40 minutes. How many minutes would they have to increase the NBA game to in order for someone to break that record? Would it have uh, to be a, a 
56 minute game right. would have to be a 60 minute game. Yeah, yeah that's your Kyle. You're yours. I mean, unbelievable. And he's a Philly guy, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Went to uh, Overbrook, Overbrook High School in Philadelphia. Yes. Mm hmm. Man, Wilt, just you should do a deep dive, guys, on Wilt's numbers. Check this out. December 8th, 1961, against the Lakers, 78 points, 43 <laughs> rebounds. Like, what are we doing? That's unheard. Like, 78 points and 43 rebounds? Well, you know, that's why some people, and they're wrong, but they say, oh, he played against a bunch of plumbers. Because they say that because otherwise you can't fathom that he would do it. Right. Right, but he was just that much better. Right, you than, you, you only can and, play against who you play against. And he also played. You know, they had what eight teams. Yeah, so he had to play against Bill Russell a lot, a lot, a lot. And yes. he still put up those numbers. This is oh my gosh! Just look at Wilt's uh, game logs or do a deep dive. It, it's unbelievable. And, and Boston, he played uh, against Boston that year twelve times. Aver <laughs> That's crazy. Average. <laughs> Average, this is against Bill Russell, average 41.7 points and 28 rebounds a game. Pretty good. Uh, and that that's that's a Hall of Fame career right yeah. there. If you just played the Celtics your entire career, Wilt, 41.7, 28, and that's what, what, the best of the best. What year was that? 61, 62. 61, you know, on DraftKings, everybody's, I'm taking Wilt. Right, tonight. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. And this is how crazy the Celtics, how good they were against every other team. Wilt, and, and except Syracuse, against Syracuse, he only averaged 48 points and 23 rebounds. Hmm. But everybody else that season, he averaged more than 50 points per game. Wilt may, may need to get some love for top five of all time. Like, Wilt may, may need to get some some love. Well, it's hard not to look at just the numbers like the and numbers not say and, he's the best, you yeah. know, in a way. these are Yeah, these are numbers that, and think about they're this. Cartoonish. They're so huge. They're just like people can't take them seriously. Yeah, we laughed at the stat about Sabonis getting to 1,000 rebounds. And we brought this up. Like if you averaged 14 rebounds a game for 72 games, you would just barely hit 1,000. Wilt had multiple seasons that he had 2,000 rebounds in a season and five seasons, six seasons where he had over 1,900 rebounds in a season. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. He was all right, I guess. He, he, he was decent. Yeah. Will so, Chamberlain. Yeah. So for anybody, and especially a local guy like Domas to be mentioned in the same yeah. breath, it's like, that's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. You're right. And a seven-time scoring champ, 11-time rebound champ. I mean, this guy was, he, he did everything too. Man. Correct me if I'm wrong, Whitey. When Kareem set the record in 88 for most points in a career, he-, he he passed or 84. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. He passed Wilt, right? Yes, that was yes, the previous. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Who held it before, which is crazy considering he only started winning MVPs when his scoring numbers like were cut in half. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, when we come back more from De'Aaron Fox at practice today, uh, he talks about the need for the Kings to play with more physicality. Easy to say. What are the Kings going to do about it? We'll find out next with the drive guys. Zach down sports. Subscribe to Sacktown Sports on YouTube and watch the Carmichael Dave Show with Jason Ross, Styles and Watkins, and the Drive Guys. Live Monday through Friday from 6 to 6. Plus view archive shows and exclusive content. Subscribe at YouTube.com slash Sacktown Sports. Sacramento weather is brought to you by the Arnold Law Firm. I'm Mark Finan in the KCRE 3 Weather Center. Skies will stay clear through the night tonight. Overnight lows will drop down to the mid to upper 40s. Tomorrow will be a sunny, beautiful day with highs in the mid, maybe upper 70s. Get the latest forecast on the KCRE News and the KCRE 3 app. The Arnold Law Firm has seen how a collision can turn anyone's life upside down in a heartbeat. So remember to be a little more alert on the road and stay safe. The Arnold Law Firm, providing real justice for you since 1975. Call 916-777-7777. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger. For the ones who get it done. 
Now, during Staples Print Big Sale, get $20 off your print purchase of $100 or more, $50 off your print purchase of $200 or more, and $100 off your print purchase of $300 or more. So, the more you print at Staples, the more you save. To demonstrate, print, print, print at Staples, you save, save, save. But if you print, 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 print at Staples, you save, 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 save. See how that works. Staples Print Big Sale. Print more, save more. Up to $100. Ends 4 6. Visit staples.com slash print for details. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Kyle Draper here for Mercedes Benz of Stockton. I get a lot of compliments from my friends about my new EQS SUV. Mercedes has proven that electric cars can be gorgeous and stylish. My EQS is is the finest vehicle I've ever had. And some of my friends have even asked, what's it really like to have an electric Mercedes? Is it easy to own and operate? Is it easy to charge? Well, it's as easy as owning a regular gas guzzler, except you never have to put gas in it. And I never stress about battery charging. It's got a long range, so no problem there. And it's easy to charge. You just plug it in, and that's it. Right now, Mercedes-Benz of Stockton is offering up to $19,000 in Mercedes-Benz incentives on select new vehicles and certified pre-owned Mercedes vehicles, as low as 1.99% APR for qualified buyers. So head on out to Mercedes-Benz of Stockton. It's just a half hour from Sacramento, right off I-5, or online anytime at mbfstockton.com. Welcome to a brighter future with Aztec Solar, serving Sacramento since 1980. Everyone knows that solar saves money. How much? The answer is a few clicks away. Visit yourpowersavings.com. It's fast, easy, and reliable, giving you instant insight into your potential savings. I used to pay $400 a month to the power company, and that $400 a month added up to $48,000 over the past 10 years. That all changed when I switched to solar with Aztec Solar. Now it's your turn to stop overpaying for electricity. Calculate your solar savings right now at yourpowersavings.com. And Aztec Solar will email or text you how much you'll save every month. Plus, we've got an exclusive offer for you. Get your solar electrical system for just $9,995 cash price after incentives. Don't wait. This deal won't last forever. Visit yourpowersavings.com today and take the first step towards energy independence with Aztec Solar. Live and local, it's the Drive Guys. Watch the show on youtube.com slash Sacktown Sports 1140. Or listen on the Sacktown Sports app. King stands keeping an eye on the Suns and the Pelicans from the Smoothie King Center. Drapes, you said that Kings fans should be rooting for the Suns, right? Is that what you said? I no, said no. At first, I, I can see both ways. Uh, it's I uh, said Pelicans, but Suns are crushing them right now. Late first, it's forty-one twenty Suns. Yeah. Well, the problem is, if Suns win this, we wake up and we're in the eighth spot, and. Uh, and sure, you still got one more against Phoenix and still a few games left to play. But the whole narrative about the Kings having a better shot at the seventh than the Suns is that the Suns have the toughest schedule in the league. Well, if you win the games, it don't matter what kind, what kind of schedule you They're got. Six and four in their last 10 yeah, somehow. Exactly. And so, you know, if, if this Phoenix Suns, they just beat Denver at Denver, if I'm correct. Now they're on the road. At, uh, are they playing it? Yeah, in, uh, in, New in New Orleans against the Pelicans. I mean, this strength of schedule stuff, is, it's, it's not going to mean much if Phoenix keeps winning and playing well. Mm -hmm. By the way, side note, you mentioned Denver. Did you see uh, the Joker last night had a huge night and a win over the Cavs? But then he was late coming out to talk with the media because he was watching DJ Burns play. I did hear about that. I did hear that. DJ Burns. Uh, I, I haven't uh, got to see him yet. I haven't watched any men's tournament action yet. I, I'm going to be watching the uh, Final Four this weekend. Though. Yeah, Domas 26, 18, and 16 in a win over the Cavs. And then he explained to the media uh, that he was, oh, sorry to be late, but he was watching DJ Burns. He's incredible. He's amazing. Did you watch a lot of college basketball? No, I just watched it. Actually, I uh, they're not supposed to make it, right? It's something that. <laughs> what do you like about DJ's game? I think he's so skilled, especially lefty. I love to be lefty, and like, it seems like player teammates like to play with him. So, gotta be a good guy. It's interesting that that's what he notices about <laughs> him. Oh, I'd love to be a lefty. DJ Burns, by the way, has I guess a. a 
pro prospects in the NFL as like an offensive lineman. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> uh, I've been hearing that. You know, I, I've been hearing uh, some people say he's an NBA prospect, though. You know, uh, sort of like Kenny Lofton, uh, uh, you, you know, who played for uh, Memphis, and so. I, I can't wait to watch him. Mean, he was talking some trash to the Duke fans also this past weekend uh, when he beat them. I'm sorry, Whitey. I'm just like enamored with this LSU Iowa game. Mm-hmm. Caitlin Clark is putting on a clinic right now. LSU is being picked apart. Here's Clark again, catch and shoot. Free That's ball. deep. Oh, but she's six of 12 now from three, but she's just been carving their defense up. And I was up by seven right now. She is, man, she's the Steph Curry, some say the Steve Nash of uh, women's college basketball. Getting physical underneath. Oh, they're battling. Did did they count it? I don't think so. I think they called it on the floor. On the floor? Okay, okay. No, this is a high-level basketball game, man, and the stars are coming out to play. Angel Reese has 14, uh, Johnson has 14, but Caitlin Clark, 28 points, six assists. You see that replay when she makes it – and Angel Reese is underneath, and her arms just drop like really she slumps, like the oh, body language. Like, yeah, made it again. Yep. I mean, forget the twenty-two feet or the twenty-one and three inches or whatever the court was in Portland. That one was like twenty-eight was feet deep. deep. She's yeah. gonna tear it up in the big three. Is she might. Dude. <laughs> All you gotta do is run her off screens like uh-huh. they do Steph Curry. You know, shoot, uh-huh. she is deadly. Look uh-huh. at her go. I mean, this is. Uh, yeah, look at that back dish. <laughs> Yeah, Dude, it's like Pistol Pete out here throwing around the backpack. I know, it's pretty crazy, unbelievable. Uh, it is. Uh, it's really cool to see how women's basketball just gets better and better and better and, yes. better, and better and better and better and better and better and better. Yes, uh, on the floor, the game, and just as a product as well. It, it, yeah, and there's the skill level is so good, mm-hmm. you know. And, and I do the Kings uh, pre and post game with Chelsea Gray and in. Watch some of her clips as well. I mean, she's a bucket getter, too. It, it's fun to watch, too. And, ooh, tough shot. And at the competitiveness. Like, you know, yeah. this is what I say about college basketball. I, you know, I used to work in Louisville, and they're like, oh, college basketball, uh, you know, is much better than the NBA. I don't believe that, but I do believe when you get to this level, look at Caitlin Clark, coast to coast, bucket and the foul, count it. Yeah, they got to count that, right? Yeah, 58, 52. But when you look at the the high level, the competitiveness right now, where every play matters, every possession matters, it's tremendous to see. Players play harder in college. You can see it. Right. They're not as skilled. So I'm with not you. There's as skilled. no way you can tell me the college game's better, I guess, you know, to each his own or her own. But you watch a college game, and their players are so active. Yeah. They play so hard every minute. And, and I think NBA players know how to sort of pace themselves. Like, they, they understand, to. right? 82 games, you know, it's especially star players. Like, you can't go. And we had High Flyer on, remember, uh, uh-huh. a couple of weeks ago. You can't go hard 48 minutes a night, you know, if you're an NBA player. But I'm watching these women right now. It's, it's amazing basketball. Clark. Oh, she knocked down a three, but I think we got an offensive foul. She's I, fun to watch, man. I got to the arena last night. I don't know what time it was, but I, you know, went up there where we put our stuff. And uh, Scott Marsh is doing the mm-hmm. uh, game night. He mm-hmm. says, "Hey, come here." Uh, and so he brought me on because he said, uh, you know, he wanted to congratulate me on the, the grandson, which is great. But also, he said Henry thought the game was at seven. So oh. if, you, <laughs> if you could just do a segment with me, which I was half. Oh, you, did you really? Yeah. You know what's <laughs> interesting? So. I was running late yesterday also, not because I thought the game, but the traffic on 50 driving in, and High Flyer and I live in the same town. He lives in uh, Folsom also. Like, that traffic on 50, it oh, probably okay. delayed me about a half hour, mm-hmm. 25 minutes to a half hour. Yeah. And so well, he, he walked in on. right before yeah. me, and yeah. I'm like, where you at? <laughs> I'm like, what happened, dude? He's like, oh, man, the traffic and all this. I was like, all right. Yeah. He's right. done. I mean, he's done probably what three or four free shows worth on our show. Oh yeah, for sure. coming, in. coming in a half yeah. hour early, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so we appreciate uh, that. Uh, De'Aaron Fox at practice today. You know, now there's talk that with Malik Monk out, maybe De'Aaron Fox will be playing off the ball more. I don't think Kyle Draper's a big fan of that. But here's De'Aaron Fox and talking about how comfortable he is being a a two guard. Definitely, definitely. And uh, I mean, obviously, I think a lot of it has to do with the shooting ability, but also just learning how to play. Um, off of others and I think um, I mean since Domas has been here I think I've, I've played off ball you know a little more and um, 
I've gotten a lot more comfortable doing it. And I'm, it's not, I wouldn't say like I prefer doing it, but it makes the game a lot easier when you're catching the ball without 10 eyes on you or, you know, 10 guys standing right in front of you. So um, it makes the game a whole lot easier for sure. If he can continue to become a better shooter, he'd be impossible to guard off the ball, right? Because, yeah. um, you know, we know it's the Warriors offense, basically. Steph Curry is so hard to guard because he doesn't stop moving. A guy right. as fast as Aaron Fox, you know, coming off screens and things when the ball's on the other side of the floor, he'd be very difficult mm -hmm. to keep up with. Yeah, and it's like we talked about back in December when he is knocking down, you know, 43.5% or 43.6% of his threes. If he's doing that, and now you got to trail him, got to play up on him, and he has a live dribble, I mean, uh, you know, he becomes virtually unguardable. And, you know, what's interesting, they're talking about him playing off the ball. I would think he has to play more on the ball with yeah. Malik out. It doesn't yeah. make sense to me. I'm not sure what the reasoning is for that. Yeah, maybe a little misdirection. I mean, especially late in the game, the right. game's on the line. The last thing you want is, Darren, you're off the ball. You're off the, you're in the corner coming <laughs> off screens. No, put the ball in your best player's hand. Mm -hmm. Let him do some things. Yeah, and De'Aaron also has been talking a lot after games about the added level of physicality, not so much the way the Kings are playing, but what's being allowed. And Lucas said the same thing. He said, yeah, it's better for our defense, but offensively for me, it's a lot tougher mm. than what they're allowing now. So here's De'Aaron Fox talking about the added physicality that uh, NBA officials are allowing now. I mean, of course, when I'm shooting the ball and people are hitting my arms, like that's, of course, that, that's definitely an adjustment, but... Um, as far as physicality and getting bodied, that that doesn't bother me. But if I'm trying to shoot the ball and people are hitting my arms, of course, that's yeah, that's gonna bother you. Yeah, he, he, a lot of players don't care for the fact that some of these fouls are just not fouls anymore. Right, it's incidental and, contact now. And, and and we talked about it, marginal incidental contact, and you know, certain guards, it is going to affect. I mean, some people would say, well. Does the rules apply to Luca because he took more free throws than the Kings on Friday? But you would think a guy like De'Aaron Fox, who especially doesn't flop or sell or anything like that, this physicality hurts him. You know, mm -hmm. even before the physicality was allowed, we were wishing De'Aaron got to the line more. Now, does this mean, especially here with eight games left to go, I mean, he's going to get banged up, battered, bruised, and not going to be rewarded with free throws. It's almost as if, in some cases, some officials, I'm sure not, they're not all the same, it's almost like officials are making up their mind, given the situation, whether they're going to call a foul. Yeah, yeah. Not based on the play that occurs, but on what the situation of the game is. Right, yeah, that, that's true. And that's the worst, right? If you're yeah, a player, it's, so. that's the worst. And I don't understand how come Domas doesn't get more free throw attempts. You know, and and it goes back to, you know, bigs versus little. Domas takes a lot of punishment, but he gives out a lot of punishment, too. So I think if you're an official, you can't call everything. Mm -hmm. And some, sometimes you got to let it play. But on the guard level, I mean, a little nudge or a little bump here, that could throw off a slight frame guy like De'Aaron Fox. So what's the answer going forward here? I know we've talked about it mm -hmm. a lot. How do the Kings make up for the fact that you don't have Malik Monk the rest of the way? First of all, and I keep saying this, the stars got to be stars. De'Aaron can't just blend in. Domas can't just blend in. These guys got to play at an elite level. You know, and, and I'm talking with De'Aaron, and we talked about this earlier. It's not necessarily go out there and give 50. It's when the game is on the line, you make an impact. Like, we feel your presence. You know how it is, Whitey. Mm -hmm. 30 points, scoring 30 has different feels when you score 15 the first half, 10 the second, uh, third quarter, and then five to fourth. Or if you score 12 of them when your team's down by eight. Right. It doesn't, yeah, don't don't go out there and try and get your buckets then. And so I, I maintain, I want to see De'Aaron and Domas, whatever it takes to win, scoring, diving for loose balls, locking up, whatever, you guys got to be the leaders, I think. Going to take more from Keegan Murray, too. Yeah. I think he's the key. And that's assuming that Domas and De'Aaron Fox are able to find another level, yeah. which is not safe to assume. It's asking an awful lot. Assuming that, I still think Keegan's going to be the one that's going to have to become all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, we've got a new weapon that we right. can rely on right. nightly. And, and and let me ask you this. Does it have to be nightly, or can it be one night Ke uh, Keegan, one night HB, one night uh, Davion, or whoever it may be, Trey Lyles? Uh, like, 
Does it have to be Keegan every night? Like, I think it has to be Fox and Sabonis every night, but then who's that third guy with him? Yeah, well, I mean, was Malik, did he bring it every night? For the most part, he did, right? Most part, part, for the most part. That's what I'm saying. Keegan has to kind of adapt that role. Okay, I get it. Going forward, fingers crossed, it's going to be fun when we come back. Oakland's final pitch to keep the A's out of Sacramento. Do we even want this team here? Next with the Drive Guys on Sacktown Sports. The final game of the homestand concludes Tuesday as the Los Angeles Clippers pay a visit to Golden One Center and the Sacramento Kings. It's fourth quarter Fox time. He's doubled, throws a pass cross court to Keegan, steps to his left, launches a three. He's got the triple. It's the fourth one from downtown in five attempts by Keegan Murray. And the Kings have tied it at 101. Catch all the play-by-play starting at 7 on your home of the Kings, Sacktown Sports. Power Business Technology is proud to be 100% independent, locally owned, and managed Toshiba Copier Dealer. Local ownership cuts out the red tape, allowing ourselves to never be too busy to personally answer the call when our clients need us. Recognized for excellence in service execution, training, and customer service, we're proud to be named a 2022 Toshiba ProMasters Elite Dealer. Contact us today for all of your business printing needs at 844-POWER-BC. That's 844-769-3729. Or visit us at Power Copier it's time to trade in and trade up at Northern California's number one Honda dealer, Stockton Honda. Whether you're shopping new or pre-owned, Stockton Honda has the selection and savings. Plus, get top dollar for your trade. Come in today or go to StocktonHonda.com. It's all a click away. Anytime, anywhere, it's all here. StocktonHonda.com. Based on 2022 total new and Honda certified pre-owned vehicle car sales from American Honda Motor Company's own one report. Timmy, everybody. Great job. Next up, we have Samantha. Ten times better performance can make a big difference. Castrol Edge Motor Oil gives your engine ten times better high temperature performance. Castrol Edge. Better oil for maximum performance. Now through April 23rd, get a $15 gift card when you buy five or more quarts of Edge or Edge High Mileage Full Synthetic only at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Claim based on sequence 3H test versus API SP test limits. Some people just know the best places to eat around town. Those are the people who know to choose Allstate. They know exactly where to go to get exactly what you're wanting. They know where to find the spiciest hot pot, the gooeyest brownies, and the tenderest, most flavorful portobello steak. Those people also know that safe drivers save 40% with Allstate. Saving 40% is based on the national average premium savings for Allstate Auto customers with a clean driving record versus those without. Savings vary by state and vary based on how you buy. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Allstate Fair and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. At Fisher Investments, we may seem like other money managers, but we're different. What makes you so different than the rest of us? We ensure clients receive unparalleled service at every step of the relationship. Tell me more. Our investment counselors focus on service over sales, prioritizing clients' needs. How do you make money? We don't sell any commission-based products. We have a simple management fee based on the value of our client's portfolio. So we do better when our clients do better. What about client portfolios? We get to know each client, their finances, family, health, lifestyle, and more. And then we tailor a portfolio based on their specific goals and needs. Your clients really come first then, huh? Yes, we make them a top priority. Our goal is helping them achieve a comfortable retirement. Wow, maybe we are different. At Fisher Investments, we're clearly different. Learn more at fisherinvestments.com. Investing in securities involves the risk of loss. Hey guys, do you know your T-level? Revive Men's Health here in Sacramento is helping you take that first step toward better health and enhanced intimacy with a free testosterone level test, exam, and consultation. Plus, for this month only, qualified patients can kickstart their treatment with a free supply of ED medication. Call Revive Men's Health Sacramento at 916-365-4566. That's 916-365-4566. Or visit revivemenshealth.com. This segment is brought to you by Aztec Solar. Skip the sales pitch. Calculate your solar savings at yourpowersavings.com. Drive Guys, live and local, every afternoon, Monday through Friday on Sacktown Sports. Oh, 
It's almost time for us to hang it up for another day. Ah, thanks for being with us. We're back tomorrow from the Golden One Center yes. for a huge game. And again, real quick, thank you uh, most sincerely, Kyle Draper and Jay, for doing all the extra oh, stuff yeah. last week. That we you got you. Because I wasn't here. I appreciate we that. We got you holding it down. Appreciate it. Uh, 339 1-800-920-1140. Jeff joins us here on Sackdown Sports. Jeff, where are we with the Kings right now? Well, we're, we're in good shape. I hope. I survived. But anyway, uh, I wanted to pay Drapes a compliment. I was listening last week when he was covering for you. He had me rolling on his uh, bit about explaining him and his son playing a, a, a pickup game. Uh, remind <laughs> me not to ever play Drapes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get a little physical. Get a little physical. <laughs> okay, but anyway, my, my reason for calling is that why are we so hung up? I'm, I'm going like, we have Sasha. It just means that we have to play a different style of game. Malik is not a great defender. Sasha, I don't know what it is, but when you look at his stats, the time he's on the floor, he picks up rebounds. He does deflections. My God, the guy is not a, a, a prima donna, so he's not the most athletic guy. But when you look at his stats for per minute, he produces. If uh, he just uses them out there, it's going to spread the offense. It's going to give Foxy more room to operate. And if Fox cooks up with him, He's going to be able to shoot that three from outside and make them play out and mm -hmm. give Fox more room. I don't understand it. Well, thanks. I think no, you're right. Yeah. And it's just been a matter of he hasn't been able to stay on the floor. Yeah, and that's the thing. I mean, he's only been back one game, you know, and I think that's the plan for Sasha to get minutes. I think that's been the plan all season long, like mm -hmm. from the get-go. You know, he's a guy that can stretch the floor. He had some deflections last night as well. And he was so, their big off-season act. Right. He would, you bring the EuroLeague MVP over here, like you expect him to be a part of your rotation. And, you know, that the ankle injuries have just really held him back. I do think these final eight games, though, they may be able to find something with him, and hopefully he's a big part of, uh, you know, what they do because th this caller is right, like, he can stretch the floor. He can open like you got to hug up on Sasha because mm -hmm. he'll knock it down. Yeah. And last night he was what? Two for three. Um, he didn't play a lot. Hopefully he's got his wind, his conditioning because he hasn't played. But yeah, I think I think the Kings thought that by now he'd be way for the, he'd be a solid piece of the rotation by now. That was the yeah. original plan. Right. You, you don't send the whole cavalry overseas to go get this guy. And, and then not play him. And so mm -hmm. hopefully uh, we'll see tomorrow. You know, the rust has been knocked off. We'll uh, see him play tomorrow against the Clippers. Uh, Suns leading the Pels 56 uh, 37 yeah. halfway through the second quarter. Tomorrow, a huge day around here because, of course, the Kings playing the Clippers. And we may find out tomorrow what's going on with the city mm. of Oakland and the A's and Sacramento. Tomorrow is the day, according to reports, the A's are going to meet with uh, Oakland, and Oakland's going to make their pitch to keeping uh, the mm -hmm. team there for the next three years after this year. And it looks like a competitive offer. Uh, we will see. Let me ask you this, Kyle. Yes. Do we want the ace here? Before you answer, before you answer, because <laughs> I, you know, I'm not crazy about it. I think I'm really in the minority here. Um, Josh, excuse me, <laughs> Jacob DeGrom. Jacob DeGrom mm -hmm. is making this year. $40 million, okay? He's coming off Tommy John. He hopes to be back in uh, August. He's with okay. the Rangers. Jacob DeGrom, he's making $40 million. You know how much the A's are paying their roster right now? Aren't they like 48 or something like that? What are they? Uh, they're just over 43. Oh, 48, all right. For the whole roster, their active roster's total salary is just over $43 million. Max Scherzer, who just went on the 15-day uh, IL, his base salary is forty three point three million. Mm. It's higher than the whole A's dugout, and that's fine if the way that that's the way it went around business for for whatever the reasons are fine. But do we want that team here? Yes, for three years. Yes, yes, yes. They're terrible. But let me ask you this: and me and Jay had this discussion la uh, last week. You're being hypocritical, Whitey. How? Because if John Fisher from day one said, you know what, I want to move the Oakland A's to Sacramento, you would be all for it. And so it's the same team. Now, if you're, you, you don't want them I'm here. Being hypocritical. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Would you be, have been okay? Instead of Vegas, he said, you know what, I think we should relocate, relocate the team to Sacramento. Would you have said, nah, we don't want it. We don't want it. 
Mm, I probably would not, but that's right. Not that's the what case. I'm saying. That's, what that's I'm not saying. hypocritical. Yes, that's it not is. The case. So why are you against it? Because I think Sacramento's being used. That's but, that's what I think. And we'll find out. I could be totally wrong. Maybe we'll know more tomorrow. But I think we're being leveraged in this whole thing. We're being leveraged, in my opinion, by a guy that the way he does business with cities is he's untrustworthy. He's proven that. So we'll see. Like I say, I know I'm in the minority. All those things plus, you just said. This team is terrible. Would, would, but all that would be the same if he said, I'm coming here in the first place. Well, but see, that's not he's, the case. Uh, you know, unscrupulous owner dishonest, terrible team, all that, all that. Now, if you say you're being used, okay, but don't, don't say, know that, but, but, that's but what let I me think. ask you this. Don't say it's out of some loyalty to the city of Oakland. No, please don't, 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 because I've heard some people say, well, city of Oakland, we're in this with you. You know, what he's doing to Oakland is terrible. You know, I would never support. If he said, I'll come to Sacramento, fans would be all for it. Well, but it's not just Oakland. You're right, but it's also all A's fans in Oakland and Sacramento. I mean, he's doing it to all of us. Why? Because he's leaving. If he were staying here, which he's not, he would not be leaving. So it's not, I'm not being hypocritical. It's, it's, there's no comparison there. It's apples and oranges. But what if this, and Vivek talked about this. What was it last week or two, two weeks ago? Two Vivek. Weeks ago, two, yeah. Was, whatever yeah, was, yeah. Vivek talked about, you know, he sounded confident, like he's had some discussions with baseball about Sacramento potentially at some. He said within the next 10 years, he wouldn't be surprised. He said, I believe, and bless him. You know, he kept the Kings here, and, but I think he said, I see no reason why baseball wouldn't want to put a team here in the next 10 years. So, so, yeah, that, but that, I can give you like 10 reasons, <laughs> and so can he. No. There's lots of reasons. We don't have a stadium. But that, that's, that's now. That, what's uh, <laughs> You get this uh, Sacramento A's here, you know, it's. I just want to know what the deal is, really, bottom line. All right, what are we getting out of it? What is the city giving up? I hear a lot of people, not you, I mm -hmm. understand your point, but I think there was even a guy on TV that was saying, oh, the economic growth for the next 30 years will be tremendous out of this. And it's like, that's not real. That's, that's science fiction. So I just want to know what the deal really is. And, um. I, this team is just an awful team. It, it is an awful team. Tomorrow yeah. we'll find out if we've been. Maybe we. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this is going to be great for the city. And maybe ten years from now, uh, I'll be out there watching. It. Hey, that's Kyle Draper throwing out the first. Right. Hit. I know. I used to work something with him. I haven't done. Right. You know. <laughs> what if I help lead the charge to get Major League Baseball here to Sacramento? Uh huh. I'm trying to keep an open mind. There's something about <laughs> it that's like ah. But maybe we find out more tomorrow. We'll be coming to you tomorrow from the golden one. We might be courtside. Tomorrow, yeah, huh? courtside. Ooh. Hopefully get some interviews, talk to some people. Yeah. Let's make it happen. All right. Thank you, Kyle. Ledbetter, Drape, Drapes, thanks yes. very much again. And we'll be back with you tomorrow. Thanks for being with us, the Drive Guys on Sacktown Sports. Check engine light on. Take the guesswork out of your check engine light with O'Reilly Veriscan. It's free. Ask for O'Reilly Veriscan today. Oh, oh, oh. 